crew. Welcome back from break. Hope it was good for you. Relentless 50 years of preparing to govern ourselves by Director Chimaringa. Everyone knows, everyone in the movement recognizes that Director Chimaringa Selambayo brings with him an incredible amount of experience. Comrade Chimaringa joined the party as a teenager. He is the quiet force of the party who brings stability and confidence to any aspect of the movement. He has the job to bring organizational cohesion throughout the party. Director Chimaringa supervises over the implementations of protocols and mandates which aim to create a seamless process throughout the party and movement. It doesn't matter where you are in the world. Let's welcome Comrade Director Chimaringa Salambao and all comrades in the Office of National Director of Organization, Kenya Yestatella and Janaba Lumumba. Uhuru, comrades. Uhuru, Uhuru. Uh, I hope I can be heard okay. I want to uh, appreciate our leadership, Chairman O'Malley Ishitella, Chairman of the African People's Socialist Party. I want to salute Deputy Chair, uh, owner Zanae Ishitella. And I also want to thank my team in the National Director of Organization Office, uh, Kenya Ishitella, who is the Chief of Staff, Janaba Lumumba, Life Malcolm, Jamal Abigail, and Modi Casanova. So what we have done is put together a uh, video to tell you some about the National Director of Organization Office. We are a field operation uh, team. Uh, we handle recruitment and we do a lot of other things in terms of making sure that the union, that the units and regions are following our constitution. And uh, we carry out some very important tasks in terms of consultations with our units all over the world, our regions all over the world. And uh, we carry out that uh, function of, of, of recruitment and also being a field operative. We've uh, done things in other states as well. I'm located in Florida, but we've done things in other states as well. And I just want to, again, thank my team and salute Chairman O'Malley Chitella and Owners of Nea Chitella. So with no further ado, you'll see a very descriptive uh, video that's going to be coming up. Uh, my team put it together. I thought it was a great video, and I hope you'll believe the same thing once you finish watching. Buhuru. Uhuru, my name is Chimaringa Selambao. I'm the National Director of Organization for the African People's Socialist Party. I want to appreciate our leadership, Chairman O'Malley Ishitella and Deputy Chair Owner Zane Ishitella. So the department that I lead is the National Director of Organization. And what we do, we our primary job is as field operatives. So we organize uh, with the regions to build units and LPOs and also the regional committees themselves. And this is an important job in terms of what we do. And um, for a couple of years, uh, we've been doing this and now we are involved in two primary things. One, we handle the recruitment as well. Uh, in part of the job of the National Director of Organization Office, and also we handle security. So our primary focus in this particular uh, piece is uh, the piece on recruitment. But before I start the presentation with the other members of my team, I want to introduce them. Uh, Janaba Lumumba, who is a recruitment specialist Chief of Staff Kenya Ishitella, Recruitment Specialist Life Malcolm, Administrative Assistant Modi Casanova, and Security Liaison Jamal Abigail. So this is a great team of individuals, and I want to appreciate them for participating in this PowerPoint and 
presenting this video and also the other parts of the PowerPoint. So with no further ado, I want to introduce Janeba Lamuma. Uhura Comrade Director, and I will discuss our system tools that we use every day. One of the reasons why we've updated our systems tools is so that we can prepare for the onslaught of people who, will be, who are joining the party at any given moment. An organizational tool that we use in-house so that all of our documents, our emails, and our files, and any other media we have, when they leave, we internally have the ability to delete their account and all of the files that they worked on with the party gets transferred to someone in leadership as opposed to just being lost forever. Our goal is to be able to touch bases with our contacts within four hours or less of receiving an alert from a contact automation tool and it automates our responses so we can use several of our tools such as google workspace the one two three contact form to generate automated responses and to allow us to reach our metrics like contacting everyone within four hours so that we can retrieve the information that we need to proceed with the second part of the application with all of these new tools that we're using, there will, of course, need to be education and training. If someone isn't available to attend a meeting, they can watch on their own time. They can even speed up the videos if they don't have much time, and they can also leave comments underneath. It's completely secure and allows for us to simply share information, and we can house all of these training tools inside a Loom to alleviate the constant meetings. We also have the problem of how do we train our comrades and cadre and monitor this? There's another tool that we have at our disposal to develop a curriculum online so that the sponsorship and other leadership can review and track the progress of the comrade who's coming in through sponsorship. And that will help us to ensure that this comrade is getting some of the basic knowledge and the basic information that they need to develop into an African internationalist. In addition to these tools that make it easier for us to communicate, we also have reporting tools that we're going to be equipped with. I'm very happy to have gone over all of the, some of the different <laughs> systems tools that we're going to be using and I'm very excited to be hosting some of the training sessions. And don't forget, a lot of these roles are still open. So reach out to me and any of anyone in our office and we can uh, get you onto the winning team here. <laughs> so with that, I wish you uhuru, uhuru, uhuru. Uhuru, my name is Kenya. I'm the chief of staff for the NDO. I wanna to talk to you a little bit today about our interview protocols, things that we've done to streamline the process to bring members in, as well as some of the things that we have planned for the future. We are an organization of organizers, and in turn, that means that we're recruiters as well. We all have been mandated by the party to build the party's presence wherever we are. That means every event, every action, every time we go out and sell the Burning Spirit newspaper, is an opportunity to recruit, to build. We are winning and the only way that we can really win is to bring people into this Vanguard organization. It is our job to create mechanisms and programs that will allow us to grow the ranks without any impediments. These are some of the things that we've done to improve our recruitment efforts. Please note, <laughs> this by no means means that we have it all figured out, but here it goes. We are now at a two part interview process. That means that once we've identified either through our one, two, three contact forms, through our actions, our events, or selling the Burning Spear newspaper, that contact, now what we would do is we would have an interview, what we call part one, basic demographic information, but also the real conversations to find out if this potential candidate 
is a good fit for the African People's Socialist Party, the Vanguard Party. If it is, and if that recruiter or organizer has determined that, yes, we want to go forward, then we would send that potential candidate part two and part three. That is where they would fill out, complete some questions, talks about unity, talks about what we want, what we believe. And then when they send that back, again, within 24 hours, we let them know this. Then we would set up our last interview process, and that is with our three-member recruitment Team. At that particular last interview, that's where we're going to be doing the deep dive. What other organizations have someone been involved in? We're looking for red flags. We're looking for, is this potential comrade that's going to be my comrade going to be the best fit for the African People's Socialist Party? And if that's not the case at that last interview, then we can always redirect them back to our mass organizations. Because one of the goals that we do have as far as the NDO's office is to pull from the mass organization at least 75 active members by December 31st, 2022. That is really a streamlined process, right? I know. I know I said that, you know, anything that we need to do to take away any potential difficulty or impediments from recruiting, that's what we want to do. But at the same time, we know that once we bring them in, we know that how do we keep... Now, that doesn't mean that we want to keep everybody. Some people we're going to have to let go, and that's okay. But we want to create, for the future, different things that we can do to improve retention. Everyone that comes into the organization is not an African internationalist and may not have a clear understanding of what democratic centralism is. We really want to celebrate that cadre. We want to celebrate our comrades. We want to do it with patches, with pins, with lanyards that really boast the fact that we're in this revolutionary organization and it's something that we should be proud about. If we're not loud and proud, how can we really engage the people? And that's really what it's about, building the party's presence. This Burning Spear newspaper, 50 years of history behind us. We can do it. We're winning. We want to win. We must win. Build the African People's Socialist Party. This is your opportunity to join right now, today. Don't miss out. You see how easy it is. You can be a member. You could be sitting here where I am right now today. Uhuru. Uhuru. I'm Comrade Jamal Abigaz, a security liaison to the Office of the National Director of Organization. Uhuru. So I appreciate everyone for watching the video and uh, shortly we'll be starting the video back up. Uh, just want to tell you a little bit about some of the events that we have been involved in. Uh, we were involved in the Black is Back Coalition March on Washington, uh, where the National Director of Organization Office played a very large role in bringing people to Washington, D.C. Uh, my team was very uh, much involved in bringing people there. And uh, we had one of the largest contingents at the March to Washington, D.C. In St. Petersburg, Florida, we've also organized uh, demonstrations around the Haiti situation, the attacks on Haiti. And we've also organized a uh, celebration on uh, October 24th that celebrated the uh, memory of uh, Tyron Lewis, who was killed, murdered by St. Petersburg police in 1996, uh, setting off one of the most important uh, rebellions of African people in this country. Uh, this was, was a rebellion that uh, had political consciousness, and it was a real effort to um, uh, change the political and economic situation in the city of St. Pete. For the next eight years, uh, no African was killed uh, by the St. Petersburg Police Department. So we've been involved in uh, recruitment uh, for the forces who are sending us what we call one, two, three contact forms. And we also have been uh, pushing recruitment on the ground. 
and I want to tell you about a very important recruitment effort that we'll have uh, coming up very shortly. Uh, on May 28th, uh, the NDO will be leading the process to bring the African Liberation Day, which is going to be May 28th, 2022, in many cities around the U.S. and all over the world. Uh, this will have vendors, parades, and we will also have important political conferences that will be in talking about the important political issues of the African community. So we encourage everyone to uh, come to the, we encourage everyone to come to the, okay, I think I'm getting a message. Okay. So we're going to go back to the video, comrades, but ALD African Liberation Day, May 28th, 2022, St. Petersburg, Florida, Oakland, California. And we'll be talking at the end. I'll be telling you some, some of the other locations like London, England, and Paris, France. Uhuru. Uhuru. I'm Comrade Jamal Abigaz, a security liaison to the Office of the National Director of Organization. And I'm here today to say that when the NDO does it, the African working class responds, and we are always at the work. The NDO works tirelessly to grow the party and the movement through our various organizations and campaigns. And in the last year, its director, uh, Comrade Chemarenga, has been working relentlessly to ensure that the work of the office puts the party line to the masses through these campaigns and associated actions. For instance, in St. Louis, now the party's seat, two elections for all the persons in wards three and 21 were tactical pushes into the electoral arena where African internationalism was powerfully voiced by comrade President Columbia E. Antoinette of Impidum. Director Chimarenga led the campaign to seize territory and bring Africans back into political life as the campaign manager. The director's intervention on the ground in October 2020 revitalized the campaigns, delivering leadership to the campaign organizations that allowed the candidates themselves to go directly to the people to make the case that the colonial domination of Africans, wherever we are, is the cause of perennial blight in our communities, just like the north side of St. Louis, Black is Back Coalition. In November 2021, the Black is Back Coalition for Social Justice, Peace and Reparations held their 13th annual conference and Black People's March on the White House. The Black is Back Coalition was formed in the wake of the election of Barack Obama as an answer to the bourgeois declaration the way it come to some quote-unquote post-racial time. The party called out to the many progressive organizations which stand for black power to come together to confront the contradiction of colonial capitalism using our collective power to accomplish success on the ground. Led by our chairman, uh, Chairman Omali Yeshitela, the Black is Back Coalition has been a force creating unity among African peoples everywhere. The NDO led the effort to organize party forces to attend this event. Through work with the regions, the contingency of 70 from the party was the largest of any of the coalition partners to attend. The NDO also led the party effort to secure the locations involved and the parade route itself through operations of the NSO. Over 100 people turned out to the march and even more for the rallies held before and after the march. The African nation marched to the chant of Kupitet, Bulakai, or cut heads, burn houses down the streets of the U.S. Capitol and to the doorstep of the colonial head of state himself. Tyron Lewis March. In October 2021, the NDO mobilized in memory of Tyron Lewis, 25 years after Tyron lives. The NDO led an action with Tyron's family in St. Pete to remember his life and brutal death at the hands of the murderous St. Petersburg Police Department. 
The African community and its allies together remember the tragedy. Yes, but also the brilliant struggle waged by the African working class against the colonial state forces in the Battle of St. Pete. The difference in St. Pete was over 20 years of leadership by the African People's Socialist Party in the African community. Because of our work, the community understood who the enemy was and who it wasn't. Protecting the St. Peter Uhuru house from the incendiary rounds that were fired to burn it down with African men, women, and children inside. Also in 2021, the NDO oversaw the rebuilding of the St. Petersburg local party unit. St. Petersburg, Florida is the party's birthplace and has served as the headquarters for much of the party's history. The party and the leadership of its constituent organizations are made up of party cadres. The important work of these mass organizations is reliant on a strong party presence locally to lead in the work. Thus, the NDO oversaw the crucial task of rebuilding this unit, which is currently chaired by Comrade Dengster Lemwingo. The history of Tropicana Field is another page in the story of colonial genocide, or what some may call ethnic cleansing waged worldwide against the colonized. The land Tropicana Field uh, sits on was a large and vibrant African community. We were pushed out so the colonial ruling class could make massive profits. And now that the commodity that Tropicana Fields apparently was, has been used up for its purpose of entertainment, the colonizers want to unload the property for redevelopment. No. The African nation says no. The NDO has helped to initiate the reparations. Now, campaign in this work, initiating the campaign to get reparations to the African community of St. Petersburg, Florida. In this instance, it's the form of the Tropicana Field. Petitions have gone out, demonstrations have been held, and a rally have all been undertaken uh, to push this campaign forward. We are developing a plan to bring back the Marcus Garvey celebrations of the 1970s once held in St. Pete for the purposes of building the party and the mass organizations worldwide. And we will use this opportunity and every opportunity to be first in facilitating the growth of the organizations which make up the Uhuru movement, prime among them its leading body, the vanguard party of the African working class, the African People's Socialist Party. Going forth from this plenary uh, throughout uh, 2020 and indeed until Africa Freedom is won, the Office of the National Director of Organization will be putting forth the work on the ground and facilitating in each region and each constituent organization's ability uh, to get that work done. What this means firmly is placing the organizing work in person as much as possible, putting forth the party and the movement as the clear uh, clear uh, force responsible for the revolution, for the freedom of the African nation, or overturn the colonial contradiction. Building the work on the ground has, you know, the utmost importance. It's in those communities uh, where we are, that the battle is won for ideas, for our lives, and where those lives are all too often lost. But where we also have some of our greatest victories. Truly, uh, the viability, the lifeblood of a revolution, of any movement, is built among the masses. And as we've seen, you know, all the way from, uh, from the battle of St. Pete, uh, to uh, Ferguson, uh, Missouri, the work of the party, the work of the chairman, has been directly to go into those communities and raise the consciousness of Africans because we want to get free. And it's not just when tragedy strikes uh, that we have to be putting out that call. You put forth that call in the community ahead of time, right? The victory 
won by uh, the African community in St. Petersburg, Florida during those battles against an onslaught of uh, colonial state power firmly has its basis in the uh, decades at that point of leadership of the African uh, People's Socialist Party in the community. That constant call to community, that constant support that we offer each other as Africans, that education that we share a combined struggle based on our uh, foreign and alien domination is really what builds that sense of clarity and even unity that both wins uh, the masses to the organization, uh, to the organizations, and uh, to uh, will will win and protect us in in the times to come. And to that end, you're going to see the working units really grow, right? The whole call uh, of the chairman uh, in in the block by block strategy is to build units everywhere to really empower LPOs and to really grow uh, the movement and grow the reach and capability of ourselves to self-govern, to provide and uh, to meet the material needs of our own community and build that dual and contending power that will uh, keep the African nation on the path to liberation and redemption. And so when you see uh, out of the office of the NDO, you know, uh, a revival of the Marcus Garvey uh, celebration in St. Pete or the African Liberation Day uh, events to come, you, know, you see those coming from the party, expect the office of the NDO uh, to have uh, clarity both in the task and in how to get it done. You know, com you, comrades will talk about uh, the... Uh, level of dedication with which that we're approaching the task of building those training tools necessary. Uh, and to add to that, because again, we are growing. It's not just uh, current cadre, current mass forces who uh, will uh, join the party, uh, who we need to be prepping. It's we need to take the African nation where they are with the experience and skills that they have and get them to work immediately. Selling the Burning Spear newspaper, use video and pictures that are on the ground, selling the spear. And the the sale of the Burning Spear, I don't think, really can uh, be understated in this. It's real easy to, <clears throat> it's real easy to uh, read the spear, see the spear, have your copies of the spear, um, and uh, maybe not as easy. Uh, in the minds of some, to get it out and distribute it. And more than that, I mean, the call really is to, you know, make sure that we're following up. We're not just selling the paper to any random person on the street and uh, not checking up on them, right? Like, it's important to know uh, how they enjoyed it, right? We want to be frequent in the same places. We want to know and go where the African nation is and have conversations, right? Have conversations about the material there, about the articles there and engage people, right? The uh, sale of the burning spear has been a tool that I've used uh, to get it uh, to get in, uh, really in community with uh, with, with uh, forces on the ground, and really strike up that conversation. My work's been bolstered by it, and I never I don't go anywhere without it. Uh, the conversations that uh, that we have in the spear are real critical I think for Africans to hear and and they they not only not only will reflect that back to you in in you know the uh the way in which they receive the paper you know sometimes they're shocked cuz never they never heard of the burning spear it's 53 years old though or you know is this about Africa or is this about uh here I said well it's about Africans wherever we are and uh it's that kind of relationship uh that you can foster and that kind of leadership that we provide. I mean, you're putting the party first and it's also an excellent opportunity to invite the African nation to participate in the conversation. You know, I, I speak with a number of Africans even up here and it's surprising to 
uh, folks that there are a number of Africans up where I am, but uh, let me tell you, they got something to say. And so I'm always, I'm always uh, referencing the Bernie Spear, uh, directing uh, folks that if they have any interest, they can absolutely write. We can sit down and talk about it, um, whichever. And that's a tool that I'm using to organize doors, start commerce, open doors, organize forces, start uh, starting really to get the ball rolling, not on just any old this or that, but under the principles of unity of the party, uh, under the principles of unity that can be found in our constituent organizations. And it's that way. It's really opening the minds of the Yeah, I am the chief of staff of the NDO's office. Uhuru Kenya. Uhuru. I'm Jaina Bilamumba and I am a recruiting specialist for the NDO office. So I just wanted to ask a couple of questions about why you do what you do. Um, your work as chief of staff is so integral to our recruitment process. And I wanted to ask in terms of your own personal experience, what made your interview process unique? I've been around the party all my life. And so when it was time to do the interview, I remember it was Matsumela, it was Jamal, you know, uh, on there. And uh, as we, the questions that they were asking, you know, those beads of sweat, thank God they couldn't see that I really had to <laughs> answer quite honestly. Um, and then once, you know, the vote, it went to the vote. Cause there was times there I didn't think I was gonna get in, you know, some things I said, like, you know, I it was I wasn't ready. It was a it was really exciting, right? Mm -hmm. And once it went to the vote, everybody was congratulating me. I felt really, really good, um, elated in a certain kind of way, if that makes any sense. And um quite emotional. Mm -hmm. What has been your journey? to the African People's Socialist Party. I started off in the mass organization and I started off in Impedum and I was on the ground. I was uh, attending regular PEs, going to meetings, really um, sir, using the mass organization as a training ground mm -hmm. uh, for preparing me for the party because being so around the party and having party discipline two totally different things. So I knew that this was going to be a great introduction to that. And then shortly after that, I started to take on leadership positions and uh, the people were calling, leadership was calling, DC Ona was calling, <laughs> Comrade, Chimur <laughs> Comrade Director Chimurang is calling, everyone <laughs> literally calling. And um, it was only natural. It's like the world cannot, it's falsified. You cannot deny African internationalism. And so it just, it became where I was like, you know what? Let me stand firm in the African nation and not just be a part of the workers, but you know, matriculate and be a part of the advanced yes. detachment yes. of the African working yes. class. So that's what my unique journey was. And um, I'm really, really happy. I think we got a cheers. I think we have a real cheers, a right? A real cheers. I don't know about you. I don't know about you, but we're winning. We're winning. Victory is close. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's a little tea for you. Mm. Uhuru, I want to appreciate my team for putting that video together. And uh, again, I want to salute Chairman O'Malley Ishitela, uh, Deputy Chair uh, Ona Zane Ishitela. And again, want to remind everybody uh, that we have some very exciting African Liberation Day events happening all over the world. We're going to be May 28th of 2022, 
we will see parades and we will see political conferences and with vendors. It's going to be in South Africa, Paris, Oakland, California, uh, St. Louis, Missouri. It's just going to be fantastic all over the world. We want to make sure that everybody will, whatever region you're in, get in touch with the National Director of Organization Office, 727-914-3617, or you can email us at chimaringawaller at gmail.com. Uh, we look forward to everybody coming to the ALD and building the African People's Social Support. Uhuru. Uhuru, uhuru. Thank you, Andy Ochimaringa, and all members of his office for that professional and amazing report. Um, I don't know if we have any questions for this section of the report. I don't see any questions, comrade. Yeah, I believe we don't have any more questions. But okay, I'll go ahead and pass it over to you, Life. Well, I, I did see some comments and I just want to read a couple of those comments. Uh, comrade Demetria uh, mentioned, I guess, referring to Comrade Jamal's background. She said, Uhuru, yes, that march was black power. Uh, comrade Jamal had some uh, amazing visuals and Comrade Wednesday Odom says, I like that visual background, Comrade. And uh, it's about Africans where we are. That was a profound statement, Uhuru. Uh, Comrade Erica says, the process of connecting and engaging with people, analysis of the oppression experienced following by sound discussions and the collaborative work to build unity and understanding is the work of the African People's Socialist Party. It is the work of the leadership provided through the actions, writings, and teachings of our chairman, Omali Yishatela. The scientific theory of African internationalism is the people's theory. It takes me a minute to claim something as mine unless it is something that I truly unite with. And it wasn't but two months after joining in PEDEM before I knew the party was for the people. Salute to the Office of the National Director of Organization for this report. Salute to all comrades in this fight for black power and African liberation. Forward the revolution. Long-winded, but a huru. That's all right. We, we have to have long wind, comrade. <laughs> I like that. Uh, yeah. Uhuru, and Uhuru. I just want to give, uh, I just wanted to uh, actually give credit for the uh, background uh, to comrade Janova. That was uh, her ingenuity uh, in that piece. So uh, I just want to salute to comrade for that. Uhuru. Uhuru, right on, uh, comrade. And comrade Light. Sure. Also, I, I would be remiss if I didn't uh, identify Jason Westbrook as a part. He's a security liaison with the National Director of Organization Office. Uh, his picture was in there. I, I neglected to mention him. I just want to uh, be self-critical for not mentioning him. Jason Westbrook in St. Louis. Uhuru. Uhuru. Chairman, look like you wanted to say something. I'm good. I, I, if I if I said anything, it would relate to the fact that I thought there was a a bit of a, I, I think it was understated some things that in the in this report, um, like uh, Kamala Kenya did say that she's been in, uh, connected to the party all of her life, which is true. I mean, from birth uh, to now. And uh, Comrade Janaba mentioned that she first sort of came into the party in the mass work, uh, but she neglected to say that her father, uh, Biko Lumumba, who was a giant uh, physically and um, uh, in terms of uh, his uh, political unity, member of the party, he led the party um, in Oakland, California. Uh, he did culture work. He organized all the young people. He was the one who, uh, during the time after they murdered Huey P. Newton, and there was a funeral inside the church uh, where where Huey was funeralized. Uh, Biko Lumumba 
Some of you may have seen that iconic photo of him standing on top of a van, you know, this giant with his fist up in the air. Uh, uh, that's her father. And so uh, her pedigree is a little more than what was suggested by, by the statement in that video. I just wanted to say that. Uhuru. Uhuru, Uhuru. All right. If there are no other comments, this is a perfect time to welcome my comrades and all other guys to call people to join the African People's Socialist Party. Africans <laughs> of the world, let's organize and unite <laughs> under African internationalism. History is being made. We're making it. The world is being transformed. We're transforming it. Thanks to the work being done together by our party and our people inspired by African internationalism, a theory of practice. We cannot do it without you. So let's welcome Comrade Jamal Abagaz to lead us into the call to join the African People's Socialist Party. Come on, comrade. Uhuru, Uhuru, comrade. Thank you very much for that, uh, for that rousing uh, and, and very thorough introduction. Uh, again, I just want to uh, salute my leadership, uh, Chairman Omali Yeshitela, uh, Deputy Chair Oma, uh, DC Ona Zene Yeshitela, uh, and uh, the National Director of Organization, uh, Chimarenga Selimbao, as well as the National Central Committee, and my regional leadership, Comrade Kumba Chinia. Uh, Comrades, brothers, sisters, siblings, I mean, you've seen it today, right? You've seen it through the entire presentation that the African People's Socialist Party is leading the way in building that uh, revolutionary uh, African economy, right? That liberation economy that's gonna go and support our people meeting our material needs for our own benefits instead of the colonizers, right? And You've heard it, you've seen in uh, several presentations, including our own, how we are working in your communities to grow and build that dual and contending power that will see us to the future. And this is the time then that you can start the process of becoming a member of the Vanguard Party of the African working class. Um, and in the presentations, uh, as I uh, just referred to them, you can uh, make that next step to become a part of all of the work that you're seeing before you. You wanna be a part of the revolutionary solution by joining the African People's Socialist Party. We want you to go to our website at apspuhuru.org and fill out a one, two, three contact form. Uh, that way your application will be considered and you will guarantee you will hear something back pretty quickly here. And you can call us at 727-914-3617. Also, if you want to go ahead and send, uh, send us some snail mail, you want to send it attention to the National Director of Organization, African People's Socialist Party, 1 uh, 245 18th Avenue South, that's 1245 18th Avenue South in St. Petersburg, Florida, 33705. And we know you don't want to keep sitting on the sidelines, right? We know that you are ready to take on this immense and great responsibility. So join the African People's Socialist Party today. Uhuru. Uhuru, and thank you, Jamal, for your great and fiery appeal for membership. If I was a member already, I would have, I would have joined today. <laughs> so um, now we're going to move on. Uh, we have a report from the Agitation and Propaganda Department led by Director Akile Anayi, themed Agitation and Propaganda, a function of African state power. We say in the party that Agiprop is the heartbeat of the party and movement. Everyone can appreciate the significance of Director Akile and the Department of, of Agiprop. Let's give a warm welcome to Director Akile and her Agiprop team. Uhuru. Uhuru, Uhuru comrades. Well, I just first want to really appreciate this incredible plenary and just salute the whole program for today, as well as the last two days. 
it's just been incredibly overwhelming and amazing. So um, yeah, and I also just wanna recognize before we get started, the forces who will be um, a part of this presentation with me, an incredible team that I work with day in and day out. I'm in the Central Department of Agitation and Propaganda. That's Comrade Matsumela Odom, who is our Director of Cadre Development, as well as our Western Regional um, Agiprop representative. We have Comrade Soliana, who is our Managing Editor for the Burning Spear newspaper, as well as our Transitioning Northern Region um, Agiprop representative. We have Comrade Maiza, who is our NTU Program Coordinator, as well as our Midwest Region Agiprop representative. And we also have Comrades Lisa and Sandy from the African People's Solidarity Committee who work under the leadership of myself and the African People's Socialist Party to turn over their skills as well as go for the resources to turn it back over into this department into our various institutions. So these comrades make it happen every single day. So I really wanna salute them. Also, we will have a guest um, uh, speaker with us today. So I'm not gonna let y'all know who that is, but um, <clears throat> uh, they move mountains, I'll say that. So uh, without further ado, let's get into it. The Department of Agitation and Propaganda is rapidly transforming to respond to the needs of this period of the crisis of imperialism, ushered in through the chairman and the APSP's relentless leadership toward African redemption. In this report, we aim to show how Agiprop is working to advance the mandates and resolutions stemming from our seventh Congress and beyond. Next. So Chairman Amalia Shatella, we have to salute this profound leader who's provided political and ideological leadership for the African freedom struggle for over 50 years since his time as an organizer with the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee in 1966. His leadership has resulted in coherence to the Black Power movement, something we struggled to gain following the counterinsurgency against the Black Revolution of the 60s. We want to salute Chairman for never stepping one foot back for assuming the responsibility to revive the African revolution so that we may know freedom in our lifetime. In recognition of the party turning 50 years old this year, we had to acknowledge that the present discussions around colonialism, reparations, and other concepts didn't just appear in the last couple of years. In fact, articles, essays, books, and more that are finally talking about the colonial question and other things is evidence of the influence of African internationalism over the course of our 50 year history. It is no exaggeration to state that the party has ushered in the current period where African people find themselves positioned and capable of waging struggle against the colonizer and their system. It was the introduction of the theory of African internationalism to our movement that served as a groundbreaking necessity understanding colonialism as the mode of production that led to the birth of capitalism and the resultant European wealth has provided our struggle with a to what end. We are no longer bogged down with philosophical idealism, forced to struggle against concepts like racism and white supremacy as the colonizer continues to rape, brutalize and exploit our Africa and African people everywhere. It is this development that has led to the types of successes experienced by the Department of Agitation and Propaganda in the year of 2021. Next. There is no question that this system doesn't have much longer to go, but it doesn't mean we are able to feel comfortable. The crisis of this social system should be seen as an opening to deepen it further. The Department of Agitation and Propaganda plays a critical role in this. As stated by the chairman in the 2021 political report to the second seven Congress plenary, all of our work is influenced by the incredibly deep crisis of imperialism. When we say the crisis is existential, we are at the same time positioning ourselves for the eventuality of seizing the power of self-government. We are positioning ourselves as, as the strategic tool of the African working class and toilers of the world to destroy colonialism and unleash the forces of socialist revolution globally. The Department of Agitation and Propaganda must prepare for this event as a catalyst and as part of the global infrastructure for international black power under the leadership of the African working class. The development of Agiprop requires its capacity to envision itself to be an arm of an independent global African working class state. This is what carrying out the seven Congress mandates and resolutions must ultimately facilitate. This outcome is implicit in all the work all the time, but the liberated future that Agiprop helps to project to our party and our people in the world must be visible to Agiprop itself. 
Agiprop recognizes it will have to play a major role in promoting and raising up the 50 year history of our party. Shortly after our plenary, we, we, we will be rolling out a series of materials to be used for a propaganda campaign carried out throughout the regional structure. This will include POA templates for community events that a local party unit, organization, and region will be able to take, modify when necessary, making them capable of carrying out events that will celebrate our 50 year anniversary while also building the party. Next. In 2020, the University of Florida digitized every print issue of the spear in our possession. They have included our spears into their digital collection. This has led to the party being able to access its own history. This will increasingly become the case as we develop an in-house capacity to digitize other media forms. In 2014, Burning Spear Media partnered with I'm sorry, in 2021. Burning Spear Media partnered with UF to submit a grant application to digitize the 40 plus years catalog of the archived audio and video recordings of our movement. Pending our victory in securing it, we will be able to digitize hundreds of hours worth of archived audio and video. However, our digitizing work doesn't rely solely on securing grants. We will investigate different means to make the party's archived history accessible to our party and the rest of the world. We of course will be using our own institutions which contribute to our 50 year history to promote the party and the chairman at every turn. In fact, promoting the chairman as the leader of the African nation and the genuinely socialist international revolution, the revolutionary will be turned into a major campaign of the entire party as we will be using many, as many methods as possible from scorched earth initiatives to social media presence amplification, extending our reach beyond anything we've done up to now. We will conduct special programming on Black Power 96 radio, including special episodes of Black Power talks, airing PSAs and speeches. We will ensure that each issue of the Burning Spear highlights our 50 year history, articles, culture submissions, photo spreads and milestone pieces will be part of the ways our paper will reflect the 50th anniversary. We will produce banners and posters to be used to, to be added to our physical stores and local offices and we'll make sure our online platforms feature content regarding our 50 year history, including our main websites, HTMLs and our social media pages. We are extremely excited for the creativity that will be unleashed through this process of promoting our 50th anniversary. As mentioned in the chairman's political report to the third seven Congress plenary, much of the work Adjaprop will be producing and distributing will require the full effort and participation of our party regions throughout the world. So I'm calling on you already to assume the task of raising up the chairman and our party's glorious 50 years. The department is certain that through our efforts, our party and movement will experience the confidence associated with being part of an organization with such a glorious history and sturdy foundation. Next. So as we transition to the Department of Agitation and Propaganda's institution reports, we appropriately begin with the Burning Spear newspaper, the oldest institution of our movement. Recently celebrating 53 years of continued print production, the Spear in the year 2021 made some tremendous leaps by a very dedicated staff of party members and volunteers. We not only got every issue out on time every month, they were expeditiously shipped to our distributors before the first of the month to give our distributors the full 30 days to sell, sell, sell. In this report, we review how we responded to the mandates presented by the chairman in the 2021 political report and speak about the things we have not accomplished and our approach to overturning that. To give this report, we have comrade Soliana Bikel, who represents one of our victories. One of our goals in the department was to recruit a managing editor, a second in command for this institution, and we did that. Introducing Soliana to deliver this report. Uhuru. Uhuru, thank you, Director Akile. Uhuru, comrades, my name is Soliana, managing editor for the Burning Spear newspaper, and as stated, I'll be delivering this portion of the report. I first want to start off by recognizing the leadership of Chairman Amali Ishtela and Deputy Chair Onazani Ishtela and the entire National Central Committee, which functions as the editorial board for the Spear. We want to start by acknowledging the forces that make up our relentless Spear staff. Um, we have Director Akile, the editor-in-chief. We have Nia Benga, the political editor, and myself as the managing editor. Uh, next, please. We also have Matt Tamela, uh, staff writer, Sandy, layout editor, Honey Blue, senior proofreader, 
We have Kota, who's also a senior proofreader, and, and, and Yindu, uh, our photo editor. Next slide. <clears throat> we have Sayero, who's also a proofreader, Mads, a proofreader. And not pictured, we have Abo, Anna, and Clara, who are all proofreaders, and Gas Mask and LM, who work on the layout team. We want to salute these com comrades who, without our victories, would not have been possible. The Spear celebrated 53 years of continued production in December of 2021. The founding of the Spear predates the birth of the party itself. This, in fact, and this in, is, is in fact in and of itself reflects the significance of this journal. It has always served as an organizing tool and a lifeline to the African Revolution during the period where our movement was under military assault by the US government. The spirit continued to reflect the struggles of our people and in the same breath was instrumental in the development of the theory of African internationalism. It was not only a reporting tool, it was simultaneously providing analysis for the problems faced by our people and the movement. This history is what compels our efforts today to produce a powerful, potent piece of propaganda that will continue to be a crucial part of organizing every African worker down in the colonies in which we live. Next. <clears throat> We've provided ongoing trainings in writing for and selling the spear, equipping the members of our movement to tell the stories of our communities. One of the ways that the sphere has won greater, more productive participation in its production process, as well as written contribution by party members was through the APSB and ME columns in which party members are encouraged to tell their story and speak to why they joined the party. We also trained and deployed field reporters to report for the Impedum Convention, as well as the BIB Coalition March on the White House. We will continue to do this for all of our major events. Another one of the ways that the Spear has won greater, more productive participation in its production process, as well as con contribution by the colonized African population in general, is through the revitalized drum and spear column of the Spear, in which the voices and cultural talents of African prisoners were published and showcased. This is an example from the July and August Spears that celebrated Black August and the movement to free all political prisoners. And this was also, this was also the month the Spear successfully established and sustained the donor program for Black August. Next slide. Cultural work like poems and reviews of African music were increasingly published and showcased in the Spear by party members as well as non-party members. Here we have an example from the March 2021 Spear celebrating African women. Kamar Matsumela wrote a, view of the, a, a review of the album Freedom in the Mix produced by our very own Haiti editor, Eliki Ngoma, as well as reviews of films like Judas and the Black Messiah and Small Acts, providing African internationalist views of popular culture. These types of reviews should inspire creativity among our staff and writers in our movement. Comrade Alikia also contributed a review of Fresh Love Wadezil, an African singer songwriter in Haiti, and his work Monde Yo Pumwen. When Alikia shared the article on her Instagram page, it was actually reposted by the artist himself. <clears throat> We've also called on regions to report on the work happening where they are. Through this process, we've, been, we've seen more reports coming in detailing the work on the front lines. We want to salute the northern region and I need to can actually get to the next slide, sorry. Um, we've also called on the regions to report on the work happening where they are. Um, through this process, we've seen more reports coming in detailing the work on the front lines. Um, we want to salute the northern and western region for continuously submitting articles documenting the different struggles and victories taking place where we are. We've received and printed reports on impedum branches being formed, party units being consolidated, community struggles like the Bethesda uh, Cemetery struggle and more. We've also received a full spread on the bread, peace and black power campaign happening in occupied Azania, connecting our party to itself. In our writings training, we make it a point to show incoming writers how to use the 14 point platform as a reference point for the articles. This ensures that our articles point to a to what end and the line of African internationalism permeates the analysis. Our standard columns continue to con contribute to reports on our work in our major organizations and institutions and provide ongoing analysis about pressing questions. Those columns include Point of the Spear, edited by Chairman Omalia Shatella, Office of the Deputy Chair, edited by Deputy on Chair Onazanea Shatella, Kinshasa International, edited by Secretary General Louise Kinshasa, Harriet's Daughters, edited by Annual President Yejide Ornmila, African Resistance Now, edited by Dexter Milumwengu and President Kalambayi Andinet, the All African People's Development and Empowerment Project, edited by Chuo Niso Luzolo and Dr. Aisha Fields, Africa, edited by Director Tafari Mugheri, Haiti, edited by Ali Kiangoma, and White Solidarity with Black Power, edited by APSC Chair Penny Hess. 
Outstanding for the Spirit is surrounding the question of spear distribution, both within the US and internationally. Despite the dynamic spears we have produced, and while our sales were up 14% compared to 2020, our goal to be distributing 10,000 spears by the end of 2021 was not achieved. We have made continuous struggles within the regions, with the regions within the U.S. to increase their sales, providing uh, providing spear sellers training for those who are unfamiliar with how to go about selling their community. And we also initiated a reporting form several years ago, but it still remains an issue to receive regular reports from the regions. Through the process of the Army of Propagandists, which will be discussed later on, we tend to speak to the mandates put forward from the chairman about how selling the sphere must be considered as part of the essential work of every party member. We do want to acknowledge the regions who compiled in our directives to increase sales in their areas. They mobilized the forces in their region, submitted regular reports, and even increased the amount of stores in their area carrying the spear. That was the Western and Northern region, salute to Matsumal in the West and Dexter in the North. We also did not resolve the issue of getting the spear out internationally. We did not investigate how to make this happen despite the growing necessity to get this on the ground to the comrades to increase our political and ideological influence in the various places the party is building. By the time of this report, however, we have identified a service package hopper that will allow us, for, that will allow us to ship the spear at an affordable rate internationally. Increasing our, our printing to 10,000 spirits, as well as shipping both in the US and internationally, requires the spirit uh, be economically self-efficient. The primary revenue stream for the paper is distribution, which means the task to win our party to sell the spirit is a matter of urgency. I would now like to turn the, the report over to comrade Lisa Watson to discuss uh, burning spear publications. Uhuru Lisa. Uhuru Soliana, thank you, and Uhuru comrades. My name is Lisa Watson. I am a member of the African People's Solidarity Committee, and I serve as the project coordinator for Burning Spear Publications under the leadership of Director Akile Anayi. It is such an honor to be a member of the Department of Agitation and Propaganda under the leadership of the party as part of the responsibility of the African People's Solidarity Committee to turn over all of the stolen resources to the African Revolution. And I would also like to salute our leadership, Chairman Omali Shatella, Deputy Chair Ona Zinea Shatella, the entire NCC of National Central Committee of the party, and my direct leadership, APSC Chair Penny Hess. So here is the 2021 Burning Spear Publications Report. Uh, next slide, please. Um, we want to first acknowledge the volunteers that work we were that we worked with toward the beginning of the year initially this team came together to work on the reprint of reparations now which was started and then they also contributed their time and skills to help produce and even translate the pamphlets that we were able to publish this year so in 2021 in a joint project with the office of the chairman burning spear publications republished four pamphlets they were Obama, the Elections, and the Struggle for Justice, Peace, a Better Life, and Black Power, Black Community, Control of the Police, The Ballot and the Bullet, and The New Period, A Time for Party Building. Next slide. And re-released four vintage pamphlets, Me and the African People's Socialist Party, A Personal Testimony by Alvalita Donaldson, Forward the Revolutionary African National Democratic Struggle, Smash Slander and Build Principled Unity and Report from the Mountain. Burning Star Publications has not yet completed the project to republish Reparations Now, the book that includes a report and testimonies from the party's first international tribunal on reparations that was held in 1982. We did create an index of the archive materials needed for the book and made some progress on locating and digitizing those materials. Next slide. Burning Spear Publications increased sales income by 20% over 2020. However, our goal at the beginning of 2021 was to double sales. So we summed up the main reasons we did not achieve that goal where one, we did not succeed in completing the publication of that new edition of Reparations Now, and two, we didn't carry out a strong promotion strategy. There were some promotions, but they were limited in size and scope, due in large part to our human resources capacity. So 
promotions and building the Burning Spear Media promotions team through the NTU Volunteer Brigade program are priority goals for 2022. Um, all right. And then some promotions efforts that we did in 2021 include print, uh, creating a print version of the Burning Spear Publications catalog so that movement literature agents could approach local bookstores and libraries about carrying Burning Spear Publications titles. Next slide, please. And Burning Spear Media launched live sales in November holding three sales so far for Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and on December 22nd, which was the 53rd anniversary of the Burning Spear newspaper. And the live sales um, features new items, deals on book bundles, and rare collectibles from the archive for auction. So the goals for 2022 are one, to recruit, build the Burning Spear Publications team, including volunteers to work on production, promotion and distribution. Two, to publish uh, the 2022 political report, Relentless as a Booklet, the new edition of Reparations Now. And the next step of that is going to be an archive intensive scheduled for early March and six new pamphlets. And we've identified what those are. So they include African internationalism, um, the question of the nation. So those two things are chapters from an uneasy equilibrium and that are also in vanguard. And then um, we want to publish some other things, including African internationalism versus Pan-Africanism, um, which was by Luezi Kinshasa, Secretary General Luezi, and um, some other pieces by Secretary General Luezi as well, including on neocolonialism in Africa and on reparations. And um, we also want to publish uh, or work at, in my role as APSC Agitprop, working under the party's Department of Agitprop to produce pamphlets of Chairwoman Penny's um, presentations as well. So a third goal is to develop, promote, and sell new products that include posters, greeting cards, et cetera, that promote African national identity and African internationalism as has been called for in political reports by the chairman. Um, a fourth goal is to produce promotional materials and build the promotion capacity, including continuing the monthly live sale events and completing the revamp of burningspearmarketplace.com. Um, five, to expand distribution to college campuses or, or to more college campuses and get into book wholesalers. And six, to develop an auctions and collectibles sub revenue stream because there's a lot of stuff in the archives um, that people are paying a lot of money for outside of, you know, the movement is not getting that. So we wanna get into that market. And let's see, okay, next slide. Oh, wait, 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 sorry. Yeah, um, we're, and I would now like to turn it over to Director Kile who will introduce the next slide. Um, Black Power 96 Radio's report. Oh, for real. Thank you, uh, comrades Lisa and Soliana. So actually to open up this report, I would like to introduce our special guest. He is a nominee for Comrade of the Year, my favorite DJ, your favorite DJ, DJ station manager of Black Power 96, Eddie Maltzby. Hooroo, Mr. Eddie. Yeah, hooroo. Come on. Hey, how you doing? Good, how you doing? <clears throat> great, great, great. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And I want to say to the people, thank you for having me. Hooroo, comrades. How are you doing this afternoon? My name is Eddie Maltzby, manager of Black Power 96.3 FM radio station located here in St. Petersburg, Florida. We are under the nonprofit, the African People's Education and Defense Fund. You already know is the baddest nonprofit in the world, man. And again, uh, most of you might know me as DJ Eddie, what Degre Dekile said, uh, world's best blind DJ. I don't see nothing, but I feel everything. And I'm feeling this plenary, man. It's, it was a wonderful day. A uh, couple of last couple of days has been uh, absolutely uh, off, just awesome. And I first want to give thanks and uh, salute the chairman O'Malley Yasatella, his leadership, and uh, of course, Deputy Chair Ona Zene Yasatella. Want to say hey to her because sometimes I get that wrong, and the chairman called me and say, DJ Eddie, it's not Zene, it's Zene. I said, okay, I got you. <laughs> so I want to say hey to the chairman and, and for all he does uh, to building this institution 
and uh, deputy chair for all that she does for building this institution and this nonprofit, uh, the African People's Education and Defense Fund, which we are under the umbrella here at Black Power 96.3 FM radio. Uh, I wanna just say to, to report on things that we have going on at the station here. Uh, beautiful station. We are celebrating this year five years. That's right, five years of broadcasting. And it's just not a radio station. And, and I have to make that clear. Uh, being the manager, I have to make that clear to not only to the DJs, to everyone that walks in Black Power 96.3 studios. It's just not a station where we're just going to play music and have a good time. It's a station where we have to get the message out uh, by the chairman. So I said it before, some people teach and then there's the teachers that teach and then there's teachers that educate. The chairman is, is truly an educator, been uh, doing this for over 50 years now. We see this, we see the enormous, the enormous uh, growth in the Yuhuru house, uh, not only the Yuhuru house, the, the mission that he's on and this radio station is gonna do everything in its power to carry out that mission uh, also with not only just broadcasting the chairman every Sunday at eight o'clock to 10 o'clock on, on O'Malley taught me. Not only that, but every chance we get, I, I had a programmers meeting recently and I told my DJs and people that are volunteering here. And let me first, before I go there, let me give a shout out to all the volunteers because we cannot do this at the radio station without volunteers. This is essential that we have volunteers to come in. It's essential that we have a recruiting. Recruiting, it should be foremost and foremost on our minds, on our daily journey with making a revolution uh, real. We have to get people to come in, volunteers to come in, people to join the African People's Socialist Party, people to join AMWO, people to join uh, BIB. This is not only necessary, it is crucial that we do this. And so uh, for Black Power 96.3 FM, the volunteers, I want to salute his brother Chris, who is coming in and, and just came in like gangbusters, a volunteer that came in, and I'm telling you, he's doing a wonderful job taking Black Power Radio now that was mono now to stereo so that we can be heard on both sides of the speaker. And it also is giving us extra people that's picking up the radio. Because sometimes if you're playing music and you only have a mono signal, then the, some people might not get it at all. So I think that's Conrad, uh, Chris for coming in and helping out Smokey the Bear engineer, making the music sound better and getting more programs and su saluting those Conrads that come in and volunteer every day on a daily basis. Of course, I wanna also salute uh, Director Kile. I don't think uh, a lot of this would be possible without that Conrad, amazing job she does from, from not only a standpoint of the radio station, but a standpoint of uh, the Burning Spear newspaper, Aja Pra in a whole, Director Kile is definitely uh, the chief and editor. She's definitely doing what she has to do to forward the mission of the African People's Socialist Party and forward the mission of the radio station. Again, I'm reporting on the radio station because there's so much to report on. Last year, we raised funds and, and, and those funds that we raised, we also had a, a fundraiser prior in 2020 where we just barely made our funds. But I wanna say uh, last, uh, the year before, that was the year before, but last year we raised funds. We asked for $7,000 and we got up to, uh, close to $9,000. That's the growth of Black Power and that is 6.3. People are knocking on the doors, they are coming in. And it has to do with finding the sympathy. We all have to find the sympathy of what we are doing here uh, at the station and across the world and across the globe. We have to target people where they are and where they are, we target them and say, look, this is what is going on. We have a movement that says freedom. If freedom is not done for uh, everybody, then nobody's going to get it. We have to get that uh, message out. And I, I, make it by, I made it my priority as being the manager of Black Power 96.3, my priority of doing commercials and, and putting out PSAs that is, that will say, Yuhuru, it means freedom. Yuhuru, get the word out. We gotta do this, it's, it's, it's meaningful. People need to hear this, no matter what we do, we gotta continue to say revolution. That's what we're looking for. That is what we're fighting for. If people say, oh, Ed, you got a wonderful job and I'll stop them, I don't have a job. 
This is not a job for me. This is a fight for me. I'm fighting for revolution. I'm fighting for reparations. And that's what Black Power 96.3 radio station has to do. We cannot just let this station play music and only music. Yeah, I like Luther Vandross. Yeah, I like Michael Jackson. But what I love is reparations for my people. What I love is the Yahuru movement. It's freedom for everybody. If it's not freedom for everybody, it's not freedom for nobody. And that's the way we have to do. At this radio station, if I'm going to be the manager, I'm going to manage a station. No longer a mom and pop station that the chairman is looking for. Chairman don't want no mom and pop chairman uh, uh, radio station. He wants a station that goes globally. And globally is what we're going to do here at Black Power Daddy 6.3 FM. International. And that's what we're going to do here at Black Power Dad is 6.3. I've already started by implementing the uh, local artists going global, a fantastic spearheaded program where local artists everywhere in this country can submit their music to this station and no other station has found it and perfected this yet, but Black Power has. We got people calling us from and sending their music from San Diego, California, Houston, Texas, uh, Canada, I can't name them all. Uh, North Carolina, uh, Miami, Miami, Atlanta, Orlando is too many to name. Overseas, a brother sent me a, a song from Africa, South Africa. This is what I'm talking about. And when they send their music in, they get their friends, their family, and their loved ones download the app. Black Power 96.3 FM. And when they download the app to listen to their favorite loved one and their favorite artist, which is their cousins and nephews and mothers and fathers playing music, then they start listening to this station. And when they listen to this station, they start hearing the chairman, O'Malley Satella, bringing Sunday, Sunday morning, O'Malley taught me another O'Malley minute that we put in place here at Black Power 96, because we want people to hear. If you want it, people to, to fo follow the chairman, they gotta hear the chairman. So we're gonna do that continuously to play uh, O'Malley minute, because sometimes, one minute profoundly from the chairman can last a lifetime. And I'm gonna say it again, one minute of the chairman saying something profound could last a lifetime. Mm -hmm. Burning spear is the reading burning is in your mind. Put it in your soul, in your heart. One minute of a foundation, one minute can build a Yahuru house somewhere else. This is what I'm talking about Black Power 96.3 Studios are doing. We're getting the message out because it don't take a million people to make a million dollars one man can give it to you. You gotta put it out there. Recruiting is what we're doing here at 96.3 FM. And I wanna talk about not only the, the things that we're doing on, on a good side, but some of the things I think we're self-critical at. And that's not giving, getting enough PSAs out getting enough information out. I want to end that today. I heard a young lady yesterday and uh, on, the, on, on this preliminary has a song called uh, Step It Up, a Step Up, and beautiful song. Why is it not played on Black Power 96? Please, Conrad, whoever you are, because I can't think of your name right now, please send it to submit music at blackpower96.org. Again, submit music at blackpower96.org. I want you to write it down because I'm calling on all you Conrads to do the same. This is a radio station that is broadcasted live out of St. Pete. It's going across the world. You can take part in it. All you got to do is give me a clip. You got your phones. Record something. Record something profound. Give it to me. Send it to me. Contact at blackpower96.org or submit music at blackpower96.org. I'll take it. I'll edit it, I'll put it on the airways so that somebody can hear it. Let's get it in somebody ear hole so we can get it in somebody mind, so we can get it in somebody heart, so we can get it somebody else to say, ooh, I want to join the African People's Socialist Party. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I want to be a part of the Black Power Blueprint. Ooh, I want to be a part of building a foundation of a revolution of a, not only a revolution. And did they hear that? They, somebody, Conrad, I, I, I see you. I'm the world's best blind DJ. I don't feel nothing, but I feel, I don't see nothing, but I feel everything is my slogan. I don't see nothing, but I feel everything. I feel somebody right now writing down this information. Submit music at blackpower96.org. Send me what you think we should play 
on the radio. So I have a pile of information to play to other people, other Africans all over the country, all over the world, and so we can get them to join hands with us, unite with building a foundation, an organization that has already been in existence for over 50 years, saluting the Chairman O'Malley Yusatella again for 50 years of relentless. My brother has been relentless, relentless. My sister, Ona Zene. Yes, to tell her. Relentless is what I am. Relentless is what this radio station is going to be. Again, we're celebrating five years and we could not do it without you. We could not do it without volunteers, without people hearing the message of the O'Malley Sunday Studies. O'Malley taught me Sunday Studies. Hearing the message of, of uh, the bullet, the Bible battle the bullet. of the bullet by Malcolm X. We have to get involved with your radio station. I know a lot of y'all wear a lot of different hats, so do I. Hmm. I know a lot of y'all do a lot of things, so do I. Mm -hmm. But I just still want to make you give me a report, not a report, but a recording, because it, it might be just your voice and your recording that might help some little girl or some little boy, which is our future. That's why I'm fighting. I'm not fighting for, for just only me. This is not about me. This is about my country. And my country is Africa. Mm -hmm. This is not my about my child, my, my son, Eric, or my son, Maurice. This is about another African child. That's what I'm talking about. Relentless is the word. And if you look up the word, I'm telling you, you look up that word, relentless. I want you to look up that word. If you haven't done it, do it because it means a, it is a long line a long line of explanation that goes with that word relentless. If you don't believe me, try me. I ain't read it, <laughs> I know it. That's what I'm talking about. Black power, putting out the message that we have to be relentless. We have to continue doing what we're doing. Our shortcoming is not getting enough people heard. And I wanna you know, tap on that because but this is not just about a reporting of doing good. We gotta, we gotta report on where we fell at. Because if we don't report on where we fail at, how can we get better? And, and where my, my falling self-critical uh, is, is, is getting more people in, recruiting more, volunteers more, because without volunteers, it's hard to do the job that we're doing. And we need volunteers here and abroad. No matter where you are in the country watching this, I count on you. I'm looking for your support to volunteer, to come on and join the Black Power Blueprint. Come on and join Black Power 96.3 FM. I can use your help. I'm, I'm telling you, I can. I don't see nothing, but I feel everything. And I feel you coming on and joining this movement, uh, the Uhuru movement, the African People's Education and Fist Fund, the uh, Impedum, so many, so many. And the wonderful work that's being done we have to continue to do it, you know, and I want to thank and salute also Lisa Watson out of uh, Minnesota. I, I cannot be half of me without Lisa Watson, Sandy, Director Keeley, and of course, again, I want to salute the Chairman O'Malley and Sotella for his uh, profound statements, for his found relentless work. This brother, I remember him when I was a little fella, and I don't want to, you know, make the Chairman feel older or anything, but the Chairman has been doing this forever ever. And I don't know what kind of blood he has running through his body, but at times it has to be ice cold. At times it has to be a, a hot as fire because this brother has taken on everything that one man could take on and still take it on. So I just want to salute the chairman O'Malley and Satella because if it wasn't for him, I would not be here. And that's where we got to get other people to realize if it wasn't for, and, and P, I just heard Director Keeley say it a few minutes ago and people said that we gotta get him to the chairman, the leader of the African nation. I've been calling him the leader of the African nation ever since I got here. Mm -hmm. I didn't know who was the leader of the African nation, but to me, Chairman O'Malley was the leader of the African nation, but I don't know who they claim to be it, who, whatever, but no, Chairman O'Malley is a teller. In my mind, my heart is the, is the leader of the African nation. One nation, one Africa. I think I've ran over my time. I want to salute that everybody that's ever did anything to Black Power 96.3. Before I go, we have a, we have a fundraiser coming up and uh, it's gonna be held to February 27th. 
through March 12th. Again, February 27th through March 12th, we're gonna raise funds with Black Power 96.3 uh, to help the African People's Education and Defense Fund and the Blueprint here at 96.3 FM. If I'm talking fast, because I feel like I'm running out of time, but I de definitely want to remind you guys, February 27th through March 12th, we're gonna have a fundraiser and we're also gonna have a concert on March 11th at 7 p.m. I'm gonna be telling you more about that. And listen, download the app. If you haven't downloaded the app, please do that. It's free, absolutely free. Just go to blackpower96.org. Look for the Listen Live and have a circle with 96. Click it. You got the world's greatest blind DJ, DJ Eddie, and all the wonderful shows that are on there, like Dr. Marcella used to be the People's War Show, now has changed to Black Power Talks and so many other reparations in action with Jamie. These Conrads, these, these fellas, are doing what's necessary. I want to salute uh, Dr. Masabella and Dexter and so many of them that working on Black Power Talks and Jamie Simpson, Jesse Neville, Penny Hess, oh my God, the chairman Penny Hess, uh, the uh, socialist of the, I'm sorry, of the uh, Solidarity. Solidarity Movement. Yes, they are, they're just, I can't say enough about them being on Black Power Radio Station. Also, Brother Larry Faison, DJ in the morning with uh, the original Florida Spiritual Airs. Uh, so, so many shows uh, that's on their station. I also want to uh, thank, thank you to DJ Heavy Love, who recently left and came back. And uh, Bruce, uh, Bruce Loves the Almighty has a show on Tuesdays. Just go to the Facebook page, Black Power 96 FM Radio. Black Power 96 uh, FM Radio, that's our Facebook page. And again, I want to thank each and everyone for listening to me. And, re and remember, Black Power is all about economic development our education, we have to get the great disparities out about all these things. Cause white people ain't gonna teach us that. White radio stations ain't gonna give that. Right, the Black Power Blueprint is one of a kind. Amazing station, station Black Power 96.3 FM. Turn it on, listen to it, tell somebody, paste it. Paste it on your Facebook page. Do whatever you got to do. Share, share, share. That's how we get the, the word out about the Black, Black Power Radio. It's a, it's a, just not a radio station. It's a movement within a movement. Black Power. That's what we want to do. And I, again, thank you for, for joining me today. And remember, remember my motto, be good to me. I'll be good to you. We'll be good together. Vanguard up. Vanguard Yuhuru. up. No, for real. I want to send it out to Sandy, I believe. Sandy? Yes. All right. You heard what Carrats? For real. Woo. Mo fire. All right. Thank you, Mr. Eddie. And yes, now we're turning it over to Comrade Sandy, who will get into some of these details uh, regarding BP96. So for real. Wow. Wow. Salute and much respect to. DJ Eddie, station manager of Black Power 96. And I want to salute Director Akile Anayi, who's under whose leadership I work in my assignment to the party's Agipop department. I'm so honored to participate in this work under the leadership of the party as a member of the African People's Solidarity Committee, whose mandate it is to turn over all of the stolen resources, human and material, to the African Revolution as reparations. I salute our leadership, uh, Chairman Omali Shetela, Deputy Chair Ona Zanea Shetela, the entire National Central Committee, uh, uh, APSC Chairwoman uh, Penny Hess, and of course, Black Power 96 Radio Station Manager, Eddie Maltzby. Uh, from the Uhura House in St. Pete, the party's Agiprop department is forging a new African internationalist radio broadcast network that promises to unite the African nation through the production and distribution of propaganda that's free from the threat of censorship by social media algorithms. Uh, next. Uh, the Uhuru Movement's first community FM radio station, um, Black Power 96.3, was launched on January 30th, uh, 2017, licensed to the African People's Education and Defense Fund by the FCC to broadcast in South St. Pete on the call letters WBPU. In his political report to the party's 2021 plenary, um, Chairman O'Malley um, called for Black Power 96 to move beyond the confines of a mom and pop style operation as, uh, as, as, uh, as uh, station manager 
had, had referenced. And this past year, uh, Black Power 96 has fought to increase its African internationalism political education content to expand its reach both locally and through national syndication uh, to professionalize its operation through including um, including through the implementation of the NTU volunteer program designed by Office of Deputy Chair Onisene Ishitela, and to expand its base of business underwriters and individual supporters. Uh, in the fall of 2021, Black Power 96 made a major leap forward with the promotion of Mr. Eddie Maltzby Jr., the world's best blind DJ, to the position of station manager. Uh, the elevation of Mr. Eddie to this leadership position shows how the party unleashes the genius of the African working class and arms African people to take power over the institutions in the African community, in this instance, to control the narrative that defines the existence and the future of Africa and the world. Mr. Eddy has demonstrated his talent and dedication to Black Power 96 and to the mission of the African People's Education and Defense Fund over the prior three years that he had served as a volunteer DJ, initially as the host of Good Morning Gospel and later expanding his repertoire to include the Midday Cafe and Smooth Grooves featuring blues and Southern soul. Uh, Mr. Eddy created the station's local going global contest that gives uh, radio exposure to, to unsigned artists. Uh, next. And here you see some of the 2021 winners. So hundreds of votes are counted each week, mostly from St. Pete residents, but also from listeners as far away as uh, New York, California, Africa, and the Middle East who tune in through the station's mobile app and web stream. Uh, back in 2019, Mr. Eddie had initiated an annual benefit gospel concert. Initially, it was held in person at a church in St. Pete. And then for the past two years, the concert had to go virtual because of the COVID closures. And Mr. Eddie expanded the musical genres of the station, uh, recruiting artists from around the country, gospel, R&B, Southern soul, and hip hop to donate their performances. In 2021, he booked the legendary Gerald Alston of the Manhattans as the headliner. Next. In the political report to the party's 2021 plenary, Chairman O'Malley called on Black Power 96 to strengthen its base of support, especially within the African community, which is a real source of security for the party's institutions. He said that Black Power 96 must, quote, win the sympathy of the people if we come under attack. And we remember that it was the community who protected the Uhura House during the 1996 Battle of St. Pete. We also know that attacks by the state can come in other ways, uh, legally, financially, overtly, covertly. And it's Black Power 96's service to and connection with the people that will ensure the station's growth and security. Black Power 96 is the African community's only voice on the airwaves, on the radio airwaves in St. Pete that speaks out against the colonial gentrification, police violence and denial of basic rights. Uh, prior to the pandemic, it was Black Power 96 that forced the city to back down and allow African vendors to set up on the South Side for the Martin Luther King Parade. And today the Black Power 96 is the voice of the Uhuru Movement's campaign to take back the Dome, the historic African district that was destroyed to build a sports stadium. Uh, Black Power 96 is in them street segment uh, brings the voices of St. Pete residents directly from the streets onto the airwaves. Uh, next slide. And Black Power 96 brings African internationalism to the airwaves. So uh, the chairman's uh, uh, Omali Taught Me Sunday Studies are broadcast live. The daily political power hour features speech by the chairman and then interspersed throughout the day in between the popular music that's being played are bite-sized tidbits of African internationalist political education. So Mr. Eddy has initiated the Omali Minute that he re referred to, they spoke of, which are short quotes by the chairman as well as the 14 point platform of the party where each point is read by one of BP96's team of talented volunteers. Uh, we also have the monthly shout out uh, being broadcast that is a shout out to those supporters who are doing personal birthday fundraisers for the Black Power Blueprint, uh, a recording of the African National Women's Organization's advisory on dealing with child protective services, a recording of the International People's Democratic Uhuru Movement's advisory on what to do when the police stops you, and regular updated advisories from Project Black Anx COVID Task Force, courtesy of the African People's Development and Empowerment Project. So it really is the 
know, outlet for all the various components of the Uhura movement, and it's really powerful. Uh, in addition, uh, Black Power 96 airs two weekly programs that, that Mr. Eddy mentioned that dig deeper into African internationalist political education. And these two shows are broadcast not only on the FM airwaves in St. Pete, but are available on, on demand as podcasts. And so through that are heard by a worldwide audience. And that is Black Power Talks hosted by Matsumela Odom and Dexter Mwangu. Uh, Reparations in Action is hosted by Jamie Simpson and Jesse Neville with APSC Chairwoman Penny Hess as its uh, frequent featured guest. Uh, next slide, or next page. Uh, this fall, the popular uh, People's War show begun at the start of the pandemic during the party's People's War campaign was rebranded in order to attract a wider audience and to make the focus focus of the show more clear to potential listeners. So it's now known as Black Power Talks and co-hosts uh, Matsumela and Dexter continue to produce a top-notch professional program featuring a wide range of guests and, and topics. Uh, this show brings African international's perspective on trending and important issues, not only to the FM airwaves in St. Pete, but to an FM and streaming audience around the world. The show is currently syndicated on seven radio stations across the U.S. It's carried on 21 podcast platforms, including the new African-owned Umoja radio app. And downloads of the podcast have increased by 300% in 2021, with regular listeners in eight countries, including Jamaica, Occupied Azania, Canada, the U.K., Australia, Germany, and Turkey. Uh, next slide, or next page. <clears throat> The station has seen a, a, a direct response from listeners in support of this programming in this form of an 18% increase in supporting member income in 2021 and a 60% increase in the number of supporting members. And that's really key. It's really important in showing the growing base of listeners who are one to invest in their own radio station. In 2021, uh, Black Power 96 also saw a 40% increase in underwriting revenue. Uh, coming from double the number of underwriters as seen in 2020. And this has come from uh, three main sectors, from neighborhood businesses, from live event venues as they are beginning to reopen, and from the gospel community with which Mr. Eddy continues to build strong relationships. Next page. So Black Power 96 is truly an expression of the genius and creativity of the African working class. Uh, the radio Black Power 96 thrives under the political leadership of Agiprop director Akili Anai, pictured here at an outreach table with Aliki Angoma, who has agreed to begin curating music of the Caribbean for the station. And if you don't know them already, here are some of the 2021 programmers whose voices, opinions, and musical selections you hear every week on the station. Uh, there's Norman Jalali Richmond, who began broadcasting with the Uhura movement on uhuraradio.com nearly 10 years prior to the launch of Black Power 96.3 FM. Uh, he hosts Diasporic Music with his co-host, Melinda Francis, who is not pictured here, and DJ Heavy Love as uh, Mr. Eddie mentioned, is back on Black Power 96 with his Southern Soul show, Larry Faison hosting the original Florida Spiritual Air show and who is preparing to launch a new public affairs talk show and blah, which stands for Bruce Loves the Almighty hosts another program. So we wanna salute the hosts of Black Power uh, talks and reparations in action also who were mentioned earlier. So all the tremendous victories won by Black Power 96 in 2021 are made possible by the work of a dedicated crew of talented volunteers. Black Power 96 has continued to partner with Burning Spear Media to carry out the NTU volunteer program under the leader and the postings of the volunteer positions for voiceover talent, studio engineers, grant researchers, and programmers have brought many volunteers into the station. Some have stayed for a short period and some are still with us, having increased their roles of responsibility in the station. A PIPSA, not, not, who is not pictured here, is uh, Black Power 96's youngest volunteer. She began her service as a voiceover talent volunteer about a year ago at the age of 14. Uh, she hails from Kuwait and has grown into the position of audio production coordinator, leading a team of volunteers to produce uh, public service announcements, underwriting mentions, and the 
Party's 14-point platform. Mr. Eddie recruited, who he mentioned, uh, his longtime creative partner, Smokey the Bear, to the position of managing the station's music automation. And Black Power's uh, 96's most recent volunteer, also uh, saluted by Mr. Eddie, is Chris, who brings his engineering to help troubleshoot and upgrade the studio operations. Next slide. So in 2022, the uh, Black Power 96 radio will uh, get back out there with in-person community outreach and live concerts. I know that, that everyone is just aching to get back out on the street in a, in a much bigger way. Um, the station also plans to develop new programming with shows on local issues, legal education, health information, and multilingual talk. Um, also, the station will be working to find funding and will find funding for staff for training programs for studio upgrades and the station is going to be in 2022 launching a black power radio network beginning with the contacts that were made through the syndication work of black power talks promotion coordinator dexter so as we can see uh, black power 96 is not just explaining the world it's changing it and now i want to pass it over to Comrade Matsumala Odom, the party's cadre development director. Uhuru. All right, Uhuru, thanks for that, Sandy. Um, uh, I'm Matsumala Odom. I am the uh, cadre development corrector, uh, sorry, director of cadre development uh, uh, for the African People's Socialist Party. The Department of Cadre Development is the newest office created under the leadership of Director Akile Anai with the direct leadership and advice of the Office of the Chairman in 2021. Uh, the creation of this office was the direct outgrowth of the mandates put forward by Chairman Omali Yeshitela. In the last plenary report, Chairman Omali Yeshitela mandated that the Department of Agitation and Propaganda create a program for the continued uh, development of agile prop skills throughout the movement. Uh, Chairman wrote, uh, all party organizations must have the skills regularly honed by Agiprop to carry out basic uh, Agiprop related work throughout our party, down to the unit level and within our mass organizations and general mass work. Agiprop training has to include uh, winning party members uh, to an understanding of how to organize uh, political discussions, Chairman talked about, debates, and other politicizing educational events throughout the African colony, especially the African working class. Ch Chairman also uh, mandated the regular study of 14 point platform. It is, in this, it, it is in this regard that we saw the creation of the army of propagandists, but we also moved towards the creation of a standardized 14 point platform study uh, that was um, coupled with a dynamic scorched earth campaign that plastered the African community with hundreds, if not thousands of posters of our platform uh, throughout North America uh, and, and outreach information. So, you know, and, and I pass by them daily, they're still up there, which shows really the unity that the African community has um, with it, uh, as well as some of our uh, plastering skills. So uh, just if anybody wants, make sure you, you can, literally go out there just buy some of that wallpaper paste and they can't take it down so uh, uh make sure you hit the back end in front of it so um uh it's been up there for almost a year so let's change slides it is in this context that i was brought into the, uh, under under the leadership of the chairman and director Kile to create the office in, two, in the spring 2021 i also believe that the black power summits played an important role in the creation of this department Early in, in early 2021, before the second plenary of the Seventh Congress, uh, I directed the creation of seven regional Black Power conferences that, in many ways, offers uh, for a useful structure and format uh, to the uh, creation of the regional mini intensives that regional agile prop coordinators and their committees will lead uh, in the year to come. Alongside this position, I also serve as the international vice president of Impedum, as some of y'all heard. Black Power Talks podcast, as some of y'all heard, which is formerly the People's War Show, and I contribute to the Burning Spear. Now, my profession is an African internationalist revolutionary, but in my colonial job, I serve as a Black Studies professor. 
uh, my position has allowed me to bring that skills that I've learned as a trained black study scholar and historian to the study of uh, 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 to the study of party materials, um, uh, the writing uh, the writings of chairman, and the general love for the fifty plus year history of the party and the movement. Uh, the universities and colleges play a crucial part in the colonial superstructure. Uh, many African scholars in the field that I have uh, that I work in uh, have been agents for the ideological imperialist assault against African independent the African independence movement. Some unwillingly, but many very, 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 very willingly. So, uh, in my classroom uh, and academic publications, I have challenged this assault and also introduced party literature and the writings of chairman to thousands of students. Uh, I have created curricula and study guides to go with our works. We can see this in the circulation of, of, of a curriculum that uh, I created for the pamphlet, uh, Why I Became a Revolutionary, which is actively being sought by uh, hundreds of students right now from uh, San Diego State University. Uh, so, so giving us a good, good, good problems, right? To force these things uh, back into the, in, 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 into print. Uh, but this war of ideas will not only be fought in the halls of academia, nor just by myself. It must be waged in every street corner, shop, prison block, you name it. Building the office to capacity will take, will place these skills in the hands of the African working class. <clears throat> Uh, so, so working through a 14-point platform, uh, th through they study the 14-point platform from previous cadre attendances, we had created the 14-point platform political education series and the and and the curriculum. Uh, the purpose of this curriculum was to standardize the knowledge of the platform as well as equipping the um, comrades with basic knowledge of how the party works and the movement organizations. There's one way in which I really say that, um, you know, the 40 point platform really is, 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 is a handbook to uh, African internationalist principles. There's 14 points. People ask you, so what's your position on women? What's your position on reparations? What's your position on X, Y, and Z, right? So, so, so this isn't just like, like road memorization, wow, that sounds cool or whatever. Uh, th this is actually, it actually forwards the practical work and arms every single person in, in our movement with the ability to take our ideas out into uh, uh, the public. I know I'm going script, going rogue, everybody, going rogue. You know, reel them in, reel them in. No, but seriously, y'all, because um, I don't think it's a coincidence that in 1979, the party platform uh, uh, was, was created. And it's at that time that uh, a young, I think she was 19 years old, 18 years old, uh, 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 Demisha Blacker uh, had traveled uh, all, all the way throughout Europe, uh, uh, armed with a, 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 an understanding of the party uh, platform. And that's what allowed for um, uh, the Desi Woods campaign to grow and eventually a, so the, the basis uh, for, for even the African Socialist International. So this isn't a small thing, right? This is central to the work that we do. So after the platform and the main ideas, there are three to four multiple choices, choice questions and four, and four discussion questions. These can be done with rapid fire uh, and, and can be the basis of, or can be the basis of, of, of extensive study. Um, we can see evidence of the effectiveness of this study uh, in other parts of the work uh, and, and also in the articles submitted to the SPEAR, as well as the continual regional study that's taking place in the South right now. So let's change slides. So the 14 point platform, as we talked about, is connected to the political education regime. We can see uh, this in the connection between the 40 point uh, platform outreach campaign and the spear studies and uh, some known as the studies on a stoop where from San Diego to St. Louis to Philadelphia, we see party members and mass organization members holding actual studies actually in many places right where the, 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 the platforms have been placed into, into public uh, a, a light. Uh, we reorganized the army of propagandists to going back to our mandates because previously really the army of propagandists was something through which we were using to uh, really just monitor spear cells and stuff like that. But we went back to the mandates of body. Uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, so, so, so this committee uh, 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 now has representation from every region of the party with the, with the exception of Africa and the Caribbean. It's still in its infancy. The political education 
uh, regime reinforces the use of the standard party agenda. Uh, 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 the correct functioning and structures of the party and democratic centralism, uh, uh, it helps create a culture of political education. So uh, now to the last slide and to the, and, and the way forward, but you don't have to change it. It's right there, no, 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 no change, no change. It's, it's, um, so, so, so building the office to capacity. Uh, as noted, uh, we need to build this office and uh, regional committees to capacity. With the 50th anniversary and the 8th Congress fast approaching, this is imperative. From the international to the regional level, these cannot be one person shops. Some of the positions needed specifically are administrative assistant slash assistant project manager, a burning spirit archive research assistant, and study guide development assistant. Comrade Julius from the Southern, from, from Southern California, uh, has been brought into the de uh, Department of Agitation and Propaganda. He will be uh, he will help expand this work with his skills. Uh, at this uh, plenary, the Department of Agitation and Propaganda will be presenting a resolution uh, for the regular study of the 14 point platform. Uh, an army of propagandist leaders have been tasked with creating a schedule of quarterly mini intensives that will take place in 2022 as well. Uh, the Department of Cadre Development has organized an ar archive intensive in St. Petersburg for the Army of Propagandist Leaders that will uh, aid in the reproduction of the um, uh, of reparations now. Lastly, uh, 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 the Cadre Development is not a think tank, right? So that's what's different, right, than, than what we're doing in other places. This isn't a think tank. The ideas and education produced here are meant to be placed into action. For this reason, we will plan to establish increased links between cadre development and spirit writing, blurbs and urgent new topics, decentralize and democratize the spear writing, as well as links to outreach uh, campaigns, uh, 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 how to organize debates, discussions, political education throughout the colony, and even literally to just, to just how to how to pull together using the party platform of the Revolutionary National Democratic Program, uh, a, a speech on the fly. Um, that concludes our cadre development report. Now I wanna turn it over to comrade Maiza to deliver the NTU volunteer report. Ahuru, ahuru comrades. And thank you comrade Masamela for the intro. As stated, my name is Maiza Knopp. I am the Recruitment and NTU Volunteer Coordinator for the Department of Agitation and Propaganda. I want to first extend appreciation in abundance to my leadership and who is leading us all in this fight for total liberation and unification of the African nation. Chairman Amalia Shatella, who is responsible for us all being here before you today. Salute to Deputy Chair Ona Zanea Shatella, who in parallel brings African internationalism and self-determination front and center. I want to also salute um, the National Central Committee for their profound leadership and my leadership in this department, Director Akile. Um, I've also, um, as I've gotten more acquainted in this role, I want to, um, that I've been called on to do, I've been able to better process the way the NTU department must function in order to provide our volunteers with the greatest experience and skill developments opportunities on the globe. It all begins in the area of recruitment. The recruitment at NTU department had a very strong year in 2021. We've engaged, um, we've gained some very solid and driven volunteers. Our diverse team of volunteers are located globally all across the world and work remotely and very well collectively. We've worked with forces in Kenya, Nigeria, Kuwait, Brazil, and various places within the US. Our volunteers have shown great determination in carrying out the work it takes to see a liberated and unified African nation. Our volunteers are truly the heart and soul of our organization, and they display great leadership when taking on tasks and strike with precision every time. You, you and I see, the, uh, you and I across the world are able to witness their amazing work in every issue of the Burning Spear newspaper that we receive each month, and we should. Um, 
And we also are able to tune in by radio and podcast to Black Power 96 FM and listen to the hard work that is put in to reach our listeners all across the airways. Um, I believe I should be going to the, no, not next slide yet. Um, in Agile Prop, we had um, the goal to recruit two major positions, both in the biggest institutions in our department. That was the station manager for Black Power 96 and managing editor of the Burning Spear. We've, um, we've done both, we have done both and then, and then some. We want to salute these comrades who went above and beyond earning their promotions inside their prospective areas of work. First, we have DJ Eddie Mosby, um, who was promoted to station manager for Black Power uh, 96 Radio. Next page. Here we have Comrade Apipsa in Kuwait, who at just 15 years old has assumed the role of the public affairs producer for Black Power 96 Radio. Then we have Conrad Soliana, who started out with us as a proofreader on the Bernie Spear. She received several promotions as senior proofreader, production assistant, and after just six months, united to join the party. Shortly after, she was promoted to managing editor of the Spear and is already managing, uh, production, um, managing the production process. Next page. And we increase um, the training capacity of the SPEAR with the promotion of comrades Kota and Honey Bloom as senior proofreaders. These comrades will be able to train and um, train incoming proofreaders and evaluate their work in order to strengthen their skills in this area. Uh, great work, comrades. Um, here um, you will see the flow of the NTU process. Um, this gives a clear visual of what our finalized online and on the ground recruitment and outreach process looks like moving forward with onboarding our volunteers. So um, what you see before you is the first steps in creating the job descriptions and then posting them to useful volunteer recruitment sites. Those volunteer sites are also, um, also consist of local colleges and universities of our students. The uh, following step happens once the recruitment department uh, receives an email and the volunteer, uh, from the volunteer expressing their interest in the open positions. We, um, then we send them an orientation invite and that is done through Calendly um, where the volunteers then book their orientation day and time. Once the day and time has been selected, the volunteers will receive reminders two days prior to the and the day of the orientation. The fourth process is after the uh, su uh, success of the orientation, we provide the volunteers with all of the needed information of what um, the next steps will be and as, are, as they are assigned to their department team based on their inquiry. Um, as an extended measure of recruitment, we will um, we are in the process of, of creating an orientation packet to provide our volunteers with some um, great follow-up content um, that is seen um, within our NTU orientation video about our mass organizations. The final step as the facilitator is to send volunteers information status um, to the department staff to prepare the team to welcome our new volunteers who have gone through the NTU process. Those um, departments fall under Black Power Media and the NTU program. Um, that would be the um, Spear staff, the uh, Black Power 96 radio staff, the web and IT team, publications team, grants team, Black Power Talks podcast, and the NTU brigade and committee. This process has won us 15 volunteers in the last uh, last year and a total of 43 requests already so far this year um, that we've invited into the um, NCU orientation process. Next page. Once our volunteers are introduced um, to their um, area of work, we ensure um, uh, we ensure a consistent process for their development. We provide, um, our, we provide our volunteers with African international 
lists development through political education, which tops the agenda for every meeting, training development, um, training and development in Black Power 96, providing hands-on um, assignments and giving them feedback on the materials that they produce, increasing the skills in audio production and or programming. And we train and develop our, um, and in training and development, or we have a training session in areas of the Burning Spear newspaper, um, and those training areas are how to sell the spear, how to write for the spear, copy editing, and proofreading. Uh, next page. Oh, wait a minute. Nope, you can go back. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. So <clears throat> we put a cap on 2021 by hosting our second annual end of year volunteer appreciation celebration, where we um, celebrated our volunteers um, for their hard work. We initiated a volunteer, um, we initiated a volunteer of the year award and recognized all of the nominees and our winners. We took home, um, those who took home the titles were Cardella, in the web IT team, a Pipsa in the Black Power 96 radio, and Soliana in, um, on the Bernie Spear uh, staff. And this year we are instituting some helpful um, new department policies in uh, the next, next page, I'm sorry. And this year we are inst uh, instituting some helpful and new department policies to ensure that we have um, good staff and volunteer practices we want to always acknowledge that our volunteers regularly and provide um, exceptional staff and volunteer transparency. Um, we intend to do this with our assessment forms. I've developed um, because we want to hear from our volunteers. We want to hear their voice and what they have to say about their experience, you know, with the department. Um, and again, sorry. So we want to hear our volunteer voices. Um, and that has, I'm sorry. Well, that is just really to create that transparency between the staff and volunteer communication and to be sure that we are providing our volunteers with all of the tools that they need to enhance and to meet their volunteer expectations. I want to also, um, I have also developed staff communication forms that will be submitted as needed as, um, and we'll also be, we will also have a quarterly all department pull together, pull together meeting to assess our current capacity and recruitment needs so that the volunteer program reflects this. The NTU department will also be initiating on the ground outreach, seizing recruitment opportunities um, and in-person events. We will be developing literature um, for the Department of Agitation um, and propaganda department members and regional agitprop reps to take out to win forces to the to win um, I'm sorry to win forces to volunteer for these in institutions. Our on the ground outreach will also include a student strategy, um, which seeks to target schools and their volunteer opportunities, inserting um, our institutions as a place where students can contribute their time and skills. I'm also tasked with building the NCU committee to its capacity um, so we can accomplish all that we, um, all of our re recruitment goals for the year. Um, so that will conclude the NCU recruitment report and I will now turn it over to comrade Lisa and Cindy for the economic development reports of the room. Uhuru Maiza, thank you so much. And the question of economic development for the Department of Agitation and Propaganda and Burning Spear Media is an important political question. It means that the party must have the resources to speak on behalf of and in the interest of the African working class and the African Revolution. Burning Spear Media is the voice of the International African Revolution. Adjuprop is the Ministry of Information for the African Workers Socialist State. So the African working class must have the resources to control the production and distribution of information to the masses. As past political reports have stated, 
Next to the Office of Deputy Chair, Agiprop has the most potential for raising resources when we understand the importance of who the party is, what the party has to offer with the burning spear, the books and publications, the broadcasts and presentations by the chairman and party leadership, the political line of African internationalism that answers the questions people have today about how the world got to be the way it is. Agitprov has at least seven revenue streams under Burning Spear Media and more under Black Power 96 Radio. So I will be talking about some of the revenue streams we focused on building this year. Next slide. In 2021, under the leadership of the Office of Deputy Chair's Grants Committee, Agitprop applied for eight grants and began work on one other application that was submitted in early 20, 2022 to fund projects, including one, a book publishing project, two, an oral history project, three, Black Power 96 radio staff and station improvements, four, digitizing materials from the archive, and five, a Black Power history project. We want to salute the Agiprop department members who contributed to the grants work this year. Um, Director Kile, Comrade Matsumela, as well as the NTU volunteers, Anessa and Soren, who worked under the leadership of Sandy, who coordinates the Grants Committee for Agiprop. Four of the grant applications were denied, and five are still pending. It is also important to note that the Grants Executive Committee leadership did raise struggle with APSD's work in this area for not following democratic centralism and protocols related to timelines. And APSC members in Agiprop united with this struggle and are committed to following all protocols and fighting to win grants for the party's department of Agiprop. Then um, in 2021, we focused on ways to increase income for the Burning Spear newspaper. And we saw the potential to grow the subscription program, but first had to upgrade our systems to be able to deliver the Spear to subscribers consistently each month. And so that was done in June. Subscrip uh, subscription sales did increase by 60% compared to 2020 as a result of that. Next slide. Burning Spear Media held the annual Black August fundraising campaign, including a powerful online event looking at the Burning Spears newspaper coverage over the years of political prisoners. This campaign was used as an opportunity to relaunch Burning Spear Media's donor campaign, including sustainers and one-time donors who support the Mufundi Lake Prisoner Subscription Program and Burning Spear Media overall. This year's campaign increased donations by over 600% compared to last year's Black August campaign. However, we did have a big goal and only got 70% of the way there. So we summed up that we need more promotions and outreach to reach beyond the movement's current base. And that is totally winnable and doable because the prisoner subscription program is something so many people would want to support. And so the Burning Spear donor campaign will be continuing to promote and build that program. Another goal was to increase publication sales. Promotions efforts included a holiday promo campaign and launching live sales, which we plan to continue at least monthly. And as reported in the Burning Sphere publication section, publication sales increased by 20% in 21, uh, 2021 compared to 2020. So we think that increased promotions contributed to, the, to that, although there is so much more we can do in the way of promotions. Next slide. For Burning Spear Media in 2022, we have the goals to continue developing and expanding the existing revenue streams. This includes one, grants, two, increased Spear wholesale distribution, that is Spear sales through our movement distributors and the regional work, three, wholesale book distribution, getting the chairman's most recent books listed with wholesale catalogs so that it's easier for bookstores to stock the books on their shelves, four, Spear subscriptions. We want to double subscriptions in 2022. Online book and product sales. So publishing, promoting, and selling reparations now. Developing new products that promote African national identity. Posters, greeting cards, many other things. And trying for new one new product per month, including the books and pamphlets that we talked about in the publications report. 
um, six, the donor campaign. So to hold the Black August campaign and build the capacity for promoting that, doing more outreach and improving our donor appreciation and stewardship. Seven, your ads, growing the advertising program. Eight, um, to develop a new revenue stream based on the valuable materials housed in the Burning Through Media archives. This is one way that Burning Through Media can go to the money sector um, through auctions and collectibles markets and the many universities who, you know, mu you know, they have to have the spear and party historical literature in their libraries and digital collections. And there's already, you know, some some universities have have done that already and it's in demand. So we need to reach and expand that. Um, next slide. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, no, the same spread. Um, then for Black Power 96 Radio, um, one, develop the Black Power 96 revenue streams, including the donor campaign and underwriting, um, two, the grants for Black Power 96 Radio, and three, recruitment to support economic development. Next page, please. And then I'm going to talk briefly about two things that are key to supporting the economic development goals, recruitment, and then the website's revamp. So the priority positions we're seeking to fill to support the economic development goals for 2022 include one, coordinators for each of the revenue streams mentioned in the goals, two, promotions and marketing coordinators for one, you know, at least one for Burning Through Media, that side, and then one for Black Power 96 Radio. Um, we'd love even more than that, but, you know, um, three, product development coordinator um, for publications, including people to do product research, um, volunteers who could work on researching logistics and costs as we um, come up with ideas for products. Number four, graphic designers, five, video production, and six more web team members. And then um, on the right side of the page there, another key objective is to support economic development is to complete the, the website revamp that we've been working on, the burningspear.com and burningspearmarketplace.com um, the goal of that pro those projects is to make it easier for visitors to use those websites that distribute the Burning Spears content and that, and that sell the books and other products. So we have two dedicated skills NTU volunteers who have been working on this project this year. That's Joseph and Cardala. And we are also welcoming Iquan to this team. And it's a big project. It involves migrating the legacy of over 2,500 online articles that have been published on the Burning Spear website since 2007 and we are 80 percent of the way towards launching the sites we've gotten through a discovery phase which was surveys to understand the needs of five different user groups so you some of you may remember taking that those surveys um, then comparing different platforms to put the new sites on so we um, compared several of those and made some determinations and now we're in the phase of building and testing um, so we're aiming to launch the new e-commerce site in March and the new site in April. The new site, the new sites will provide a better user experience and more modern tools for the Agiprop forces who keep the sites updated and who fill orders. And they will support economic development in multiple ways, including increasing traffic to the sites, which will support the Spears ad sales and donation programs and will increase product sales. So I would now like to turn it over to Director Kile for our report's conclusion. Next slide. Uh, for real. So um, I think that pretty much says it all that you know this department and these comrades have been relentless, um, but our work to recruit into secondary leadership, professionalize our processes, train party and movement members in how to be a propagandist and increasing our reach has characterized the work of Agiprop this past year. And while we still focus on those things in 2022, we will be rapidly working to resolve the outstanding issues from, the 20, from 2021 and before. What we can say for sure is that the work coming out of Agiprop has changed. There is a real struggle and commitment being made by the leaders of this department to do what is necessary to ensure its success. There is no denying that we have much work ahead of us, but it is in recognition that Agiprop doesn't just play an important role right now, we are laying the foundation for our future as an arm of the African workers' socialist state. So with that, comrades, Uhuru, we are relentless. Thank you. Uhuru, 
Thank you for such a powerful report on the party's agit prop. I was, you know, such an honor to be part of it and, you know, a salute to the team, people that I work with every day. It's honestly an honor to be part of the team. Um, there were so many comments and, you know, questions that were blowing up the Zoom chat while the report was going on. So I'll read some of them, but it's a lot. <laughs> um, we have Monica Soria on Zoom who said, salute to those generational members and to the party that may be older than some of these members, the party for fostering and nurturing black power for the future and beyond. Um, APSB occupied as Anya chair, Tafari Mulgari writes, you can tell this comrade is a brilliant DJ. I'll download the app and see if it works for, for settler colony in South Africa. Uh, he also said Akile is a great leader. Um, and then Ona Zanej Stella said, I unite Chairman Tafari. Um, what else? Uh, Comrade Halley writes, um, Black Power 96 was the first institution I donated to when I joined USM in 2016. It was so amazing to see it really get built. And the next time I visit, visited the, the St. Pete Uhuru House, there was a studio fully furnished, built from an empty room. The Uhuru movement does what it says it's going to do. Um, DC Ona wrote, we love you, D DJ Eddie. Um, Comrade Mwazi wrote 2022 plenary is lit. Um, yeah, just a lot of that. <laughs> and um, in terms of questions, okay, there's one from uh, Comrade Monica. I think talking about chairman's work, she asks, does that include peer reviews and academic journals so that those writing master's thesis or any research have to properly cite the chairman and his theories? So I guess if- <coughs> uh, Can you read again? Okay, does that include, I'm not sure to what exactly, but like, it's probably part of your presentation, I'm not sure. Um, does that include peer reviews and academic journals so that those writing master thesis, master's thesis or any research have to properly cite the chairman and his theories? Uh, yeah, oh, sort of in this war of ideas. Yeah, um, you know, uh, what we've noticed that uh, just in recent years alone, there's been at least like a dozen references to chairman uh, his writings, that there's Af African internationalism uh, inside uh, uh, many of these, these these texts. There's a book that just came out last year or so that uh, uh, focuses heavily on the Desi Woods campaign, this other book called uh, Ratchetdemics or something like that uh, by a guy named Chris Embit, uh, which uh, uses chairman's ideas uh, and cites them uh, for his, uh, his own pedagogy, his own st uh, strategy of teaching. And so, so, and, and, and yeah, I mean, I, I, for myself alone, uh, as well as, you know, placing these ideas out in the world, uh, there are some, some plans towards uh, contending uh, 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 with, with some of these misrepresentations uh, 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 and, and things like that. And, and um, like you said, uh, w with the peer reviewed uh, stuff, I mean, some of the stuff has already been out there, you know, uh, like I said, um, uh, I found, uh, some of Chairman's writings many, many years ago through the writings of a guy named Rod Bush, uh, who had uh, written about Chairman uh, in, in, in his works and cited Chairman in multiple uh, uh, articles um, as, as well. And, and, it's, and, and like I said, this is really about uh, contending with the way in which the um, uh, the colonial superstructure and by way of the uh, uh, of the academies has been used to to silence um, uh, uh, the anti-colonial uh, 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 tendency that was present uh, during the African Revolution of the 1960s. You know, uh, placing this sort of analysis of race um, and, and race this and racism uh, uh, at the center and then training Africans and then sending those Africans back into the African community to tell everybody that their fight is against race and racial formation and all this other stuff. Um, uh, uh, but, 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 but I do think it's, in, it's, it's important as much as possible for us to uh, take this out there. I mean, one thing I'm doing just this week, you know, I've got a class uh, at the University of San Diego where we're reading um, the spear. We read the spear once a month, you know, at least once a month and then uh, we um, we're reading a colonialism as a mode of production um, uh, uh, to place that into the hands of the students. And then, you know, the ones who really unite, send them back into the other places so that they can wage these struggles. When someone tells them, you know, race is, race is the structure of society or something like that, they can say, well, Molly Ishitella says, you know, um, uh, colonialism uh, is, is, is the base to which we're struggling. And race is just, racism is just ideological justification 
uh, and stuff like that. So, so, so yeah, I mean, uh, Monica, I've known Monica for, for many years now, and uh, that, that, that's a, uh, an excellent question. And, and I think we're really just trying to arm uh, the cadre and, and, and also the work that you do, comrades from Union do. We know that so many Africans find their way to the party and to the movement by way of the revolutionary work that, um, you know, our, our, our Mexican indigenous comrades do here in San Diego and point them towards uh, toward, towards the chairman and stuff like that as well. So, yeah. Uhuru, thank you for that, uh, Matamala. We have another question from uh, comrade uh, Hallie. She asks, is there a plan to make audiobooks of Vanguard and overturning the culture of violence? I would know, I know I'd like to have that. Uhuru. Yeah, Uhuru Hallie, thank you uh, for that question. Um, Cause I, that's not the first time we've heard that request. And um, I think that uh, among a lot of things that Adjaprop will be you know, tasked to produce but also just coming up with different things and finding different markets uh, that, and there are so many um, because what Adjaprop offers is totally unique. Um, and so just investigating, you know, the process and in, in doing that. And uh, one of the things that we're doing, what we said in 2022, some of our major work is going to be recruit into the economic development areas, the revenue streams, donor development, and also um, product development, which would include, I think, audiobooks, because they would have the responsibility to investigate how to make it happen, getting the budgets, and, and then carrying out the project itself. So, um, I think that among a lot of the things that we already we needed to have created yesterday, um, audiobooks will be definitely one of those um, things that we have to look at uh, seriously. So I know that we will be publishing at least two uh, Reparations Now book and um, republishing a new edition, and um, also we'll be publishing the uh, political report that the chairman presented this year. Um, uh, to in, in, in an actual book form as well, which will include some special features like photos. Some of the photos we've seen um, uh, displayed here regarding the 50 year history will be reflected in that booklet as well. So I know those two things we will be publishing this year. And in terms of audio books, um, yeah, we'll definitely keep that in terms of the products that we need to look at and, and figure out how to carry that out. Because as you mentioned in the chat, it's you know, this huge, you know, thing that's out there available. I know I, anyway, yeah, I, I get into the car, my dad's playing audiobooks <laughs> instead of music. So um, yeah, it's definitely a niche that we have to get uh, crack. So thank you, Hallie. For sure. I know I would like to have an audio because that is a well. Um, but that's it for questions. Just one more comment from comrade Nia Binga to close it out. He says, Uhuru, this is the most dynamic edge prop has been in my time in the movement. Salute to comrade director Akile's leadership. So there we Uhuru, have. If I may, I just want to salute comrade Binga, who is on this AV team. Binga, near Binga, the, um, the radio station, the studio is named after comrade Binga. And I just got to say, he left some really big shoes to fill. I'm trying to, I'm trying to wear them. Um, but I just really want to salute this comrade as well. But thank you to uh, my uh, department members. Um, also uh, to want to salute and recognize comrade Inyindu um, out in Fort Myers, Florida, who is our photo editor, but he is a veteran member um, and part, was one, a member of one of the founding organizations of our party. Um, so just salute to all of you. And again, recognize and salute my leadership, Chairman Amalia Shetela, Deputy Chair Onazine Shetela, and the entire Central Committee. Uhuru, comrades, thank you so much. Uhuru, Director Akile, thank you. Um, you can go ahead and take it over, uh, Comrade Life, for the next segment. Uhuru, that was a dynamic, dynamic presentation. Uh, I really appreciate the uh, Department of Agitprop and uh, Comrade Director Akile and I, and the entire team. And I, I agree with Comrade Bing, uh, you know, uh, Agitprop is, is uh, uh, I think how my daughter said, bussing, bussing, you know, uh, yeah, doing the thing. Uh, at this point though, it's time for some cultural revolution by Comrade Priscilla Zidor. Azaglo. It's going to be some poetry. Um, we have another brilliant cultural artist, many of them in, uh, in the service of the African Revolution, and this is one. So let's welcome the proficient poetess, Priscilla Zidor Azaglo. <laughs> Yeah. 
Uhuru, I want to thank Pris comrade Priscilla Zizor Zaglo for her incredible creativity. If you've just joined us, Uhuru and welcome to day three of the third plenary of the seventh Congress. Since this is a virtual event, we will have virtual vending throughout this program. This is your chance to be counted for in the battle to build our own black power independent economy. Black power economy matters. Let's welcome and support the black power sales team from the office of the deputy chair. Let's build and strengthen our own independent economic institutions. Uhuru. Uhuru, comrades, it's Kenge from the Office of the Deputy Chair. So welcome to our live sale. So get your wallets ready. Uh, there's going to be lots to shop for. So let's get started. Uh, Green, black, we got red, black, and green berets. The berets are $12 each. Black, red, green berets. You don't know, have one, get one today. Please go, if you're on Zoom, in the chat, I want you to go to the host and the panelist section. If you want anything here today and just type in, if you want a green beret, say, Green Beret, uh, put your name and your email so that you can be sent an invoice. That's for anything in here. There's someone monitoring the chat on Zoom, someone monitoring the chat on Facebook, someone monitoring the chat on uh, YouTube. So make sure you put your name, the product that you want, and your email so that you can be sent an invoice. Red, black, and green berets are $12. And guess what? If you wanted to get a red star as well with that, you can get one of the berets with a red star and that is $15. In the chat, I want you to put beret combo and that's $15. You'll get whatever color beret that you want as well as a red star. All right, let's see what else we got. You can also get the red stars individually can also get the red stars individually. The red stars are $5. So remember, you're gonna go into the chat. If you're on Zoom, you're gonna send that message in the host to the host and the panelists with your name, the item that you want, whether it's color or size or whatever. And you're also gonna include your email so that you can get uh, uh, an invoice. So here's your red stars for $5. Don't forget, you can get Red star and a beret, whether it's in red, black, or green, for fifteen dollars. You can get a combo, or you can get them individually. We only got fifteen minutes, so let's see. The next thing is this poster of Karen Amalia Shatella at Oxford Union at the Oxford debate. This is a really, really, really great uh, poster. These are $10, so remember, you're going to go in the chat, whether you're on Zoom, if you're on Zoom, it's the host and the panelists, put your name, your email, and the product that you want. If you want this poster, it's $10. This is great. Get one. They're hot and going fast. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, we got armbands, armbands, armbands. Now, this is the Vanguard, the APFP Vanguard armband. Let's see. The armbands are $8 each. We also have APSC armbands. Can you see them? These are great. Now, you know you got to have this to, uh, sport with your, with your whole gear. So make sure you put in the chat. What it is that you want. So far, we've done the poster. The armbands are eight dollars. Armbands are eight dollars. You got Vanguard, APSP Vanguard, and then you got APSC. All right. So one poster of the chairman. Can I get four? Go ahead, get four. If that's not many, you want no problem. We got them. We got them. We got you. Who's that? That was that my smell. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> We've also got Black Power Blueprint hoodies. Now, I'm sorry, but 
we ain't got but two of these. <laughs> and guess what? They're small. So if you're small <laughs> and you want a black power blueprint hoodie, uh, you better hurry. It ain't but two of them. They're going to go quick. So hurry up, get it in the chat. If you're on Zoom, uh, hurry up, get it to the host of the panelists that you want this black power blueprint hoodie in a size small. It's only two and it's $25. Quick, quick. I want one. Hurry. <laughs> I want one. Hurry. I'm in the chat. <laughs> I'm in the chat. I am in the chat. One for Club A. All right, hurry. It's only two, so put it in the chat. All right, let's see what else we got. Bandana. Get your bandana. This is really great. Because, you know, it's all supposed to be covering up. This is a great cover. Here, here's your mask right here. <laughs> here it is. These are eight. No, it's in with the bandana. Uh uh. The bandanas are $20. $20. Get your bandana today. You know, you can also, these are a great size. You can use them as a wall mount. Mm -hmm. Head wrap. Head wrap. There you go. Head wrap. Right there. Get your bandanas, $20. Don't forget, put it in the chat, in the chat. If you're on Facebook, put it in the chat, put your name, put your uh, put your email so that we can get you a uh, get you an invoice. What else we got here? Your flags. Yep, flags. Now look, we've got several sizes here. If you're tabling, this is the perfect size for your table. The little mounts, you can buy the cinnamon, but these are great. These small flags are $4. $4 for the small red, black, and green flag. Get a bundle. Don't just get one. Get a whole bunch of them. We've also got, got bigger ones here. Got a larger red, black, and green flag. You know you got to have these for your marches. For your parades, because we're gonna be doing lots of work this year. Everybody needs a red, black, and green flag. These are eight dollars, twelve by eighteen. Don't get one. Get a bunch. <laughs> get a bunch. Let's see what else we got. I'm gonna show you something a little bit different. The other thing we have is. We've got lipstick, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful colored lipsticks. Now, we've got Vanguard, the Vanguard lipsticks. We've got purple. We've got revolutionary red. We've got Mother Africa gold. We've got black power black. We've got solidarity gray. We've got cadre bronze and we got easy way brown now let me tell you what is special about this is that you can get a whole set one of each color seven for one hundred dollars get the whole set just get the whole set don't buy just one get the whole set these are fantastic the whole set is one hundred dollars uh one two is eighteen dollars now i'm partial to the revolutionary red Mm -hmm. But hey, you can get any color that you want. Again, we've got purple, revolution, Vanguard purple, revolutionary red, Mother Africa gold, black power black, solidarity gray, cadre bronze, and easeway brown. $18 for the two and $100 for the set. Get the set. Just get the set. That way you have a color for whatever your mood is for that day, whether you're revolutionary or whether you are Mother Africa. <laughs> what else do we have? Oh, now this, you can't miss. Everybody's got to get one of these. This is the APSP 50-Year Revolutionary Pen. Isn't that gorgeous? That's beautiful. Wow. Everybody has to have one of these. You've got to get them. They're $10, $10. Remember, go into the chat. If you're on Zoom, you're going to send a message to 
the host or the panelist with your name, your email, and whatever product it is that you want. This, again, is the 50 years of relentless leadership toward African redemption. Isn't this a beautiful pen? $10. Get one. Matter of fact, don't get one. <laughs> get a bunch. Get a handful. Make sure you have these. Everyone should have one. I ought to see the whole chat lit up right now. Everybody get the pen, right? I'm going to get a better Everybody. picture of it. It's so nice. I wanted to show the 50 years. There we go. Look at that. Get Look the at pen. 50. Get it. Get it now. Again, let's see. We've got more flags. We've got bigger flags. This one is three by five. It's $15. Your red, black, and green flag. And guess what? We've got the mounting poles for them as well. You can get the mounting pole for $20, get your flags for $15. Everyone should have the red, black, and green flags flying outside of their businesses, outside of their home. Get one for your mama's house, your cousin's house, your sister house. Get your large flags, get your mounting pole. The chairman talks about claiming territory. Come on. This is how we do it. Come on. We make sure we make our stake in our communities and let them know that we are here, that we're taking back everything that belongs to us. Yes, Get the right. flag, the world. The world. Okay, we got a larger and smaller one here too. These are great for mounting on the wall. And this is, which one is this? This one is two by two by five. You got a we couple got of questions. Um, a large one. People in St. Louis want to know, Kenya, if they can, mm -hmm. if they can purchase theirs in person. Or should they go ahead and purchase it right now? Put it in the chat, what it is that you want. Go ahead and uh, make your purchase, and you can pick it up here. Certainly, if you're here, we, you, can, you can pick it up while you're here. Remember, anything that you see that you want. I got more, all right? Uh, make sure that if you're on Zoom, you go to the host, send a message to the host and the panelist with your name, with your email, and whatever product it is. And if you're on, what is it, Facebook and YouTube, again, we still need the same information. We need what product it is, how many of them you want, if there's a particular size, color, et cetera. But make sure you put it in the chat. But specifically on Zoom, go to host and panelists so it doesn't get lost in all of the, in all of the chat. I want to show. And remember your email, comrades. Remember your email. Yeah, don't forget your email. Let's see. Now this, y'all gonna be mad. Well, we ain't got the two. <laughs> but your I love the African People's Social Party. I love APSP. We only have two. Hurry quickly. Put it in the chat if you want one. You're on Zoom. Go ahead. Send it to the host or the panelist. Uh, that hey, I got mine. We ain't got but two. So hurry quickly. Is it thirty dollars? Go ahead, put it in the chat. We're gonna send you. We need your email because only thirty dollars. Only thirty dollars. Man, you better get it while it's hot. It ain't but two. Show them how deep it is inside. You can put Look a lot of this. stuff in there. Your spurs, your keys, yeah. your money, everything going Look, there, baby. You can put your purse inside of this bag, but your spears, your flags, <laughs> your uh, berets, posters, uh, everything. <laughs> and take this out with you when you're going out so that you can truly represent. I love the African people. Somebody will say, what's APSP? And you can break it down. Can you just show the other side of the bag? There we go. All okay. Right. Yes, thank you. Yeah, it's only two. Remember, put it in the chat. How are we doing? Do I see people buy somebody's buying something? Mm -hmm. buying something. They buying stuff. All kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. We want to shout out today. Well, let's buy it. Let's get it. Let's see. We've all seen Coasters. Uh, the Black Power uh, Blueprint buttons. I know y'all got to have these for your tables. Got to be selling these buttons everywhere. You know, we, we about ready to make the spring uh, invasion happen. We getting ready to tear it up here in the STL. So y'all better get your Black Power Blueprint buttons. Represent. These are just $1. 
One dollar, get a handful of them. What else we got? Black Power Blueprint Basketball Court Coasters. It's coming, y'all. <laughs> Basketball court's going to be here soon in the FDL. Mm -hmm. Get a set of them. Let's see. You got you got you got to get me that beanie because I'm trying to get <laughs> I'm trying to get me one of those beanies. Let's see here. Over there. We're going to get to the coasters. <laughs> okay, just $3 a piece or you can get a set of 4 for $10. Get the whole set. Don't get just one. Get a set of coasters for the Black Power Blueprint Basketball Court. We're going to have our own basketball court in our own community built with our own resources, our own time, and our own energy. All right, y'all. Get your coasters. Them coasters are really nice. Aren't they? Mm-hmm. Montemella said he want to get him a set. Go ahead, Montemella. Who else? Who else going to get a set? Somebody else get a set. Get a set. Don't get one. Get the set. It's just $10. Mm -hmm. Probably. Okay. All right. Here we dun, dun, go. Dun, dun, dun. The beanies. All right. Here is your Black Power Blueprint beanie. Now, you know, if you're in the STL, it's a little cool out. <laughs> Represent. Get your beanie. The beanies are $15. Get your Black Power Blueprint beanie. Somebody is getting it right now. Who buying one right now? Somebody got one. Somebody getting two, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay, there we go. Get your Black Power Blueprint beanie. Keep your head nice and warm. This is really soft, too. I like the way it feels. Stephanie got her beanie. Go ahead, Stephanie. <laughs> Get one for somebody else, too. <laughs> Dexter getting him a go beanie. Go ahead, Dexter. Got a beanie. All right, all right. Okay. So you've seen a lot of everything. We ain't got but two bags here. We ain't got but two of the Black Power Blueprint t-shirts. I was I'm sorry, hoodies. They're size small. So if you want one, like I said, we ain't got but two. But go ahead and put your name in the chat. $25. The poster, Chairman Amalia Shatella. Oxford Union, the African Union debate. Everybody should have this. There's no mm -hmm. reason not to have this. It's $10. Get a couple of them. Don't forget your armbands. You got armbands here. The armbands are $8. You can either get the Vanguard APSP or you can get the APSC. Again, they're $8. Don't forget your berets. You got red, you got black, and you got green. Go ahead and get one of each. And don't forget your star. Get the set. You can get a combo with a red star and a beret for $15. And flags, don't forget your flags, your table flags. Don't forget your table flags. The table flags, these are $4 for the small ones on the stick. Don't forget your red stars. Get your red stars. Remember, your red stars are five dollars. And do not forget to get your fifty years of relentless leadership pen. Don't forget your pen. Ten dollars. Ten dollars. So I know everybody got. You're having a hard time deciding what you're gonna get. Then get one of everything. Then that way <laughs> you got everything. You got everything that you need. So that has been our sales for the Office of the Deputy Chair Uhuru. We are winning, comrades. Yeah. Uhuru, Uhuru, thank you so much, comrade. Awesome presentation. I got me a little something, something out of that. Uh, thank you so much. And now it's time to announce the nominees for the Chairman O'Malley Yishatella Award.
Well, we'll come back to that. At this point, though, let's uh, hear from the APSP's regional uh, committees with uh, regional reports from the U.S. Comrade Soliana. Uhuru. Yes, we'll be hearing from uh, reports from the region of the party. Um, we'll be introduced to the work that, that's, all, that's done all throughout the regions um, where we're located. So first, we start off um, <clears throat> with a powerful comrade, Tiffany Murphy, who leads the Northern Region. Um, so please welcome Tiffany Murphy and her Northern Regional team. Uhuru. Here we go, Uhuru, Uhuru. Thank you very much. This is the Northern Regional Report to the Third Congress of the Seventh Plenary. Before I begin this presentation, I would like to salute the profound leadership of Chairman O'Malley Yeshitela, Deputy Chair Ona Zene Yeshitela, and the National Central Committee of the African People's Socialist Party on this powerful plenary celebrating 50 years of relentless leadership to work redemption and forward to our eighth party Congress in Occupy Zania, Ease Way Le Tu E Africa. Slide. Okay. Slide. Thank you. 2021 was the year that the Northern region upped the ante in terms of political development, carrying out our mandates, and increase of the following recruitment production of programs, and steady leadership. For the last 50 years, the African People's Socialist Party has been the vanguard party arming the African poor and working class with the theory of African internationalism and the practical tools to destroy this parasitic colonial capitalist system in order to gain the total liberation of our people. The region has the responsibility for carrying out the strategy of the party and every city in our boundaries. Slide. The Northern region consisting of 11 states has established a functioning committee that has the sheer will and determination to grow and build the region under the strategy of the party. Other exciting developments from 2021 include increase in reg regional membership, establishment of units, and the DMV in Philadelphia, increase in agiprop presence, and of course, the successful planning and execution of the 2021 in-person return of the One Africa, One Nation Marketplace. States in the Northern region run from Maine to Virginia. And cities with a party presence include Hyattsville, Maryland, Hampton, Virginia, Irvington, New Jersey, Philadelphia, PA, and Washington, DC. And now I'd like to present to you the Northern Regional Leadership Committee of the APSP. Starting from my left, we have Regional Representative, myself, Tiffany. We have Regional Secretary, Bakra. We have Membership and Recruitment, Yejide. We have Regional Economic Development Coordinator, King Ngozi. And we have Agiprop Regional Representative, Soliana. Slide. And now I'll turn it over to Bakra, who will talk about the party's history in the region. Uhuru. May 1972, Chairman Yesh Omali Yeshitela participated in the first steering committee for the first African Liberation Day in Washington, D.C. The first ALD mobilization on May 27th was called to support the many liberation struggles that were being still fought in Africa, particularly in Southern Africa, from Mozambique to occupied Azania, South Africa. African Liberation Day is not just a celebration of the end of colonial rule, but the call for the total liberation of African people throughout the world. The party led the first tribunal on reparations for Africans held in New York City, November of, November of 1982 and in Washington, D.C. in 1989. The verdict of the tribunal, which was held on the basis of international law that allows an oppressed people to bring their case 
before the world arena, it was that it was that the USA is guilty of genocide and enslavement of African people, which built the wealth of the United States. The tribunal called for 4.1 trillion to be paid by the USA to African people based on the wealth accumulated from the stolen, enslaved and underpaid labor of African people. 11 subsequent sessions of the tribunal have been held since then. Through this process, the party made reparations a household name. And here is a clip of the chairman presenting on the tribunal. On today, we are initiating a two-day process which is remarkable and historic in its implications for the use of international law as a means of addressing the crimes against oppressed people who do not have the benefit of state power and the use of national and international courts, which are traditionally only available to those groups who do possess state power. On today, we are initiating a two-day trial of the United States government for crimes that has committed against the black or African population of the United States. slide. May 1973, the party launched the campaign to free Sundiata Akoli, slave name Clark Squire. As a result, the shootout on the New, as a result, the shootout on the New Jersey Turnpike. The party also pushed for Sundiata to be released as a political prisoner. Slide. In May 1985, neo-colonial mayor of Philadelphia, Wilson Good authorized the drop of a bomb in the middle of an African working class neighborhood to send a message to, rev to, to a revolutionary organization move, killing 11 men, women, and children. The party was the only organization that came to Philadelphia shortly after the bombing in support of move, launching the powerful and historic campaign. Reinforcements are on the way and relentlessly paved the way for a revolutionary work since then. The African People's Socialist Party was the only organization to organize the masses of people, politically sum up the period and explain the reason why this happened in our community and the system behind this vicious attack. Slide. ASP local party organizations. DC, Maryland, Virginia, slide. The comrades are Kiongozi, Hada, Soliana, and Comrade Yejide. Slide. Philadelphia, the comrades are Matum, King L, Bob, Comrade Tiffany, Ali, and Kevin. And now I'll turn it over to Matum, who will talk about our mass organizations, Uhuru. Can you hear me? Can I be heard? Oh, we can hear you. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, okay, I'm, uh, my video on? Yes. Okay, all right. Sorry about that. Mass organizations. 
The region has a significant mass presence in the region, particularly in Boston, New Jersey, Philadelphia, and Washington, DC. We have, re we have representation in the International Democratic Rural Movement, the African National Women's Organization, the African People's Education and Defense Fund, the Huru, the Huru Solidarity Movement, and the African People's Solidarity Committee, all doing significant work. Slide. We have a impedum, we have an impedum present in the northern region with comrades in Philadelphia, Boston, New Jersey, and New York. Philadelphia, Melissa, Colta, Quinde, and Renee. In Boston, we have Shante, Madizi, Langston, Ta Tamini, Frank, Akisha, Ephraim, and Dizador. I mean, sorry, D Dizora. In New York, we have Kyra, Malik, and Arande. Slide. In Washington, D.C., we have an African National Women's Organization with a D.C. branch. Slide. We want to salute the work of the African People's Solidarity Committee and the Huru Solidarity Movement and taking African internationalism under the party's leadership to the white community to win them to the right side of the question and, and acknowledging their violent lineage and stolen resources of the Africans, of Africans and oppressed peoples and join humanity. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Soliana who will talk to you about the regional mandates. Guru, comrade Matum, thank you. I am Soliana, a regional agitprof rep for the Northern Region. And like Matum said, I'll be talking about the regional mandates. Uh, can I get the next slide? <clears throat> um, one more slide. So the party uh, organizational manual is our organizational Bible. The manual is put into place to organize units, lays out, uh, lays out conduct for governance, and most importantly, timelines. All party members, regardless of years in the party, including myself, would go back and utilize this tool to reinstate party best practices. The region, the party LPO, has been consistently using critical party documents such as the 14-point platform, organizational manual, and standards of party life to sharpen ideological and practical development for all party members and mass forces. Next slide. <laughs> Sponsor events featuring Chairman Omala Chitela annually at minimum. This is key to recruitment. In 2021, the Northern Region hosted the Chairman for the 7th Annual One Africa, One Nation Book Fair and Marketplace in Philly and the 13th Annual BIV Mobilization in Washington, D.C. Next slide. Another regional mandate is to recruit to the party on the regional level, which includes for 2021, the Northern Region train forces to recruit party style at One Africa, One Nation marketplaces, as well as updated and frequently utilized our regional database for phone banking and HTML correspondence. Next slide. We also hold a monthly meeting of the party and APSC regional representative in a quarterly meeting of all party and APSC regional representatives. As Deputy Chair Ona always states, there is no reason to reinvent the wheel. Northern Regional Rep. Tiffany will be working with APSC counterpart SG Allison to hold monthly meetings and establish a quarterly meeting of all party and APSC members. This ensures that all campaigns and work are supported and the relentless work of the party continues. Next slide. <clears throat> Taking up all the political space, Vanguard tour a United Outreach Blitz of 2022. So the Northern Region has already begun implementing its regional recruitment tour entitled the Vanguard Tour. Areas in the region are responsible for planning a Vanguard Tour event or United Outreach event that will showcase the party's 50 year history and various departments all in the interest in building up recruits and giving political education to our communities. Next slide. <clears throat> So in terms of regional agitprof work, we are winning the war of ideas by conducting regional sphere studies. We've also exponentially increased articles in the sphere. 
We also have contributions from One Africa, One Nation market, market vendors. And we also hold our weekly P, uh, political education studies implemented on the unit level. And the local stores carry spears in each unit level. That's, that includes Philly, DC, Newark, and Boston. And the source of knowledge bookstore in Newark carries um, Chairman's book, Vanguard. And the famous Black-owned uh, Sankofa bookstore in DC is also in the works to also carry Vanguard. Um, and spears are purchased throughout the region on a consistent basis. Um, so next, I'll go ahead and um, turn it over to Karma Kingozi. Uh -huh. Next slide. Here are some of the regional works we engaged in two, two, um, 2021. Uh, Northern Region Conference, Regional Recruitment Webinars, Uhuru Health Festival, which was a virtual event. The One Africa, One Nation Market was an in-place event. ALD will most likely be virtual. Uh, One Africa, One Nation Book Fair was in person. Um, Black is back, March on the White House. Next slide, please. Economic development in the region. Next slide. I would like to salute the oldest economic development hub in the Northern region, Who Furniture and Collectibles in Philadelphia. It's an African led institution, has been a staple in the Philadelphia area for over 27 years, providing employment opportunities critical community programming and material support in the defense of the African community. Some of the photos here from the, my left to your right include vintage photos of a volunteer group in front of the first Uhuru Furniture location in Center City, a UFC graphic promoting the Buy Black Power holiday sale, showcasing products from our other economic development institutions. UFCs are widely popular live shows featuring some of our favorite community supporters in a group of photo, a group photo after a powerful ML Day, MLK Day program, a day in service. Next slide. Each of the party's regions must become a custodian of the economic strategy of the party for advancing this critical component of the anti-colonial struggle for self-reliance. Each of the regions would have to would have the assignments of building the party's work, the economic work within its designated area of responsibility. This comes from the political report to the 2020 first seventh Congress plenary of the African People's Socialist Party. Now we will talk about the work of the One African One Nation Marketplace. The economic and the political are one. After two years of both political and practical training, the region is finally it was finally time for the region, the Northern region through the leadership, excuse me, through its leadership in the running of the One Africa, One Nation marketplace. It was so critical for the African working class to see African leadership leading this longstanding institution. The vendors saw how problems are solved in the anti-colonial institution, and most importantly, how relentless, how we, how we relentlessly protect the interests of all our vendors in attendance. Next slide. The historic institution has just wrapped up its 17th season in Clark Park in West Philadelphia. Has engaged in fierce political struggle with the Friends of Clark Park and the city of Philadelphia when they both attempted to charge extremely high fees to have the market. Both groups were met with huge pushbacks from the market organizing committee, vendors, and the West Philadelphia community. This year was completely operated by the Northern region of the African People's Socialist Party. We want to salute APDF, the African People's Education and Defense Fund, and the Heard Furniture Filling for their relentless struggle in leading and operating the market for the first 12 years of its inception. One Africa, One Nation market brings in 80 to 100 vendors monthly. In 2021, we hosted six markets from May to October, including our in-person large event, the One Africa, One Nation Uhuru Book Fair with Chairman Amalia Chatella as a keynote speaker. This anti-colonial market 
provides a means for African working class to solve its own problems. Next slide. Our vendor base is amazing. We have a group of vendors that have supported the market for the last 17 years, whether it be to attend actions, a community meeting against the state or to vend. Their relentless effort also serves as the foundation of the One Africa, One Nation marketplace. Listed here are the following vendors. From my left, Tori Madison, who makes amazing bracelets from stone, Living Wild with Tarzan and Jane, Plants Plus Education, Plant Education, Hanifa L, who makes beautiful silver jewelry, Musa Muhammad, the soap man, and Dexter Love, who makes hand rolled incense and sea moss soap, and Roy Wilson, a longtime vendor that grows succulent plants in his home and sells them. Next slide. Another longtime vendor and critical supporter of the market is O'Banion Gordon. He particip participated in numerous political actions as a member of NPDM. He's now a beloved wood carver known up and down the East Coast for his amazing woodwork. Through the market, the region connects with prospective recruits, sells the party organ, the burning spear, and wins volunteers, volunteers to participate in the work. The photo on my right is a group of high school students from Philadelphia that recently learned of the market and was blown away when learning about the purpose of the market and the political line. Next slide. The One Africa, One Nation market also has a clear representation of various areas of the work promoting the political line, which includes monthly tabling from the work of ANWO, the International People's Democratic Uhuru Movement, Uhuru Furniture and Collectibles, and the Uhuru Solidarity Movement. We'll now go back to Matum for some more information about the market. Uhuru would soon you have to unmute. Okay. Thank you. Can you hear me now? We got you, comrade. Okay. Victories and the way forward. Region has a new representative and a committee to carry out the work. Constructed a solid regional recruitment plan via the Vanguard tour carry out a successful 2021 One Africa, One Nation Marketplace season, 2022 regional goals and work, develop and carry out a strategy for increased recruitment via the One Africa, One Nation markets, develop in cities where the party is not located, particularly in Newark, Delaware, and Baltimore, Maryland. Develop a budget for the market that will indicate line items towards a regional office and storage space. Plan and carry out secondary economic development project, the Huru Punch. Fill all regional leadership roles to capacity. Strengthen community partnerships via the One Africa, One Nation Marketplace. Carry out the African People's Socialist Party regional retreat. Have a regional, have the region play more of a defined role in the political development of the party and mass forces. And that ends our report, Uhuru. Uhuru, thank you for the Northern Region for that dynamic report. Um, next up, we should welcome our next speaker, Kobina Bantushango, Regional Representative of the Southern Region, and one of the champions of selling burning spear in the community and the steam from the Southern Region. Uhuru Kobina. Good 
who who come by? Um, who I'm so glad to be here, and uh, who this is the presentation of the Southern Region. Next slide. The first thing we have to be able to do is uh, salute our leadership. Salute. Uh, next slide. Salute. Uh, 50 years of revolutionary struggle. It's 50 years the party has been relentless in uh, resolving the fundamental contradictions of the revolution, practically and theoretically. Never before in our history have we had a revolutionary organization of non-disruptive struggle against colonialism. Next slide. We must salute our leadership, the leadership of the African world for this victory. Chairman O'Malley is a teller, uh, oftentimes the last man standing after the black power uh, revolution, after the, oh, excuse me. Uh, uh, Chairman O'Malley is a teller, oftentimes the last man standing after the black power revolution of the 60s, uh, when most people were forced to go underground, murdered, imprisoned, or exiled. Chairman O'Malley carried the weight and responsibility of, on, on his shoulder to complete the Black Power Revolution of the 60s, uh, continuing and advancing the work of Marcus Garvey and uh, his theory of African fundamentalism, the chairman developed um, show, the chairman's development of African internationalism shows our intent uh, and uh, intent to govern and rules of party discipline, uh, the principles of accomplishment, our goals, uh, enough cannot be said about the significance of the chairman's relentless work toward the redemption of Africa. We must all emulate his effort in theory and in practice. Next slide. We must salute uh, the leaders, uh, the leader comrade who embodies the saying, it is not what you say, but what you do. DC owner, uh, Zane Yesatella, a tireless stance and, and fortitude, which we heard some of today. Uh, to just make the shit happen is unmatched. Her ability to make shit just happen is, is unmatched. The way that she is able to take the political report and bring it to, uh, to life must be emulated. We must also salute the entire NCC for uh, their leadership and camaraderie, the best sons and daughters of, of Africa. Next slide. I am the Southern Regional uh, representative of the African People's Social Party, and we must salute the Southern, Re Southern Regional Committee. Uh, Chiwaniso Lazola, uh, who is the secretary, uh, Dexter Milamwangu, uh, who is the regional adjuprop, uh, and Saeed Kamba, who is the Southern Region, Southern Region uh, ANWO uh, coordinator. And uh, I must also salute Comrade Timber, who recently moved uh, to the Midwest region. He served as regional adjunct rep uh, since shortly after the first plenary to the seventh Congress of the of the party, until about a month or two ago when he moved, or maybe a little bit more, uh, moved to the Midwest. I appreciate Comrade uh, Life as well for participating in the Southern Regional meetings and giving uh, invaluable input uh, in our uh, recent development. And I next want to turn uh, the next section of our slide to our comrade secretary, uh, Chiwo, and comrade Dexter. So uh, Chiwo, and next slide, Uhuru. <clears throat> the fact that Black power was born in the South is very significant. Slavery was concentrated in the South, but even during colonial slavery, you had the rebellions of Nat Turner, rebellions in Louisiana, and many more. Africans never stopped fighting, fighting for power over our own lives, despite being jailed, beaten, murdered, and terrorized. It was from this terror that made the military defeat of the Black Power Revolution possible. It was out of this defeat that the African People's Socialist Party was born. It was this colonial atmosphere that made it clear that it would take relentless cadre to complete the Black Power Revolution of the 60s. Chairman O'Malley Yeshatella has demonstrated for over 50 years with an urgency that says freedom in our lifetime. Next slide. 
After the Civil War in the US, the South, particularly Alabama, replaced chattel slavery with convict leasing. Some would say this was worse than slavery with its slogan, if one dies, get another one, placing no value for African life. Africans were forced to work from can't see in the morning to can't see at night. And still we were doing everything to resist our oppression. From breaking tools to plotting an escape, Africans began to fight for their so-called civil liberties. We fought for the right to education, the right to vote, the right to learn livable wages, the right to obtain every guarantee under the constitution. This fight was again met with terror, from dogs being turned on our children to firemen blasting our babies with water hoses and the bombing of a church in Birmingham that murdered four little girls. Next slide. The terror that was unleashed on the African community did not spare children. Oftentimes, little white children were brought along to witness a lynching, the burning of an African alive, or deadly beatings. Emmett Till was one of 1,000 Africans taken from his grandparents' home by a white vigilante mob. They beat him badly before murdering him, all because they said he whistled at a white woman. This was the terror we experienced and the atmosphere that Africans had to live in on a daily basis. This is also why Africans began to grow weary of fighting for rights and began to understand that there is nothing redeemable about this system, that there is no appeal to the morals of white people that will save us. Next slide. If we want to change our conditions, we will have to do it ourselves. SNCC and the African working class recognized that the civil rights movement had run its course. We had won every civil liberty under the constitution that is possible. What we need is black power. The slogan and demand made popular by Kwame Ture at the rally in Mississippi. It was with this determination and understanding that SNCC and its organizers went into areas that the SCLC and other civil rights organizations would not go to due to life-threatening circumstances. Around this same time is when Chairman O'Malley Eshtetela boldly walked into city halls of St. Pete, Florida and tore down a demoralizing moral that negatively depicted African people as merely existing to please and serve white people. Next slide. SNCC went into the worst cities to organize African people and assisted in raising the morale and self-determination of Africans, oftentimes facing the death and incarceration. The fight for black power was not taking one step back. With SNCC leadership, people began to recognize that the Republican or Democratic Party do not represent African people. With this knowledge, the LCFO founded the Black Panther Party in Lowndes County, Alabama, Lowndes County, Alabama and the symbol of the party was a Black Panther. Oral. <clears throat> Next slide, please. We're constantly grappling with the fundamental contradictions of the revolution and our colonial oppression. Chairman O'Malley established the first membership-based SNCC organization that was relentless struggle to unite the African working class with our liberation and our own interests. The chairman created the junta of militant organizations. Next slide, please. Jomo. Black rights fighters, <clears throat> Domo, Black rights fighters and the Gainesville Study Group came together to establish the African People's Socialist Party. African internationalism was defining our reality from our own perspective and experience. I have to, <clears throat> I have to give a subtle, I have to give a salute to one of the founding members who was still with us and participates in, um, participates in to this day in the day-to-day -day work of our party, our uh, comrade in Yindu. The Black Power movement has suffered a military defeat. The chairman of the party stayed above ground after the military defeat of the Black Power. Sorry, next slide, please. The chairman of the party stayed above ground after the military defeat of the Black Power Revolution of the 60s. Chairman began to win the masses of African people back into political life through mass organizations to address colonialism and the attack on African people. The theory of the African working class charted the way forward for Africans to resist the colonizer. This is uh, vital in the development of theoretical influence and drawing lines with the petty bourgeoisie and anti-prison, anti-racism type of politics. The party built the ANPO, African National Prison Organization Convention in Louisville, Kentucky, with Comrade Mufundi Lake being the founding chair. The late, the late Comrade Omawale K. Fing and Mufundi Lake traveled the country to build the convention with over 100 attendees from 16 states and over 120 cities. This contributed to building committees for, uh, for Desi Woods, fighting uh, for Pitts and Lee, and the Free Connie Tucker campaigns. 
Next slide, please. The importance of having our own revolutionary journal in the Burning Spear newspapers, the vote, um, sorry, is the Burning Spear newspaper as the voice of the uh, African revolution. Its significance cannot be understated. The party never uh, wavered from a principled anti-colonial struggle and relentless work to overturn colonialism and has exposed a lot of so-called liberation organizations and movements. Next slide, please. From our congresses and intensives, Made, in this, uh, made this period clear that this is our time for party building, the day-to-day -day outreach and propaganda and uh, engaging the people. This relentless work of the chairman of the party prepared the people to give the appropriate resistance after the murder of 17-year-old Tyron Lewis in 1996 in St. Petersburg, Florida. Next slide, please. There is not enough time to address all of the party history in this time frame. Uh, we have to mention, however, the great work the party did around the sanitation workers, the march to start prison in Florida, and organizing for Black community control of the police. It is important to note that the chairman of the African People Socialist Party has been the only organization to unite and relentlessly work for the redemption of Africa since Marcus Garvey and the UNIA. In this point, I want to pass it over to Comrade Sae, uh, who will be speaking a little bit on the victories won in the year 2021. Uhuru Sae. Uhura. Thank you, Comrade Dexter. Um, I'll be, next slide, please. Um, I'll be talking about the victories over the last year. Um, our victories inform our influence and control our terrain from taking power to influence what should be celebrated and how they should be celebrated. Next slide. We have named uh, our, our, one of our fourplexes after the great comrade Mufundi Lake. The Southern region has declared March 1st as Mufundi Lake Day. Uh, this is his birthday. And this is to continue the work of Mufundi and the African National uh, Prison Organization in liberating all pri uh, political prisoners. Uh, this is a call to take power to define our leaders, divide our leaders and to take um, holiday for our, for our liberation. Next slide, please. We also have celebrated Juneteenth for the last 11 years in Houston, Texas, uh, where Caffeine organized events over the years, often bringing the chairman to give keynote uh, presentations. Last year, uh, Juneteenth did not have a great turnout due to COVID and other factors. However, we did win forces to be recommitted to the event, and the neighborhood was very appreciative that we had continued what they had considered Caffeine's work. Next slide. We currently host a PE every Thursday, a political education every Thursday. Um, this is a part, this, this, this is part um, raises resources to donate to Zenzeli. We also have a goal to raise $100 per week to go towards the Black is Back bus um, in November. This political education does not replace the political education regime mandated by the ag agitation propaganda and Dr. Um, Director Akile. Um, it is done in addition to our political education series. Next slide. You read the 14 points and what you find is that they mean something new to you every day because you have experiences that relate to these 14 points every day. So that is our, our, our pre-video um, for the political educations, and I encourage everyone to join. Um, now in this next slide, uh, in, in Pedum spearheaded the Take Back the Dome uh, demonstration in St. Pete's, uh, St. Petersburg, Petersburg, Florida. Uh, the Tropicana Dome was uh, built upon um, the theft of land from black business owners and residents. The city had promised to relocate and to replenish those businesses and they didn't do that. Um, and they just straight out lied and, 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 th um, and, and stole it as co colonials do. So in Pedum spearheaded a campaign to um, ways that are awareness and to take back the dome campaign. Uh, next slide, please. 
Also, the Southern region has had um, se um, seminars to build the region and to influence over the, the terrain. One of them was the Black Power Summit, which was in January. We also had the um, Funday Lake Day, which is in March, which I just mentioned, and also the African Martyrs Day, which is uh, February 21st, which is coming up soon. Next slide. We also had a demonstration around Tyrone Lewis, uh, who was murdered by the police. Um, and also we, um, which I'll talk about in a few minutes, is um, um, had, had a gem in uh, honor of his name. And the colonialists did not appreciate that because they felt like it was a slight against the police. But we said, fuck you, because Tyrone Lewis should be commemorated and remembered. And we should always let people know and let the community know um, the atrocities that the police has done to our community. So we had the Tyrone Lewis demonstration. Next slide. Also, uh, we um, instituted um, the planning of the Black People's Court from protest to power, the Black people versus colonialism. We, um, we uh, distributed our uh, surveys uh, to com communities in the Southern region to um, help us to plan and get a perspective and to educate the importance of having a Black People's Court. The next slide, please. And um, in more Southern region victories, uh, we have increased the number of stores that we sell our Bernie Spears. And we also have expanded the regional committee and units. Next slide. And also uh, the Southern region is responsible for building dual and contending power institutions, such as the beautiful Uhu House in St. Petersburg, Florida, the Zele Consignment, uh, which is in Huntsville, Alabama, the Black Power 96, which we've seen a wonderful presentation um, from, uh, from them and about them. Also, as I mentioned earlier, the Tyrone Lewis Community Gym. And we also had a, a Uhuru uh, furniture store. Next slide. So now I will pass it back to uh, my Southern leader, which is Kabina, and uh, thank you again, Uhuru. Uhuru, and we're gonna look at uh, some of the mandates, the uh, success and contradictions in the Southern region. And next slide. And these are uh, overall mandates that came from the seventh uh, Congress, which this is the third plenary uh, of the seventh Congress. So next slide. So some of the contradiction around mandate one, which is to build the party units using uh, the party organizational manual. That was uh, in 2021, there was no uh, clear leadership or POA that would organize the comrades to build where they are. You know, uh, and we plan in 2022, uh, the regional will utilize the party organizational manual and uh, doing uh, uh, political education, regional and local meetings. And we are happy to say that the region was pulled together to work on, to have the POA uh, completed and it's done. And we're working off the POA and even organizing to move uh, our plan to build the region as we speak right now. Um, next slide. Create plan of action uh, for the Southern region, which I just mentioned. Uh, we did not uh, hold the leadership accountable, which is myself. I'm self-critical for not uh, carrying out the POA that we put in place uh, last year, but the committee, again, uh, is moving to, to make that happen. And, and uh, we will be doing that, uh, building off the plan of action and building our events uh, based on the step-by-step -step, uh, plan of action that we have uh, that's, that's being guided by the, the party organizational manuals. Oh, next slide. Build out the regional committee. Uh, as Part of the plan of action is to, is to build a solid regional committee. And uh, there was no real, real strategy to do that. In this uh, POA, we plan to build a process uh, which we're, we have implemented uh, to have all the roles filled to build the region to capacity and to make sure that uh, everyone is clear of the job uh, description that they have. Next slide. So opening open staff, uh, offices um, and uh, in, in the regional hub in Huntsville, Alabama, we will be working uh, out of Zenzele. Uh, last year we had put that in place and we didn't consistently uh, uh, work in the office. This year uh, we have uh, spoke with Zenzele staff and management and, and have a process where we develop office hours for the region right here in Huntsville, Alabama inside of Zenzele consignment shop. And in St. Pete, we will be uh, working to, to have office hours in the Hoover House 
uh, and, and looking at other areas in the region. But those are the two places that we want to really have our hubs. And Zenzele will be the place that our headquarters will be established. Next slide. Name other cities where offices can be open in the southern region, including mass organizations. Uh, last year, we did not organize the region to really uh, develop a plan to grow our units or mass organization. And this year, I'm, I'm happy to say that we have organizers, and I didn't mention earlier that uh, uh, Dexter will also be the impedum rep for the southern region. Uh, and I said Sae is Anwo and 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 also uh, Comrade Chiwo will be serving in the in the interim will be serving as ADEP rep for the Southern Region and these are ways for us to build our mass organization. Next slide. And uh, sponsor events with the chairman uh, and we we did not make a plan we we did not make a plan uh, or struggle to win chairman. Uh, to tour the southern region. And this year we have already two dates that we want to bring the chairman to uh, to the region at least uh, twice a year. And that one is Mafundi Lake Day, which we'll be doing uh, March the 5th, and then June uh, 10th, which uh, will be happening June 18th. Next slide. Develop Black Power business and fundraisers for regional work. Uh, we did not last year uh, review and set uh, a strategy to implement the proposal uh, put forth by DC owner. And uh, we this, this should have been changed, but we will be looking at two different uh, uh, things to, to be able to implement. We wanna be reviewing the plans uh, for the Southern region and also looking at doing a cultural festival, which we have done before uh, to bring uh, revenue into the Southern region. Uh, next slide. We want to build functioning local units and local party organizations uh, with a focus uh, on the burning spill sales. We have to increase the burning spill sales. Uh, as you heard earlier, Director Akile uh, report, uh, you know, we have to increase our burning spill sales in the southern region and get the burning spill uh, all throughout the southern region. And, and uh, Comrade Dexter will be developing the Agiprop plan to help institute, institute that and make those things happen. We will be building out uh, and, and, and building our units in, in, in St. Pete and Huntsville to capacity as well as going into other cities where we have comrades and uh, the di director Akile and Agiprop developed the strategy of political uh, education regime, which will contribute to that as well. Next slide. And mandate 10 is to recruit the party uh, on the regional level, including uh, the different strategies the party has uh, implemented. We want to recruit, 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 recruit. Um, and we have to uh, use these uh, the party manuals. Uh, last year, we did not utilize the party tools to build the region and mass organization. The chairman has laid out a clear strategy for the regional strategy. And we must utilize all of our uh, tools to be able to build, uh, which is, you know, uh, you know, membership to build our membership and NTU. And these are some of the things that we have to do this year. And the plan of action that we have uh, initiated this year for 2022 will be able to carry those things out. Next slide. And just to say the conclusions, uh, 2021, I have, again, have to give a self-criticism for the lack of leadership that I provided to the region. And we would definitely overturn that. I would definitely overturn that to provide the necessary leadership to make sure that reports are being submitted and that uh, the reports will contribute to us measuring our progress uh, to the NDO, to the office of the chairman and to follow, a PO, follow our POA and, and to make sure that we are doing everything that is necessary on our POA schedule and, and that we're being held accountable uh, to this, to, to uh, everybody's being held accountable to their position. Next slide. And we also just want to say that we have to build the region to capacity. Uh, while the region is growing and positions are being filled, we call on everybody, if you're in the Southern region, uh, to join the party, to participate in the regional committee meetings, 
which we do every Monday. It won't be this Monday because we're in the plenary. Every Monday at seven, we want you to participate. We want you to uh, become a member of the committee to help build the Southern region. There's 12 states in the Southern region and we want you to build, uh, to contribute to us building and getting the spear all throughout the region. Next slide. And again, uh, want you to join, like I said, next slide. Join the Southern region, join the work. We always put up that we can, we wanna raise resources to carry out the work of the Southern region. Uh, there's always opportunity for us to, to uh, raise resources and build the Southern region. Next slide. And in conclusion, uh, we wanna unite. I uh, want you to unite with this revolution. We want you to continue to be relentless. Let's build this party. And we're gonna leave with a quote and a video, um, uh, a quote by Marcus Garvey and a video that was put together by uh, Southern Region uh, uh, maybe a few months ago. And the quote that uh, I think helps to sum up, relentless is take advantage of every opportunity where there is none. Make it, uh, and, and where there is none, make it for yourself. That was a quote by Marcus Garvey which I think the chairman embodies that. So next slide. And next slide, we are winning comrades. And we're gonna play this uh, uh, a minute of this video, Uhuru. Hey, you, H-U-R-U, free, you, H-U-R-U, free, check out Marcus Gavi, check out John Henry Clark, check out Steve Biko, don't be left in the dark, hey you, H-U-R-U, free, you, H-U-R-U, free, check out O'Malley, yes, you tell I rap Brown, Malcolm X, Robert Sabukwe, Che Guevara and Penny Hess, Africa, my beginning and my ending, about to show you what we are before European expansion, look man, I'm RPG, I don't front, I pick up a brick if I'm gonna yell that any puppet president run, white power and black face, Got us filling up prisons, calling SA or Azania, but a black government this isn't. To stick a black man, the pigs need no reason. Black sellout sold their souls to neo-colonialism. Hence, we gotta try, hence we gotta fight for the chance to get it right. Gotta organize all of our fam. I'm still young, 24 in my learning years. I have strategy, I'm in the corner selling the burning spear. One minute I'm with Christians and Muslims and then change. The next minute I'm with my street team, speaking with kingpins. Yeah, speaking with kingpins. Your job as the conscious is to make up unconscious consciousness. Oh, comrades, let's build the southern region. Let's build the African People's Social Party. Let's be relentless. Uhuru. Uhuru, comrade Kabina. Uhuru, comrade Kabina, thank you so much for that presentation. Uh, now it's time to hear from the Midwest region and comrade. Kumba Smia is going to lead us through that process. Uhuru. Uhuru, <clears throat> I want to recognize the, uh, this plenary and uh, welcome everyone once again to the Midwest Region U.S. 2022 report to the third plenary of the seventh Congress. Uhuru to that. Next slide. We want to also recognize our leadership, Chairman O'Malley Yeshitela, who's been leading this thing for 50 plus years and leading us to the redemption of African people. Uhuru, Chairman. And we also want to give our, our uh, salute out to the entire leadership body of the National Central Committee and all our party members. Next slide. I want to uh, introduce and recognize the uh, leadership of the Midwest Regional Committee. You have myself, Kumachi Nia, Regional Director of Organization, Interim uh, Rep, Midwest Rep. <clears throat> you also have Comrade Maiza uh, Knopp, Midwest Region Director of Agitation and Propaganda. We have Comrade Kabula Matumbo, who is the Regional Secretary and slash the Regional Impedum Rep on the Midwest Committee. We also have Comrade Jamal Abagas, who is the Regional Director of Recruitment and Membership and we have Comrade Westbrook, Westbrook, who is the Regional Director of Outreach uh, and Economic Development for the region. Uhuru. Salute you, comrades. Next slide. So we know the crisis of imperialism is what brought the African People's Socialist Party to the city of St. Louis, uh, albeit in the city of Ferguson, Missouri, in August of 2014. 
when the pigs, police pigs, murdered Mike Brown and left him to rot in the basting sun of the August heat to, to no end for, uh, for his redemption or his relief or his family relief. And in response to that, the chairman said that, uh, pack my bags, I'm headed to St. Louis. And he heard the call from the working class in the city of, of Ferguson who said at that particular time, and Sherman said he hadn't heard it since the 60s, kill the police. So the masses of our people were on the right side of the questions to down with the oppressor. Next slide. So we the African People's Socialist Party Midwest Region US, we assume responsibility to lead this time till it's won. Next slide. We cannot speak of the work that we have done in the region, our party. We can't speak of the work that is happening in uh, the city of St. Louis and the surrounding areas without talking about the profound leadership and saluting the uh, deputy chair, Ona, uh, Ona Zene Yesitella, who leads the work of the uh, out of the office of the deputy chair. And uh, she came here for a brief visit, wind up being here more than a year. Next slide. And right so here in St. Louis. A little bit about the most the conditions of the city of on our side is horrific. Leadership. I just think that it's important to say that we believe in the democratic anti-colonial right to be able to have community control of every aspect of our lives and our communities. And I think the most fundamental, most democratic, most anti-colonial demand that I can conceive of is community control of basketball court. Uhuru. Next clip, next slide. Ohuru, everyone, because of you on Giving Tuesday this past week, the Black Power Blueprint exceeded our goal to raise the funds needed to begin construction on the community basketball court in North St. Louis. Thank you for everything you did to make this happen. Thank you to all of our donors, our volunteers, supporters, and everyone who made phone calls, put up posters, flyers, promoted the campaign on social media and contributed in so many other ways. Together, we have officially raised over $140,000 for this dynamic program of African self-determination. Like I said from the beginning, this is about rebuilding our community. All of you are a part of making this happen. This is another victory for the African community another victory in our movement for political and economic power in our own hands. We did it. You did it. We are winning. Uhuru. Uhuru. <clears throat> and so we know that uh, the economic development in the city of St. Louis through the Black Power Blueprint also comes by way of the Uhuru Jiko Kitchen, which will be a uh, institution that will provide workers who are coming out of the prison system with some skills and they can learn how to uh, do business, uh, serve the food and reacclimate themselves back into the uh, so-called mainstream, if you will, of society. Next slide. And we can't mention this without talking about a who fresh uh, farmers market this past year in the city of St. Louis. We kicked off the uh, One Africa, One Nation's farmers market on the north side, right across the street from uh, Quaba Hall, and it was a great success. Uh, it was a week, uh, monthly event, and it will be going weekly in the coming year, this year. Next slide. As you see, our people really turned up and showed out. These are some clips of the uh, local vendors, the uh, One Africa, One Af Nation Marketplace sign in the background. And our community really does enjoy this event. 
and will come to represent in the future, especially this year. Next slide. And <clears throat> we also want to mention the fact that the African People's uh, Solidarity Committee has relocated its international office, its uh, headquarters to the city of St. Louis, where it was uh, the uh, party purchased the property on the south side of St. Louis to go behind the enemy lines, open up those resources, bring those resources back to the African Revolution, and make it happen. Next slide. Next slide shows a just a brief of uh, the fundraising where we raised the 100, more than $150,000 that we need. So this is a, actually this slide shows the before and after. So this is the entryway to the uh, facility, who's Solidarity Center, next slide. That last slide didn't go correctly. And then this is them having the uh, completed product and it looks very nice on the inside and they are going to ga gather those resources, bring them back to the African Revolution, bring them back to the African Social Freedom, Freedom uh, African People's Socialist Party and uh, redemption uh, to the African People Nation. Next slide. So at this time, I'm going to introduce Kabula Mutombo, who is the Midwest Regional Secretary and the Midwest Regional Impedum Representative. Kabula, take it away. Well, who are everyone? Next slide. MP Dom was born in the Midwest in struggles to push back the colonial state. In 1991, the party held its founding conference in Chicago to build the National People's Democratic Uhuru Movement. The city of Chicago was significant as it was the location of the December 4th, 1969 U.S. Colonial Police murder of Black Panther Party leader Fred Hampton. Our party brought the widow of Fred Hampton and their son into political life for the first time since Hampton's assassination. We recognized the assassinated Panther's leader's son as Fred Hampton Jr. Next slide. Winning the war on the ground. MPDOM is guided by the Revolutionary National Democratic Program for Applied African Internationalism. Next slide. MPDOM is the party's most important connection to the masses of our people. It is the party's instrument for intervening in the mass struggles of our people with revolutionary science. Neither the colonizer nor the neo-colonizer will ever win another war on the ground. And the party's mass organization, MPDOM, helps to conquer territory in the African colony, making it impenetrable to hostile forces. Next slide. Campaigns on the ground. The US government chose St. Louis as the host city for a massive counterintelligence facility known as the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, or NGA. The 90-acre spy agency is being constructed on the predominantly African working class north side. Under the guise of offering jobs and economic development, the city and federal government are collaborating with parasitic predatory real estate investors to displace an entire traditionally Black neighborhood to make way for this compound. Also, MP Dom initiated the Keep 28 campaign. Keep 28 is a fight for Black power. Anything less than 28 wards is an attack on the people. We're convinced that real economic development for the future of the African community is represented in part by the movement to fight to keep 28 wards. Next slide. Uh, the elections. In two wars in St. Louis, we were able to go door to door to organize and mobilize for African community, the African community for electoral campaigns to achieve Black power. This is an important issue, especially since neocolonialism most often achieves a mantle of legitimacy through the electoral process, something that is true throughout the world and within the U.S. as well. The reality is most Africans who are politically 
active are active through the electoral process. In the U.S., this generally takes place through participation in the imperialist warmongering Democratic Party. Also in the Midwest, um, the mobilization to Minnesota for Duante Wright, uh, who was murdered on April 11th, 2021, in Brooklyn Center, Minnesota. The Midwest region mobilized to Minnesota the Duante Wright mobilization achieved safe, secure transport of our cadre to intervene on the ground. Next slide. We salute MPDOM's leadership in historic 30 year anniversary convention in the Midwest city of St. Louis. All roads and Zoom links led to the historic convention held in St. Louis. Um, commemorating 30 years of MPDOM defending the de democratic rights of African people and reintroducing our people back into political life for self-determining, for self-determination or African working class self-government. Included in the convention were powerful speeches by Chairman O'Malley Yesha Taylor, the One Africa, One Nation Farmers Market, getting fit for the revolution, um, and forwarding the Africans charged genocide Black community control of the police and reparations campaigns. Dozens of Africans became members of MPDOM and a new branch was established in Chicago. Our task is clear. MPDOM must be built in every African community in the world. We must build where we are located and struggle to open community offices. Next slide. The way forward. Um, we ensure that the mandates from Kalambayi as president and the IEC are being met. These mandates apply to each party member who will be building MPDOM right where they are. Um, also, the way forward is reporting on the weekly activities of each branch, giving regional organizational support for each area, ensuring MPDOM mandates are being carried out and providing leadership for local areas, ensuring any hurdles are overcome in a timely manner with the support of the region. There's also door-to-door -door and block-by-block -block on the spot membership drives on the ground and tabling with the ability to join right there on the spot. This uh, is also in line with our Midwest Regional Membership Plan which will be presented in more detail by Comrade Jamal and Westbrook uh, shortly. This will help in our branch building and expansion of branches in St. Louis, Chicago, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Michigan, and Southern Illinois. Um, we will also make use of block captains and other community members to increase the effectiveness of our outreach, spirit sales, and membership goals. The Midwest MPDOM committee positions will be filled by March, 2022, as we begin our expansion of our targeted areas, gaining one block captain and three members every six weeks in each of our areas for the remainder of the year. Next slide. I now, thank you. I now introduce Maiza, the Midwest Regional Director of Agitation and Propaganda. Oh. Uh -huh. um, uh -huh, comrades. Thank you, Kabula, for the intro. As stated, my name is Maya Zana, the Agitation and Propaganda Representative for the Midwest Region. Today, I will briefly share with you all the work that has been carried out from the Midwest Region throughout the last year. These were major goals set, by, set to be accomplished by our region as directed from the Regional Agiprops 2021 POA. Next slide. Listed here are our regional goals to fill the role of regional agiprop um, coordinator taken on by myself to carry out political education studies, which we have done in multiple creative ways, spear distribution and ensuring that the main propaganda campaigns of the party is promoted throughout the region. Building the regional agiprop committee and subcommittees, these specific roles have yet to be filled but they will. Next slide. 
All right, so for political education, we had a very winning year carrying out study on the stoop where we engaged with, um, our neighbors within the community and invited them to participate in open discussions from the latest articles of the Burning Spear newspaper. Study on the stoop has also become a great way to grow monthly subscribers to the Spear. Also out of Chicago, Conrad Kabula showed us how to take the Spear, Spear studies into the living rooms of families and friends with what he calls Chicago Table Talk. Next slide. So you can play that. So for the Midwest, um, so far the Midwest region has carried out study on the stoop in multiple locations in the city of St. Louis. Um, in O'Fallon neighborhood, that's Ward 21, South Side of Chicago, Ward 25, South Side of St. Louis. Ward 25, uh, Ward 3 um, on college, and Ward 2 in Baden. And here are the spear, um, well, the following slide, uh, picture would be a picture of uh, the spear study happening in Chicago. These efforts um, by no means substitute for the regional uh, PE studies held within our ranks. We conduct regional political education studies every Sunday um, where we um, where we study materials from the Department of Cadre Development, and we'll be bringing these studies, um, some of these studies, to social media um, via the party's page this coming spring. Next slide. This is the area of sphere distribution and next slide. Here you see efforts um, in spear distribution by way of tabling by Comrade Jamal in Moorhead, Minnesota. And this can be done um, at many different locations. As you can see here, um, party um, tabling, spear distribution can be, um, can take place at the corner of your blocks, at your local parks, college campuses, storefronts, et cetera. Spear distribution can also be done hand to hand at your job, delivering to your local stores and so on. The Midwest Vanguard also takes the Bernie Spear newspaper to social media with our, van, uh, with our midday, Midwest at midday, where we present readings of the 14 point platform. Um, we will be capturing another round of the 14, 14 points in 2022 as, um, as well as establishing a greater online presence with the regional web with our regional webinars of current spear articles and regional and global events. <clears throat> Next slide. <clears throat> we cannot go without mentioning how we topped off the year with the uh, party's campaign of one of our very own comrades, President of Impedom, Col uh, Columbia and Danette, who run for auto person in ward in the third ward in the city of St. Louis. A huge thank you um, to all of our comrades from other places who touched down here um, at our campaign headquarters here in St. Louis to, um, to help disperse um, vote Columbia throughout the city. Next slide. You can play that. There was an, a staggering um, moment where postering and passing out propaganda of the campaign did not happen. It was, a, it was great to see the support of all of the comrades pouring in from all throughout the US, as well as internationally from Africa. The assembling of the community was a historical and winning <laughs> moment for our candidates. We had, a, we had a very overwhelming amount of support from the masses. Next slide. All right, so for the Midwest region, um, moving forward, we will continue the, um, on its current trajectory and await any new mandates um, as they are given from the Department of Agitation and Propaganda under the leadership of Director Akile Anai. The region will continue to increase spear distribution throughout the region. This year, we are working to get the spear um, subscribed in all 12 locations within the Midwest. These efforts will be done by mobile outreach as well as online outreach targeting these specific states. Um, ensure that the ensure that 
um, productive and effective outreach and recruitment can take place by providing the region with um, necessary literature and propaganda and any other support needed from this office. The Midwest Agile Prop Props on the ground outreach and recruitment will closely mirror the process of the Department of Agitation and Propaganda that um, you heard about um, earlier. Um, so yes, I am also tasked with building um, <clears throat> agile prop committees and subcommittees throughout the Midwest so that we can accomplish all of the regional sphere distribution goals this year, as well as conduct efficient political education studies and many intensives and ensure that all party propaganda is disseminated throughout the region. We are calling on experienced and upcoming skilled um, photo editors, um, graphic designers, memes, and other content development creators, administrators, and, um, and so on to volunteer um, your time and skills and to build this future with us. I want to end my, um, this section by touching on one more key thing. Um, one thing the party leadership must do um, is um, must also do to help the recruitment and membership director focus more on mass and wave recruitment. This will escalate the, the recruitment process by going beyond individual recruitment. Work must be defined and implemented by implemented um, to bring uh, masses of imprisoned African workers into the ranks of the party as well. This will conclude the regional agitprop report for the Midwest region, and I will pass it over to Comrade Jamal Abigail, the recruitment and membership director of the Midwest region. So, Uhuru, uh, comrades, and Van Gorda. Uhuru. Uhuru, and thank you, Comrade Maiza, for the introduction. My name is Jamal Abigail, <laughs> recruitment and membership director for the Midwest region. I would like to acknowledge before I begin that I am delivering this report on the occupied lands of the Mandan, Midatsa, and Arikara peoples. Next slide, please. Please advance one. Thank you. As a movement, we are located throughout the region, and at times this has been both strength and weakness. However, our regional committee has been growing along with the party and the movement in the Midwest region. Uh, and this includes uh, my own uniting with the party about a year ago now. I'm excited to embark on the work uh, in my position as the Midwest uh, Regional Membership and Recruitment Director. And through the leadership of the chairman and my regional committee comrades led by interim representative Comrade Kumba, we are prepared to fulfill the chairman's call to build the party throughout the Midwest till it's won. Uh, the movement is active in the majority of the states in our region, and our focus areas will be discussed later in the presentation. Uh, but our core task is for all members of the party and mass organizations to grow local units and local branches, respectively, where they are. Next slide, please. No. And it is important to know who lives here. The total population of the Midwest region is over 6.8 million people. And as of the 2020 census, Africans are approximately 10.84% uh, total population here. And this means that we make up the majority uh, colonized nation in this territory. As members of the African nation, uh, if we unite, we absolutely will be victorious in our struggle. Next slide, please. In the Midwest region, uh, nearly 30% of the African working class labors in the education and health services industry. And that's 22.6% of us in the healthcare and social assistance sector. Uh, about 13% of us in the manufacturing uh, industry, uh, and 11.5% uh, of us work in wholesale and retail trade. Uh, not only uh, do we get the goods uh, to market, but we also are the ones in the stores selling them, and primarily not for our own benefit. You know, and we also transport these goods, and of course, we are professionals. As you can see, 
you know, three fourths of the African working class are concentrated in these core industries. And we are thus the motive force uh, in the Midwest. And we must mobilize the entire African nation to unite for victory. Another key concern for our people is housing. Last year, the cost of housing went up in the Midwest region by 5.8%, wages did not. And we know that most Africans are not homeowners. About 56% of us are renters uh, or are in various forms of houselessness. In the Midwest region, uh, being homeless uh, can be a death sentence, especially uh, for those Africans who are trapped out in the elements during our brutal Midwest winters. Next slide, please. All right. And so we are targeting a number of cities in uh, 2022 as places where LPUs must be established. We are carrying out the block by block strategy. Uh, Comrade Westbrook, following me, will go in more depth. However, these cities will also be organized with that strategy in mind. In the Fargo, Moorhead, uh, and Chicago areas, uh, we note the prevalence of apartment complexes. As our investigation of material conditions has demonstrated, quality housing is an ever-present concern for the African working class in the Midwest region. We will be organizing the class in our own buildings, building relationships and listening to the concerns of Africans, putting to them a concept that the parasitic colonial capitalist system requires that colonized African peoples be trapped in a relationship of host to parasite uh, with their landlords who are by and large colonizers in ill-kept housing with of course rising rents. And in that way, we will make it clear that organization is needed to overturn this aspect of the colonial contradiction. Organizing African renters into renters associations with the purpose of presenting a united front against landlords will bring the African working class under the leadership of the party and form the basis of building units in these areas, both for mass work and the party itself. We will be knocking doors, holding meetings, and drafting principles of unity. We will be selling the spear and holding studies and identifying both immediate needs and strategic goals. Success in this will be defined in the short term by growing the movement, and in the medium term, by the ability of these renters associations to push out the landlords and owning uh, housing collectively. Uh, beginning in the first week of March, I will be calling on Chicago and Fargo Moorhead forces into studies to understand the history of this type of organizing and to develop an African internationalist understanding of By the third week of March, we will conduct necessary training from the African People's Socialist Party's organizing manual and will ensure that throughout this process, party COVID protocols are adhered to. By the second week of April, I'm calling for our forces to have set at least one meeting with neighbors that month and submit reports, on their neighbor's concerns. By May 1st, our goal will be to have a group of at least four, one to principles of unity in each building where our forces are located. In Kansas City and Columbia, Missouri, we are organizing to bring Africans from the continent together with Africans born here uh, under African internationalism. In Battle Creek, Michigan, our forces will be utilizing all of the experience they have to bring Africans into unity. And from that base, we will move into Detroit. To develop this plan with my leadership and the leadership of our mass organization it will be fully completed no later than February 20th. Comrades, we will seize this revolutionary moment and build the vanguard party of the African revolution till it's won. Uhuru. I'm going to ask for the next slide, please, as I introduce the Midwest Region's Director of Economic Development and Director of Outreach, Comrade Westbrook. Uhuru, Comrade. Uhuru. Uhuru.
Oh, if I'm if I'm heard, you can play the slides. Since we know the history tends to repeat itself, and since we know the uh, history tends to repeat itself, the APSP may rest shade in the building the block by block strategy. The time for building is now, and the APSP must lead the way. Time for uh, the party membership must assume leadership for building units. And each member of the APSP is being called upon to recognize the responsibility to build our party. With this in mind, we have already identified the areas where building will take place, party members' addresses, and this will require the party members assume leadership and begin to build immediately. APSP membership provides the geographical and the demographic originating in the communities where we are located. The local black units in every area of St. Louis, the Old Fowler Red Bull area, College area, in War Three, Southside area, Baden, Florissant, etc. In the office of these local party organizers are follows: the local party lead organizer, the uh, party secretary, the local party organizer for Agile Prop and Prop again the local party uh, organizer for economic development and the local party secretary. Summoning as a general report, we start the process of filling the rest of the positions by identifying the qualified individuals in each area. In February, we started the process of saturating the areas with propaganda to promote the party agenda in a historic place in this Black History Month to help win the masses in each said area. Then the second half of February, we will start having local meetings in each area to start the process of implementing some of our plans for these areas. Like for instance, to rerun candidates in these like War 21 and War 3, to finish implementing our Black Power Blueprint strategy. And so we won't have to worry about the state interfering with our forward progress, or like with our African brothers and sisters on the South side that we have established a relationship with. We wanna make sure the administration border policies by any policies for that matter to show up at their doorsteps. All with Ferguson to finish our primary objective on why they can't check in 2014 to make sure another Mike Brown never happened again on our watch with the process of overthrowing these foreign occupying invaders, these colonial oppressors. Long live the revolution and power to the people. But once again, I'm Conrad Westbrook, and I'm going to salute my leadership, Deputy Chair Owen Jeanette uh, Yesitella, uh, Chairman O'Malley Yesitella, uh, NDO Chamarinka, and our Midwest Representative Kumba. Speaking of Kumba, I want to pass it back to him now. Uhuru. Uhuru. <clears throat> we uh, want to appreciate the reports from the various committee members. Next slide. Next slide. So uh, the uh, next slides deal with the various positions that the LPO, the local party organizations would have to fulfill once it is built. Uh, and you can see the list and the litany of those. Uh, next slide, please. 
Okay, take your new territory, Midwest Region Director of Organization. Uh, this is um, Kumbachi Nia. Next slide. So one of the directives that came out last year was that the coming from the office of, uh, pardon me, coming from the NDO, the National Directive Organization, we wanted to show solidarity with the uh, Africans born in Haiti at the crossroads down in uh, Texas as they were being brutalized uh, on horseback by these colonizer pigs. So uh, we had a, an event downtown in the city of St. Louis and we also had this particular webinar and this webinar was featuring our APSP Haiti expert, Alikia Ngoma, and we had our regional committee forces uh, and a mass force in terms of that as well. And uh, one brother, Harold Compare, who was born in Haiti and who has uh, been in the community for many years advocating for uh, the Haitian redemption, if you will. Uhuru, next slide. Uh, as a result of some of our efforts and work that we've been doing in the city of St. Louis, we have taken the look uh, to expand African socialist internationalism. Thus far, we have made contact, concrete contact with and developed a working with, relationship with uh, forces from Kenya, Togo, Sierra Leone, Tanzania, and Haiti. And most recently, we had an informal session with, some, with a couple of the forces from uh, Kenya and Togo who are down with moving forward the whole African struggle. And these are forces that are considered African so-called immigrants. So our focus was to target that African immigration community and to help them to decolonize that whole concept and bring them into political life for revolutionary activity. And that work is continuing to go on. Uhuru, next slide. And they will be in our movement one way or the other. So this concludes our Midwest report of the 2022 report to the third plenary of the seventh Congress of the African People's Socialist Party, Uhuru, Vanguard up, let's get it done. Uhuru, thank you for the Midwest region for that dynamic report. Um, next up, we have the West Coast region um, led by veteran comrade Bakri Olantunji, Uhuru and welcome, comrade. Oh, I believe you're muted, comrade Bakri. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now. Okay, thank you, comrade. Uhuru, I'm Bakri Latunji, the Western Regional Representative of the African People's Socialist Party USA. Next slide. This is our Western Regional Report. In this report, you will hear from myself, Comrade Mwazi, Comrade Demetria, and Comrade Matsumela. Next slide. I would like to salute Chairman Omalia Shetela for 50 years of relentless revolutionary leadership. As well, I would like to salute Deputy Chair Owners and A.S. Shetela, who relentlessly leads all the work of over 50 economic development institutions. Next slide. As well, salute to all leaders of the National Central Committee, as well as leaders of the regional party leadership. Next slide. There are material contradictions toward organizing in this region. Yet for over 43 years, the party has battled these contradictions and planted the African national flag of Garvey in the West. The Western region of the US has the largest space and the least Africans. Yet the large cities have sizable African populations numerically. Change slide. The African People's Socialist Party moved to the Western Region USA came as a result of the struggling uh, struggle occurring in the Southern Region USA where the party was forged out of fierce resistance colonial, to colonial terror. Resources to forward the revolutionary trajectory were available and the party made a strategic decision to build its mountain out West. Over 40 years of relentless work to build the party, created dual and contending economic institutions and winning the masses of African people back into political life. We have seized the time to contribute to the death of colonial capitalism and for the redemption of Africa in our lifetime. 
Next slide. As a young man in Oakland, I remember seeing a poster of Joe Waller at the Panthers office where I went to distribute papers and earn money. Years later, when I came to the party, it all clicked when I saw that same post over a decade and a half later at the Hoorah House. 2022 marks the 50 year history of the party. It also marks the 50 years of the party's presence out West, as you will learn in the following video on the history of the African People's Socialist Party in the Western region. Let's check it out. Thank you, Karma. It took me just a moment to unmute there. All right. There was a, supposed to be a video. Yeah, okay. Do we have the uh, video to be queued up? The African People's Socialist Party is the advanced detachment of the African working class. Since 1972, the APSP has been the custodians of the international African revolution, bringing the masses of the African working class back to political life and placing revolution back on the table after the military defeat of the African revolution of the 1960s. The home of the Watts Rebellion of 1965 and the Black Panther Party of Self-Defense California and Oakland specifically, was an important center of that international African revolution. It is for that reason that the African revolution bore the brunt of the U.S. military assault against our movement. From Oakland to San Francisco to Los Angeles to San Diego, no place experienced more state murders of Black Panthers than California. Even before the African People's Socialist Party made an official move to California, the Uhuru Movement and the African People's Socialist Party had established their presence out West. Bakri Olatunji, the Western Regional Representative of the African People's Socialist Party, USA, was raised in Oakland. He notes that his first encounter with the party was a poster of Joseph Waller in the early 1970s at a local Black Panther office in Oakland. In 1972, Chairman Omalia Shetela was invited to speak at the Second Congress of African People held in San Diego that year. The party co-founder, Lawrence Mann, spoke in his stead. This was likely the earliest presence that the party made on the West Coast. While other organizations splintered, became demoralized, or increasingly engaged reformist politics, the party was the only organization that exposed the brutal conditions of the African community in a city that bore the brunt of the U.S. governmental's brutal infestation of deadly drugs as a means of salting the earth to make sure the African working class would never rise up to struggle again. In the 1970s, a time described as a period of wartime party building, the party led many mass campaigns that revived the African liberation movement. Arguably, none was bigger than the Desi Woods campaign. This work brought the party west. With the California being a major media hub, the move to California was a successful strategy that brought increased exposure for the African People's Socialist Party. The party builds its mountain. In February 1978, Chairman Omalia Shetela delivered the historic lecture on African internationalism at the Edison School in San Francisco, bringing the theory of the African working class to the masses in California. Later that year, Chairman Omalia Shetela moved to the San Francisco Bay Area. This work led to the development of a Burning Spear Support Committee and subsequent party organizations in the Bay Area. In the late 1970s, poverty, homelessness, and mass incarceration had plagued the African community in California, and there was no revolutionary party to defend the African working class. Like Marcus Garvey's movement in the 1920s, the party built on the ground in California while building the only African solidarity front for the Nicaraguan revolution. It was in California that the party organized the West Coast Free Desi Woods Committee, the African National Prison Organization, and the African National Reparations Organization. 
the African People's Socialist Party organized the first committee to free Geronimo Pratt and also led the fight to abolish the death penalty. This led to the creation of the March Against Genocide, led by the African People's Solidarity Committee, which had grown its presence throughout California, Oregon, and other parts of the West Coast under the leadership of the party. This era gave us the beginnings of Uhuru Foods and Pies as well. Following attacks and assassination attempts made against the party and the chairman, instigated by the ideological imperialist Prairie Fire Organizing Committee, the party tactically moved out of California and then returned to forward the revolutionary trajectory led by the African working class. Oakland becomes the headquarters. In 1981, Oakland became the headquarters of the APSP and the Uhuru movement. This marked the period of new beginnings for the African People's Socialist Party. This facilitated the growth in dual and contending power institutions, the mass recruitment into the party, and the building of mass organizations such as the aforementioned ANPO, ANRO, and later the People's Democratic Uhuru Movement, formed in Oakland. This move placed the party squarely in the center of San Francisco Bay Area's African community. This was of crucial strategic and defensive importance. As the party established campaigns to bring the African working class back into political life, it is the African working class that provides the defense forces in support of the APSP specifically and the African liberation movement more generally. In 1981, the first Uhuru House was opened at 7622 MacArthur Boulevard in Oakland. In September 1981, the party's first Congress was held at the historic St. Augustine's Episcopal Church. St. Augustine's Church was the site of the Black Panthers' free breakfast program and the funeral for Comrade George Jackson. The Uhuru House moved to 7911 MacArthur Boulevard in late 1984 as it engaged in a fierce battle against Oakland slumlords and neo-colonial political leadership. In summer 1984, the party launched the second Freedom Summer in African Liberation Movement history, the Oakland Freedom Summer Project. That fall and summer, the Uhuru Movement led the community control of housing initiative known as Measure O, organizing numerous volunteers who delivered more than 300,000 flyers to the doorsteps of Oakland residents which resulted in winning 29,000 votes on the ballot. In Oakland, the African People's Socialist Party waged a struggle against white power and the police, as well as neo-colonial petty bourgeoisie black politicians in defense of the 10,000 homeless. The party built a tent city and passed out hundreds of meals and seized abandoned homes. This work led to the establishment of the Little Bobby Hutton African People's Free Mobile Health Clinic. The mobile clinic was Bakri's entry into the party. Oakland remained the headquarters until 1993 when it returned to St. Petersburg, Florida. The party's impact was regional and international. Oakland facilitated the growth of the party throughout the African colonies in the Western region, in urban centers, and also behind enemy lines in colonial concentration camps known as prisons. Successful party campaigns such as Black Community Control of Housing Campaign were extended to the Pacific Northwest via the party organization in Seattle, Washington. The party organized the community pushback against the colonial occupation of the African community by domestic military forces, commonly known as the police, with the call of Black Community Control of the Police. The party supported Saigon Penn in San Diego, who killed one cop and injured another in self-defense. The party organized a mass movement in defense of Freddie Lee Roberts, an African youth accused of killing a cop in the Bay Area. These defenses prefaced the 2009 defense of Lovell Mixon. The Freddie Lee Roberts campaign facilitated Huey P. Newton's re-entry into political life. It is in the context that a rally held at the Uhuru House that Huey stated these immortal words. You might not have the Black Panther Party, but you have the Uhuru House. You might not have the Black Panther newspaper, but you have the burning spear. So they haven't done anything by crushing one organization. When Huey Newton was assassinated on August 22, 1989, Bakri Olatunji was working as a nurse in the emergency room at Highland Hospital in Oakland, and he actually witnessed Huey's body being brought in after his assassination. 
In the 1980s, he was coordinator of the Uhuru Movement's Lil Bobby Hutton Mobile Health Clinic, named after another assassinated Panther. Bakri immediately called Chairman O'Malley and Chatella to inform him about Huey's murder. The colonial media immediately slandered Newton as going from prime minister to bum. The Uhuru Movement defended Huey, organized his funeral, served as the honor guard at his funeral, and initiated a scorched earth campaign in defense of Huey. The Uhuru Movement created graffiti stencils and posters that plastered Oakland, stating, Long live Huey, and Huey P. Newton lives. Also chants like, Who killed Huey? Don't tell no lie, the government, the government, the FBI. The Uhuru Movement successfully forced the colonial media to withdraw their previous slander and raise a tremendous victory for the African Revolution that has always relentlessly fought our colonizers. Oakland, Uhuru Movement in San Diego. The Uhuru Movement's early entry into San Diego was facilitated as far back as 1985 with Chairman O'Malley and Chatella's defense of the Union del Barrio and Chicano movement self-determination against attacks from ideological imperialist organizations. The party and union has held a fraternal bond for over 36 years. Chairman O'Malley Shetela, the fallen comrade Omowali Keefing, Bakari Olatunji, and others led the outreach into San Diego these years. Among the oldest of members in San Diego was the late Kwame Ogomu. In 1996, Chairman O'Malley Ishitela spoke at the National Raza Unity Conference at San Diego City College, calling upon unity of African and Mexican indigenous people and against the two-headed monster of the Democratic Republican Party deportation regime. In San Diego, the party mobilized against Proposition 187, Operation Gatekeeper, and other colonial measures. The party has continued to lead this fight with its work in defense of African and indigenous people on both sides of the false colonial border. The African People's Socialist Party, USA, Western Region, is relentless. We have units and support committees in San Diego, Oakland, and Portland. Following the strategy laid out in the 2021 Western Regional Black Power Summit, the party has experienced rapid growth in ANWO and APDEP in the Western Region and new members have been brought into the economic work. This was a victory built on 50 years of African People's Socialist Party relentlessness. Join the African People's Socialist Party today. Build the Western region. Uhuru, uh, change slide, and I want to bring on my comrade, Comrade Mwese, to present the next portion of this presentation. Uhuru, Uhuru comrades. Well, uh, the work of the party is led by this relentless group of African internationalists. As noted, the Western Regional Representative is Comrade Bakari. The Regional Secretary is myself, Mwese. Siali oversees the membership and recruitment. We have Julius, who is over economic development, Comrade Matsumello, who is uh, the Azure Prop coordinator, Comra uh, Comrade Mike, who is the ABDEP rep, Comrade Erica, the Impedum rep, and Comrade Demetria, who is the Black is Back Coalition representative. Uhuru, next slide. The relentless revolutionary work and adherence to chairman's mandates has sustained our work. We would also like to salute the chairman's leadership with the creation of the 2021 Regional Black Power Summits. These summits expanded the work of the party and the movement throughout the region, and we casted a wider net and have experienced growth and success. Let's check out some of the work being done in the region. Next slide. Uhuru Foods and Pies, located in the regional hub in Oakland, California, has made important advances off of our 2021 campaign. Uh, the um, UFP Uhuru Foods and Pies moved into a new, a new kitchen with exponential space, storage, and professional equipment that has increased our capacity to produce and reduce the time of production. For example, we purchased a new pie press that lets us press 300 shells in less than a single hour. Uhuru. We have raised $75,000 in matching funds towards Uhuru Jiko kitchen build out. 
And the new partnerships are being won by on the ground work day by day, pie by pie, and are proving the N2U Volunteer Brigade is winning new forces to contribute to the success and advancement of building an independent African economy. Next slide. Uhuru Furniture and Collectibles is also located in the regional hub and has been driven by African self-determination. The Uhuru NTU Volunteer Brigade program has seen a leap forward in growth and development in, 2020, in 2021. We saw successful monthly warehouse sales at Aquaba Hall, increased direct donations, and building our donor development program. The furniture team is building a cohesive unit that continues to receive awards as the best furniture store in the East Bay several years running. Uhuru, next slide. You've heard the magnificent history of the Uhuru House and Aquaba Hall Institution, but still the best is yet to come. We've withstood earthquakes, police attacks, colonial reactionary forces, still we build. Successful UFC monthly warehouse sales, rebuilding of the uh, Huey P. Newton Community Garden Committee and distributor of black power uh, products are sold here. We are excited about the reopening of the spring 2022 to anchor um, work in Oakland and the region. Next slide. Impedum in the Western region is a powerful weapon in the hands of the African workers. The power is seen with the acquittal of Comrade Denzel and Impedum has established and staffed an office in San Diego, California, continuing to bring Africans into the fight for democratic rights and winning the best into our party. The revolutionary national democratic program the party's 14 point, point platform outreach and studies are winning new forces into mass organization led by the APSP. Next slide. And uh, now I wanna turn it over to Comrade Demetria. Uhuru, Comrade. Thank you, Comrade Mawazi. That was amazing. We are doing work. We are winning, Comrade we are winning. Uhuru. Uhuru. Again, my name is Demetria, comrades here in Portland, Oregon, Erica Clark and myself have been growing the work of African National Women's Organization throughout the region and beyond. We're holding the Arrest TPS campaign Days of Action in Portland, San Diego and Oakland. We have grown a working group in Portland with with constant activities promoting the progressing work in the arrest CPS campaign. We mobilized a large contingent from the Northwest of the arrest CPS campaign volunteers who were recruited to attend the successful, powerful Black is Back Coalition March on Washington, DC in November of 2021. Next slide, please. and woe in the Western region. I'm telling you, this is what we do. Next slide, please. The regional hub in Oakland, like the region, is casting a wide net to win Africans and others to support, participate, and join the revolutionary project here in the West. The Live Like Huey, Monumental event did that. Our, our participation, the Uhuru Solidarity Movement March for Reparations event in Oakland and in Portland won forces to our revol revolutionary trajectory. The Western Region party-wide conference held last September has seriously grown to our influence throughout the region. Three, the reopening of Aquaba Hall as the Center for Regional Political and Economic Activities is underway with building upgrades and successful use during this pandemic. Next slide, please. 2021 was a continuum of meeting the mandates putting forward in our 2020 plenary study and constant use of the party's organizational menu and protocols. A must, discipline, a must, building, building our regional committee to capacity, opening the staff and operate our regional hub. Name 
other locations in the region where offices can be open constantly sponsor annual events featuring Chairman O'Malley Yeshitella, developed by Black Power Business, a regional self-reliance, build fundamental local party units and local party organizations. We are building on a solid foundation laid down by the African People's Socialist Party leadership. Next slide, please. There is an old African saying, make lemonade, baby, with the lemons. We are drawing conclusions from our practice as African internationalists. We constantly sum up our work, both victories and defeats, to extend our winning of Africans to grow the party's influence throughout the region. Practice is primary practice and discipline. You hero, I salute the chairman and deputy chair for the powerful, relentless plenary. Thank you so much. Next slide, please. I want to turn this presentation over to my comrade, Matsumela. Thank you so much, you hero. Uhuru, Uhuru Demetria. Uh, we like to uh, thank you and I salute you. We'd also like to salute all the work of our volunteers uh, who contribute to economic work as well as the mass political work throughout the region. Change slide. Now let us look uh, look uh, toward the way forward in the region. Change slides. Uh, with the reopening of the Uhura House and Aquaba Hall, we will be building. We will holding community events, including in the 2020 to uh, uh, African Liberation Day in Oakland. We will also be holding our regional conference and regional mini intensives uh, 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 there and throughout the region. Change slides. Um, uh, we will be holding local and regional events, placing the importance of the party's anniversary in the hands of the African working class. Change slides. Uh, we, we will continuously struggle until Africans are free. Africans will be free. Africa will be redeemed through the relentless leadership of the African People's Socialist Party. We are our own liber liber liberators, everyone. African independence in our lifetime. Uhuru. Uhuru. Thank you. And that is the Western Regional Report to the third plenary of the 7th Congress of the African People's Socialist Party. Uhuru, comrades, thank you so much for that very, very powerful report. So moved by every one of them and I learned so much. I'm sure we all did. There's nowhere else in the world that we can go to learn so much about our struggle for self-determination. And now uh, we're going to go right to the, the African People's Solidarity Committee's reports. Uh, Soliana, can you introduce them, please? Uhuru, definitely. So behind enemy line, a report from African People's Solidarity Committee to the APSP. SP. Led by, Led by she is a veteran organizer who has been a leader of the African People's Solidarity Committee since the foundation, foundation in 1976. She is the author of Overturning the Culture of Violence, a book that you must have. Let's welcome Penny Hess, chair of APSC, with her report to the African People's Socialist Party. Uhuru Penny. Uhuru, uhuru. It's really, wow, what an honor to be here. We salute the African People's Socialist Party the 50th anniversary, this incredible plenary, the leadership of Chairman O'Malley Ishatella, relentless, Deputy Chair Onizene Ishatella on the Central Committee of the Party. What an incredible plenary so far, the Chairman's political report, which we express our deepest unity with, the appeal that was amazing, the report from the Office of Deputy Chair, the incredible report by the director of Agiprop, Director Akile, and the regional reports, how inspiring Uhuru. I have with me today for this report, Comrade Kitty, S.G. Allison, Comrade Halley, Lisa, Chair Jesse, Len, and Amanda. But we're gonna start with a video before we start our report.
For the past 50 years, the African People's Socialist Party has fought relentlessly to solve all the problems left by the U.S. government's defeat of the Black Revolution of the 1960s. Chairman Omalia Shetela has made sure that this time around, African people, led by the African working class, will be victorious in winning their liberation. One of the critical questions the chairman had to solve was what to do about the white people. The chairman believed that through the scientific leadership of the African Working Class Party, white people could be won to genuine solidarity. With his theory of African internationalism, Chairman Yeshitela has proved that Europe assaulted Africa, turned African human beings into commodities, the human machinery, the primitive accumulation, or first economic capital that founded and maintains the entire world system of colonial capitalism. The U.S. stands on lands stolen from the indigenous people subjected to popular genocide carried out by white settler colonizers. The majority of the world was invaded, raped, and plundered for the benefit of a tiny percentage of the world's population in a cold, barren, northerly corner of the world, which became known as Europe. Chairman Omalia Shetela has scientifically proven that colonialism, the domination of a whole people by a foreign and alien state power, is the mode of production of the capitalist system. African people are colonized wherever they have been forcibly dispersed, including inside the colonial borders of the United States. All resources, goods, and services produced for white people under capitalism are irreversibly dependent on the suffering, exploitation, and theft from African and colonized peoples. All white people are a part of the colonizer nation. The true working class of the world is made up of African and colonized workers. All white people who want to rectify our relationship to African people must be under the leadership of the African anti-colonial revolution. The African People's Socialist Party created the African People's Solidarity Committee in 1976 to extend the African Revolution behind enemy lines. Among those present at the founding conference was Penny Hess, who later became the chair of APSC and who has led the work to build white solidarity with African liberation under the leadership of the party for the past 46 years. In the early days, most APSC members came to the organization new to political life. Many of us still identified with all the opportunist white movements that had gained prominence off the demise of the Black Revolution. The party struggled relentlessly to win APSC to a principled stand of unity and reparations under its leadership. In the late 70s, the party moved its headquarters to the Oakland Bay Area, the party called the liberal, resource-rich Bay Area the party's mountain, a rear base for the African Revolution. The party assigned APSC to build political and material solidarity for the party-led campaign to free Dusty Woods, smash colonial violence, and for the founding of the African National Prison Organization. This led APSC to create important solidarity institutions in 1979, we built the Walk Against Genocide fundraiser through massive door-to-door -door campaigns and outreach in Oakland and Berkeley. The Walk Against Genocide became an annual tradition, later known as the March for Reparations, which we still hold today. We began fundraising by selling food at street fairs such as the San Francisco Gay Pride event and other fairs in 1979. In 1980, we built a holiday pie campaign, which became the early manifestation of Uhuru Foods and Pies, now under the leadership of Black Star Industries and the office of Deputy Chair Onazane Yeshitela. While there was some good work taken on by APSC in the early years, the unity with the leadership of the party was tenuous. In 1981, the party was forced to disband APSC after we tried to take control of a party printing institution that we rebranded as a women-owned business. APSC began to even question its existence under the party's leadership. 
the party seized direct oversight over the Solidarity Movement. That same year, the party held its first Congress, where the chairman began to define white opportunism on the pedestal of African colonialism. In 1982, the party launched the historic first tribunal on reparations to African people held in Brooklyn, New York. The tribunal was part of the strategy to make reparations a popular mass demand of the African working class. By 1984, the party was fully immersed in struggles in the name of the African working class in Oakland, California. This is the year that the party held the Oakland Summer Project and got 30,000 signatures putting Measure O, the Community Control of Housing Initiative, on the Oakland ballot. The unity of APSC with the leadership of the party was forged in the crucible of the Oakland years. In 1985, struggle erupted inside of APSC. The question of the party's leadership over the white people and our responsibility to raise reparations came to a head. The party won this struggle within APSC to abandon a charity stance in which we saw ourselves as a parallel organization. We united to become African internationalists, ready to go out into the white population and win reparations to African people as mandated by the party. The basis of our work would be material solidarity. Reparations would be our main focus. Ever since, our mantra has been white reparations to African people, understanding that all white people are part of the colonizer nation. In 1987, APSC played a leading role in opening the party-led Uhuru Bakery Cafe and building Uhuru Foods and Pies and Uhuru Furniture, party institutions today. In 1990, APSC was asked to send organizers to Philadelphia, where the party was building after the city's terrorist bombing of the MOVE Collective murdering 11 African children, women, and men. In 1991, the party launched what would become the International People's Democratic Uhuru Movement and assigned APSC forces to build in Chicago. APSC members were also sent to St. Petersburg, Florida, the party's national headquarters, where in 1996, the party led the Battle of St. Petersburg the massive African uprising following the police murder of 18-year-old Tyron Lewis. In 2010, the party held its fifth Congress and Deputy Chair Onazene Yeshitela was assigned to lead over all of the party's institutions. All economic work, previously coordinated by APSC, was brought under the office of the Deputy Chair. With her brilliant vision, these institutions have thrived and developed as part of the African working class power to govern. Many APSC members continue to have the honor of working in Uhuru Foods and Pies and the Uhuru Furniture Stores under the direct leadership of Deputy Chair. In 2014, Chairman Omalia Shatella came to St. Louis in the wake of the uprising following the police murder of Mike Brown and began building the party and the International People's Democratic Uhuru Movement. In 2017, Deputy Chair Onazaneya Shatella came to St. Louis and began brilliantly building the Black Power Blueprint with properties on West Florissant Avenue on the north side. In 2017, the party ran candidates for office in St. Petersburg, Florida, including a member of APSC with the platform of Unity Through Reparations. Today, the headquarters of the African People's Socialist Party is at the Uhuru House, 4101 West Florissant in St. Louis. APSC's national headquarters is located in a party-owned building at 2654 Gravoy in the white community. APSC and the Uhuru Solidarity Movement are now located in 130 cities throughout the U.S. and continue to raise an ever-growing amount of resources based on winning white people to unity through reparations. There is so much more to say about the history of the African People's Solidarity Committee and its significance as a tool of the African Revolution. This is the first time ever that white people have had the opportunity for the redemption of our colonial legacy. We can now join humanity under the leadership of the African working class. Chairman Omalia Shatella has summed up that the theory of primitive accumulation, combined with our struggles to resolve the contradictions within the solidarity movement, have led the African People's Socialist Party to understand that the structured relationship between the party 
and APSC is exactly correct. We salute Chairman O'Malley Yeshitala, Deputy Chair Ona Zane Yeshitala, and the powerful leadership of the Vanguard Party of the African Working Class for giving white people the opportunity to join humanity and rectify our relationship to African people. We salute the African People's Solidarity Committee Chairwoman Penny Hess for her decades of unwavering unity with the anti-colonial African Revolution that sets the example for all white people who want to stand on the right side of history. The African Revolution is our revolution. Under the leadership of the African People's Socialist Party, we can be part of the future without the colonized and the colonizer, a future of socialism led by the African working class. Again, it, it's an incredible honor to be here today at this incredible plenary, the third plenary of the party seventh Congress under the leadership of Chairman Omali Shatella. I just want to, I want to start by, again, expressing the profound salute from the African People's Solidarity Committee with our leadership, Chairman Omali Shatella who has fought for 50 years to lead the African revolution to its total completion, to the liberation, unification, and self-government of Africa and African people everywhere. The chairman scientifically solved every problem left to the movement that had prevented African people from winning, including solving the question of what about the white people, which as chairman, which as chairman has said, is the problem that bedeviled the African liberation movement for so long. The chairman formed the African People's Solidarity Committee in 1979 under the party's, um, 1976, sorry, 1976, four years after the formation of the African People's Socialist Party. Next slide, it would be slide three. The African People's Solidarity Committee salutes Deputy Chair Ona Zanea Shatella, under whose direct leadership APSC members work and are held accountable to our day-to-day -day work of raising reparations as mandated by the party, which is a myriad of different ways, which we will show. The Deputy Chair Ona Zanea has, has not only brilliantly made the words, mandates, and, and political reports, of Chairman O'Malley Shatella, a concrete material reality as we have seen in her report today on the ground, something not being done by any other organization anywhere in the world, Deputy Chair Ona Zane has transformed the African People's Solidarity Committee to be a functioning part of the strategy as a tool of the African revolution in a material way that enables us as white people and white people everywhere to contribute to reparations as a, as a revolutionary demand. Next slide. Uhuru, I, I really want to, to profoundly salute all the members of the National Central Committee of the party and the 50th anniversary and the incredible leaders and cadres. And I want to salute the National Central Committee of the African People's Solidarity Committee um, under the leadership of the party and just really salute these comrades who struggle to be cadre, to take up their work directly under the leadership of the Office of Deputy Chair, the Office of Chairman O'Malley Chattel and the African People's Socialist Party every day. I wanna start by saluting our beloved comrade Secretary General of the African People's Solidarity Committee, who is also the very dynamic coordinator of a Huru Furniture Store in Philadelphia, under the leadership of Deputy Chair Ona Sinea Shatella. Comrade Allison Haney, Uhuru. And I want to salute the Director of the Office of Reparations and Economic Development, ORED, a key member of the staff of Deputy Chair Ona Zanea Shatella and the Black Power Blueprint Project Manager, as we have seen in the reports today, and just an all around fighter for reparations to African people and the cadre stand of the African People's Solidarity Committee. Comrade Kitty Riley, Uhuru, Comrade Kitty. 
And I want to salute the dynamic chair of the Uhuru Solidarity Movement, just such an amazing, powerful comrade, tireless, and a leader on so many fronts, a true cadre, willing to answer the call to forward the leadership of the African People's Socialist Party um, on every, in every possible way. Comrade Jesse Neville, Uhuru, Comrade Jesse. And I want to salute the coordinator of Uhuru Foods and Pies and the chair of the Mighty Mighty Grants team and so much more under the leadership of Deputy Chair Ona Zene Fischitella and her office, our incredible longtime comrade out in Oakland, California, comrade Maureen Wagoner, Uhuru. And I salute the coordinator of Uhuru, Fi Uhuru Foods and Pies in St. Petersburg and a very important key staff member of the office of the deputy chair on so many fronts, comrade Janice Kant, Uhuru, comrade. And I salute our dynamic coordinator of the Uhuru Furniture Store in Oakland, working under the leadership of of the Office of Deputy Chair Ona Zanea Shatella and an important part of the Western regional work of APSC, Comrade Stephanie Midler, Uhuru Comrade, APSC Promotions Director and, and member of the African People's Socialist Party's Adjuprop under the direct leadership of Director Akile Anai, Comrade Lisa Watson, Uhuru, Western Regional Organizer and Membership Chair of the Uhuru Solidarity Movement, as well as local USM Organizer in Oakland, enthusiastic, tireless Solidarity Organizer, Comrade Ali Ayello, Uhuru Comrade, and our Midwest Regional Organizer, Uhuru Planet Director and Coordinator of the Uhuru Solidarity Center renovations, Comrade Halley, Uhuru Comrade. Next slide. So I just want to say before we go into the report, I want to reiterate that the African People's Solidarity Committee expresses our unity with the historic and profound political report by Chairman Omalia Shatella to the 2022 plenary and with the political report of Deputy Chair Ona Zanea Chatella and with the spring campaign and all of the work that is being taken on on the ground. And the chairman is calling for, urgently calling for all members of party organizations, including APSC, to take up a new level of cadre responsibility. And um, and, you know, for, for all of us to step up, as has been called for, to recognize the significance of 50 years of the vanguard party of the African working class and the chairman who has kept the African revolution alive for more than a half a century. And the chairman has brilliantly defined for us the colonial mode of production which lays the basis for why the colonized African working class must lead the anti-imperialist struggle for all peoples on the planet, especially white people, and why APSC must be organized under the leadership of the Vanguard Party. Colonial capitalism was built on the assault on African people and must be overturned by the leadership of the African working class. Next slide, slide six. In the white community, we are winning and have responsibility deepening this understanding among the white population of this colonial mode of production built on the assault on African people and maintained on the colonial domination of the majority of the world, that there is colonialism around the world and inside the borders of the United States, and that as white people, as colonizers, everything we have every dream, every aspiration, as Chairman Omalia Shatella has said so eloquently, all the wealth, all the products that, that are, are, are manufactured for the enjoyment of white people as the colonizers are dependent on colonialism, on war, on suffering, on violence, on rape and plunder, 
against African people inside the borders of the United States and around the world and colonize peoples everywhere. This land belongs to the indigenous people. The party has always recognized that and we stand in, in true solidarity with that. There are no white people that have any claim to this stolen land of indigenous people here. The world revolution must be led by the African working class. The African revolution is the only revolution that requires the complete and total destruction of capitalism, imperialism, and the entire colonial mode of production. This is why this is our revolution. And for all the white people who hate this system, who wanna see a new world, get on the forward side of history, join under the leadership of the African People's Socialist Party and the African Revolution, join the African People's Solidarity Committee. This means that reparations to African people is the true revolutionary redistribution of the wealth of the world back into the hands of the true, true producers of all wealth, the African working class. It means the return of this land to the indigenous people and the liberation of colonized peoples everywhere, the return of their stolen resources and land. And the African, and the chairman formed the African People's Solidarity Committee as a tool of the African revolution after much struggle. And APSC has embraced African internationalism as our worldview. Slide seven, next slide. The chairman has named recruitment and implementation of the regional strategy as the main campaigns of the party in this period. And this is what we have to fight for. We are going to be building. This is at the center of our work. All our work will be measured by recruitment into APSC, the Uhuru Solidarity Movement, the NTU campaign and donors um, that are, are part of the solidarity movement as well. APSC's regional structure is currently, has merged on a temporary basis, the Northern and Southern regions, which are working together to build individual regions there. We also have the Midwestern region and the Western region. And that we unite with the struggle for the regional implementation and recruitment and see that as our only way forward. Here in St. Louis, we have the Uhuru Solidarity Center, which is, as has been said, the building owned by the African People's Socialist Party and Black Star Industries that we will be um, finishing the renovations very shortly in the next few weeks. Um, we will have a grand opening soon when the spring when the chairman, when Chairman Omali Chatella and Deputy Chair Onazanea Chatella are here, we will send out press releases for that and planning for a great big event on that. We are gonna be knocking on doors in this Solidarity Center neighborhood. We have a banner, Unity Through Reparations, first time ever in the city of St. Louis, which has been so brutal in its colonial assault on African people over centuries that this is part of transforming and extending the African revolution into the white population. We're gonna be going into, into Fox Park neighborhood, into Benton Park West, all around here. We're gonna knock on every door. We're gonna meet the people. We're gonna bring them in into this. And of course, many other neighborhoods uh, in the white community in this city here. Um, we're gonna hold events, teach-ins here at the center, in the parks, and we're holding organizing tours. I saw that in the regions, the party is doing that as well. We're gonna be holding organizing tours in our regions. We already have an event set up in Minneapolis. So we will be informing the local party here about that um, for, I believe for April, we're gonna be building a, a West Coast organizing tour and, and building for many events, including the Days of Reparations tours later this year we're gonna be building NTU volunteers, not only for social media, graphic design, but also for canvassing, for going door to door. We're gonna produce materials, brochures, videos, tutorials, hold bold actions like the ones that Uhuru Solidarity Movement is gonna be holding in front of the arch, which represents uh, genocide, colonialism, and imperialism, colonial mode of production here in St. Louis is a symbol of that. Um, that would be the day before the, the USM um, National Convention in March. 
So we're going to have membership drives. We're going to fight for recruitment. We are going to get out there and expand beyond the 130 cities where USM and APSC are located right now. Um, I want to say that in the year 2021, USM and, um, and APSC, but USM in particular, raised more resources than it ever had before. But we recognized that we analyzed it. And the majority of the resources are from people that, and contacts that we already have. So we have to build, we have to recruit, we have to build the regional strategy, even to raise more resources and meet more people. We will um, use the USM constitution this year to implement the regional structure. And it calls for regional committees um, regional, the regions to have pre-conferences before the convention will be holding those, USM will be holding those. So next slide, slide eight. And we also unite that in 2021, we must break down the barriers and massively win the anti-colonial understanding and unity and practice of white people with reparations under the organized leadership of the African revolution. We have to take on individualism as, as a colonialist mentality and that white people must be organized under the leadership of the African People's Socialist Party, as the chairman says in the political report, absolutely unequivocally. We must make O'Malley, Chairman O'Malley Chatella a household word. We have to promote the party and the brilliant and unique black power blueprint with the African working class under the leadership of Deputy Chair Ona Zene. It's actually taking and seizing political and economic power. We have to build APSC, USM, implement the NTU campaign. Next slide. And before I wrap up this part, I also want to say that um, we have for APSC, we really want to salute, you know, now we have a budget. We, we have to raise resources for this building that we have the honor of using here on the south side of 2654 Gravoy Avenue in St. Louis, owned by Black Star Industries, the African People's Socialist Party, and that we, um, the building was purchased. We are, we are raising resources for it. This building is, is located in a really strategic location, and it physically carries out the strategy of the party to extend the African Revolution into the white community. We, we really want to thank so many people who, who made donations and contributions towards getting this building to our comrades and friends. And so many volunteers have helped us do some basic rep repairs, which we will see a, a report on shortly. Um, and that right now, we are just about making all the resources that we need for the, the building and for the work of APSC through APSC dues extra monthly pledges that many comrades are making, rent on, on the apartment, which is rented upstairs to some wonderful comrades, and a monthly contribution from the Uhuru Solidarity Movement, monthly resources from Uhuru Planet, and a monthly national webinar. So we are doing it. We are going forward. And I want to turn it over to comrade Kitty Riley, who is going to talk about the work of the Office of Reparations and Economic Development. Uhuru Kitty. Thank you so much, Chairwoman Penny. <clears throat> really appreciate the opening of the report. And like you, I'm just so humbled and inspired by even day three, the entire party plenary and all the reports that have preceded us today have been really exciting and inspiring and moving. Um, I want to just, you know, say a huru from the Office of Reparations and Economic Development. APSC has such a department and office because it reaffirms that central to our work of APSC is raising material solidarity through reparations. It's a profound honor to participate in solidarity under the leadership of the African People's Socialist Party in building a future of liberation for African people and all of humanity. Members of ORED work directly under the leadership of Deputy Chair Onizene Ishitela in party institutions and programs. The ORED report today will be given by our Vice Chair, Allison Haney, and myself. Next slide. Is it? 
Allison. Uhuru. Uhuru. Can you see me? I can't see. Okay, I got in. Thank you. So the Office of Reparations and Economic Development salutes Chairman Amalia Shatella for 50 years of relentless leadership of the African Revolution and the vanguard party of the African working class. And we salute Deputy Chair Ona Zanea Shatella for relentless leadership in building the liberated economy for the African nation. Next slide. Ored, oh, Ored salutes African People's Solidarity Committee Chairwoman Penny Hess for setting the stance of principled solidarity from all white people and relentlessly fighting for reparations and material solidarity under the leadership and timelines of the African People's Socialist Party. The APSC Department of ORED was formed to hold the material solidarity goals accountable from all solidarity movement areas of work. We have just an incredible executive committee that I'm absolutely honored to work with under the leadership of Deputy Chair Ona Zadeh Shetela. I'm honored to be the ORED director and work in the Africans One Billion Strong Donor Campaign and Black Power Blueprint projects. We have our just incredibly inspiring cadre, our Secretary General Allison Haney, who is the manager of Ahura Furniture Philly. We have our leading NTU organizer, um, our project manager, Stephanie Midler. She's the manager of Uhuru Furniture Oakland. We have Janice Kant, who manages Uhuru Foods and Pies St. Pete and vice chair of the Mighty Grants team. We have Maureen Wagner, director of Uhuru Foods and Pies, chair of the Mighty Grants team. I mean, these are comrades that'll, that are solid, solid cadre of the Solidarity Com Committee. It's critical to acknowledge and recognize that the veteran members of ORED had the profound honor of years of direct training and leadership from Chairman Omalia Shetela, some for as long as 45 years. Next slide. As our assignment for reparations, Solidarity members in the party institutions carry out our responsibilities and take a cadre stand to solve problems and lead under the office of Deputy Chair Ona Zanea Shetela. This photograph includes ORED Executive Committee members with Deputy Chair Ona Zanea and APSC Chairwoman Penny Hess, as well as ORED members, Opa, Pete, Janine, Ruby, Renee, Raya, Wendy, and Joe. Reparations with the Uhuru Movement Institutions is revolutionary work, uniting with overturning the colonial mode of production that has benefited, benefited the colonizer nation for over 600 years. Next slide. In Uhuru Foods and Pies, we carry out the party's goals and strategy for Black Star Industries to build an independent African economy and put the control of food production and distribution in the hands of the African working class. We build relationships and advance funding and plans for the building of Uhuru Jiko in St. Louis. Next slide. ORED members in the Uhuru furniture stores carry out the party's goals for these deeply rooted anti-colonial community institutions in the party's regional hubs, Philadelphia in the North region and Oakland in the West region. The stores are living examples to the African community of African self-determination and economic development. These institutions give people from all nationalities the opportunity to actively support the right of African people to self-determination. Next slide. ORED has the honor to participate in the historic Black Power Blueprint Project in St. Louis. We win resources, develop relationships, and build the Uhuru NTU Volunteer Program, the anti-colonial projects of the Black Power Blueprint, building dual and contending power. Next slide. Tapping the resources and social wealth of the white world, solidarity in the Africans One Billion Strong donor campaign, the Mighty Mighty Grants team, and the Reparations Legacy Project work together to identify, develop, and when resources stolen from the African nation and hoarded in the white community. Uhuru. 
Kitty and Orad SGLA. Thank you so much. That was excellent. And I am very excited now to turn it to turn this over to Comrade Lisa talking about APSC promotions. Uhuru Comrade Lisa is in the Midwest region in Minneapolis. Uhuru Chairwoman Tenney, thank you so much. And I will be reporting on, as you said, APSC promotions. And I just wanna start by saluting the chairman, deputy chair and the entire National Central Committee and this amazing plenary, the, the membership of the party, as well as my direct leadership, you Chairwoman Penny, and next slide. I salute APSC Agiprop Director Akile Anai, under whose leadership I have the honor of working in the depart party's department of Agiprop. Next slide. So APSC has begun holding regular cadre level studies in our regional unit following the curriculum developed by the party's Agiprop department. And in 2021, we held a 14 week study series on the party's platform and began the in-depth study on the theory of African internationalism. Next slide. We are also holding monthly regional math studies. And recently the US and Midwest region hosted a two part study using African internationalism to discuss the book, The Broken Heart of America, looking at the way St. Louis played a central role in consolidating, consolidating colonialism in the US. Next slide. In 2021, APSC held six national online events branded as White Solidarity with Black Power Live, featuring APSC Chair Penny Hess, and with special guests, including Chairman Omali Chatella, and our goal is to hold these monthly national web events um, in 2022 as well. And our next White Solidarity with Black Power Live is Wednesday, February 23rd at 6 p.m. Central on the topic of Russia and Ukraine, what's really happening from the African internationalist point of view. Next slide. Another resource for political education in the solidarity movement is the monthly White Solidarity with Black Power column in the Burning Spear newspaper, which is edited by APSC Chair Penny Hess and with Jesse Neville and Len Demmer as contributing writers. Next slide. Another front in the war of ideas and promoting the stance of solidarity is the Reparations in Action radio show and podcast. It airs Fridays at 3 p.m. Eastern time on Black Power 96 radio and is on demand at uhurusolidarity.podbean.com and on the Uhuru Solidarity YouTube channel. And we salute the contributors to this show, including host Jamie Simpson, regular guest Penny Hess and Jesse Neville, um, the audio engineer Marcel, as well as Marissa and Jackson who work on promotions. Next slide. And in 2021, this show surpassed 4,200 downloads and we wanna continue producing this powerful podcast and radio show and expanding its reach. And next slide. Um, so APSC's promotion and Agiprop goals in 2022 include one, to recruit into and build the APSC Agiprop and Promotions Committee to increase our promotions capacity with writers to contribute to the monthly spear column build the teams that work on the Reparations in Action radio show and the APSC webinars, recruit graphic designers, video editors, and social media forces to expand the reach of everything that we're producing. Two, to hold political education, the political education regime of the party accountable in APSC regions and hold monthly APSC political education web events that we are talking about. Three, um, to continue production of the Reparations in Action radio show. Four, increase fear and book distribution by APSC and USM in each region. Five, develop APSC's online promotions, including the website and social media, and update APSC print materials, including the brochure and creating pamphlets. So those are just some of the things we have to do even more than that, um, promoting the chairman, promoting Chairwoman Penny and getting this line out there. So I will turn it now back to Chairwoman Penny Hess. 
Guru, thank you so much, Comrade Lisa, for all the tremendous work for APSC Promotions. And we're a little bit over time, so I want to call up Comrade Halley, who's going to give the next two re very exciting reports. And just really want, want to welcome Comrade Halley, who moved here to St. Louis from Boston. Uhuru. Uhuru. I can't see the, well, I don't know if my head's cut off, but I'll just start here. OK, you can go to the next slide. Yeah. All right, so um, just really appreciate this whole plenary process and this. Um, okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Is it? We good? I think so. Okay. Right, All right. I'm okay. going to, I'm just going to keep going. So <laughs> I am giving this report on the new Uhuru Solidarity Center that we are in right now, doing a, a live stream, watching the plenary. I first want to salute the chairman, deputy chair, and the whole plenary process. Salute the relentless vanguard of the party. So in 2021, the party acquired this building in August, and it's at 2654 Gravoy Ave in St. Louis. And this picture here is a mock-up of the building. This is photoshopped. But we, we plan to have this finished by the end of the month, later in February. Next slide. So the political significance of this building is extremely important to have this center in St. Louis to build the movement for white reparations to African people and gain support for the Black Power Blueprint under the leadership of the African People's Socialist Party. Located on the south side within the white community, this building is now the national office for three institutions, APSC, USM, Huru Planet, and also ORED, and is a base of operations for volunteer work days, studies, and events to raise the demand for reparations from the white community. It will also be a storefront to distribute buy Black Power products and an info shop where white people can come in off the street to buy a Burning Spear newspaper and learn about the Black Power Blueprint. Next slide. So here we have some before and after photos of the first phase of renovations, which is this red floor room here. So over six work days in November and December, we transformed this drab concrete floor and just dirty looking place into a beautiful center using deputy chairs style of colors that have been also connected to the Uhuru house with the red, black, and white. Next slide. As you can see, the floor was just really dirty, but we spruced it up really nice with this beautiful red. Um, and we have a black semi-gloss trim and a fresh coat of white paint on the walls. Next slide. Here's another view of the main room where we had to patch some concrete on the floor. We will also use this area for a proper storefront for a Huru Planet Reparations apparel, which you can see here on display and to sell other Buy Black Power products. Next slide. So the Uhuru Solidarity Center would really not be possible without all of our incredible donors. We just really appreciate everyone who's contributed to making this exciting project a reality, a new institution of the party owned by the African People's Socialist Party. Next slide. So the, the center would also not be poss possible without our amazing volunteers. So the next couple slides are some reparations in action, volunteers getting to work, fixing the floors and paint and everything. So um, yeah, you can go to the next slide. Here's some more photos, fixing the floor. Um, painting the walls, just getting it all nice and beautiful for the public. Next slide. So here's some more photos. And just to say that when you volunteer for the Uhuru Solidarity Movement, it's truly reparations in action. This is revolutionary reparations work from the white community. Next slide. So um, just want to shout out and really appreciate all of our um, volunteers, people who helped paint, Chairwoman Penny, Kitty, Jesse, Len, Christina, Tina, Casey, Erin, Amanda, Amir, Abby, and Ari, and maybe you too, if you wanna join us at our next, next um, action to get it done. So next slide. Um, here's a basic timeline. Our renovation plan is to complete the front room um, by the end of this month. And we also have um, some other decorations. We wanna do the main floor, the garage, outside seating area and some wall decorations on the outside. So 
Um, if you wanna get involved, you can contact info at ahrusolidarity.org. So that is my report on the Ahru Solidarity Center. Ahru, so you're gonna go right in. I'm gonna, okay, <laughs> sure. So Uhuru yeah. Planet, also the coordinator of that. It's very related to the fundraiser for that. So Uhuru. Uhuru, okay. So next slide. So here I am back again, giving the planet, uh, giving the Uhuru Planet Reparations Apparel Report to the plenary. This is an institution of the African People's Socialist Party and is a subsidiary of Blacks or Industries. So next slide. So Ahru Planet is owned by the party and operated by the African People's Solidarity Committee as our economic institution. We are under the leadership of Deputy Chair Ona Zene Yashitela, President of Black Star Industries, which is forwarding commerce for and between African people worldwide. Our mission as Ahru Planet is to forward the culture of white reparations to African people. Sales from Ahru Planet directly sustain the work of APSC and the Solidarity Center. And again, thank you everyone who participate in our live sale yesterday. It was so successful, so thank you so much. Next slide. Our current committee is myself as the chair, salute Johan over sales and Rachel as our production assistant. And in 2022, we are really determined to build our committee, fill out all our roles and build our NTU volunteer program. So next slide. Just wanna salute all of our, um, all our volunteers from the last year. Shout out to E.B., Cosmo, Jamie, Amanda, Mara, Marvin, Nathan, and Len. Thank you so much. And we do have many open positions, such as project manager, grants, sales, accountant, inventory, website. You can be a model. You can help our TikTok. We really need everything to help build this business. Next slide. Some of our victories of 2021 are that we moved our office to St. Louis. We are here. We contribute monthly to this center as a reparations pledge. We've tabled at markets in Boston, Philadelphia, New York City, and St. Louis, and have been building our regional strategy through that. We've increased sales overall since the last year. We sold wholesale to USM regions to sell locally on their tables. We launched our first customer uh, mailing. People got a postcard to say thank you at the end of the year. And we began advertising in the Burning Spear newspaper, both in print and online. Next slide. Here are some new products we launched in the last year with slogans such as gentrification is colonialism, reparations now, colonialism must go, and end the Del Mar divide, reparations to Black St. Louis. Next slide. Our goals for the next year, build our committee so that we can truly function as a BSI institution, recruit volunteers, win the stance of reparations, Make Ahru Planet a major, major fundraiser for APSC and the Solidarity Center. Build our grants team, professionalized marketing, new slogans and apparel, tabling throughout markets in St. Louis, promoting the Del Mar Divide sign, especially here in St. Louis, and hosting weekly live sales. So next and final slide. So you can shop our online, uh, next slide. You can shop our online store at ahuruplanet.com. And this weekend, all through the plenary weekend, you can get free shipping on your entire order with the code RELENTLESS. So check out our shop. I'm gonna turn it back to you, Chairwoman Penny. Thank you, Uhuru. Uhuru, thank you, comrade Holly. Wow, what a great report. Um, those two important fronts, really wanna salute you. And now I'm very excited to turn it over to comrade our leader of the Uhuru Solidarity Movement, comrade Jesse Neville, our fearless leader, and our dynamic comrades from Uhuru Solidarity Movement, Amanda and Len. Uhuru. 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 Thank you so much to Chairwoman Penny Hess. And I just want to uh, express my appreciation for the profound overview that Chairwoman Penny gave in this report. And uh, just quickly getting to my notes here. Okay, so thank you. So you can go to the next slide. It's an incredible honor to present this report to the party's historic 50 year anniversary plenary conference on behalf of the Uhuru Solidarity Movement, the mass organization of the African People's Solidarity Committee. And we salute the profound leadership of Chairman Omal Yashatella, Deputy Chair Onazane Yashatella, the entire party leadership, the African internationalist revolution sweeping the world and also expressed through 
from our direct leadership, APSC Chairwoman Penny Hess. Uhuru. I also want to salute the amazing comrades that I, next slide, that I have the uh, honor to work with in the USM National Steering Committee, including our vice chair and treasurer, Amanda, who we'll be hearing from shortly, our uh, coordinator of the Reparations Legacy Project, amazing uh, comrade nominee for Comrade of the Year, uh, Len, who we'll also be hearing from. Uh, we have uh, Ali, who is our membership coordinator, who will be speaking as well in a few moments, an amazing comrade. Monica Chiodi, also Comrade of the Year nominee, uh, who coordinates the birthday fundraiser campaign. Sarah, our national secretary, who we just absolutely love this comrade. And of course, the uh, one and only Jackson, who is our social media coordinator. So I really appreciate and am deeply humbled to work with each and every one of these comrades in building the mass work of APSC through her solidarity movement. Next slide. Our goal for 2022, based on the mandates and leadership of Chairman Omalia Chatella's political report, are to build organization through massively winning the understandings of African internationalism in the white community. Win white people, as Chairwoman Penny said, to the need for organization as the genuine way for us to fight for reparations and take a stand against colonialism. Next slide. These political understandings inform our practical goals, our guiding mandates based on the party's main campaigns. Number one, recruitment. Number two, the regional strategy. Next slide. Recruitment is in the center. As the chairman said, we have to exploit the contradictions among the colonizer population and win a massive amount of white people to see imperialism is our enemy too. As Chairwoman Penny said, the African revolution is our revolution and reparations is an opportunity for white people to participate in the principled relationship to the African revolution to repair the damage so that all human beings can live. That is our future. We have to build organization, build the NTU volunteer brigade, get on the road and organize recruitment tours, build our regional conferences, build our national convention, build the reparations legacy project, build the days of reparations to African people, build the march for reparations to African people and so much more. Next slide. So building our infrastructure is key. We have a USM constitution and we are excited to take the, the party's democratic centralist structure for USM and put it into practice this year, building regional committees, statewide organization, all the way down to the local level with our USM branches. And towards that end, next slide, prior to our USM National Convention in March, almost a month from now, we'll be holding USM Regional Pre-Convention conferences to elect delegates and draft resolutions that will name our target branch cities and campaigns uh, in each of our regions of USM. Next slide. And we cannot overstate the significance of this program, the NTU Volunteer Brigade program developed by the Office of Deputy Chair and the central role that this will play, that this must play in building the Uhuru Solidarity Movement in 2022. We'll be hearing from Ali Aiello about some of the specific ways USM will be adopting the NTU program into the fabric of our work to build the mass organization of white reparations to African people. So before I turn it over to Comrade Amanda, I just wanna take a quick look back at 2021. It was a transformational year and a leap forward for the party's 45, almost 46 year old strategy of building white solidarity with black power behind enemy lines. Starting with, next slide, the marches for reparations. And I just wanna salute the incredible marches that happened, next slide. In uh, St. Louis, we were honored to have uh, Chairwoman Penny Hess, President Colin Bay and Danette, Aliki Ngoma and other party leaders and just a great turnout of white people demanding or you know expressing unity with the revolutionary demand for reparations to African people. Next slide. And this is of course continuing the tradition of the marches against genocide that go back to the late 1970s. Here is the march for reparations that was held in Oakland, California. Uhuru. Next slide. And in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, very powerful march that ended at the One Africa, One Nation market. Next slide. The March for Reparations in St. Petersburg, Florida, featuring, as you can see, Director of Agiprop, 
Akile Anai, and this was also really powerful to hold right in front of City Hall, where the chairman tore down the mural in 1966. Next slide. And in a key city where we are fighting to rebuild USM this year, the March for Reparations was also held in Portland, Oregon. So without any further ado, we're gonna to go to the next slide and I'm gonna turn it over to our incredible vice chair and national treasurer, Amanda. Uhuru. 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 Thank you, Jesse. I want to salute this powerful plenary, the leadership of the African People's Socialist Party, Chairman and Deputy Chair, and I appreciate the profound leadership of Chairwoman Penny and Chair of USM Jesse, who lead the solidarity work relentlessly. It's an honor to be presenting on the Uhuru Solidarity Movement's work to win reparations. In 2021, USM raised $250,000 in reparations to the work of the party. <laughs> And that is over $113,000 more than what we raised in 2020. Wow. Next slide. So in other words, the annual percent increase in reparations raised from 2020 to 2021 was 80%. And this is thanks to the leadership of the chairman, deputy chair, who won us in USM to go to the moneyed sector of white society and work to bring in hundreds of thousands of dollars in reparations. And we know in 2022, we will raise even more. Next slide. So this shows a breakdown of how we raised $250,000 in 2021. The largest percentage of the pledge, which is the yellow section to the left, came from the reparations legacy project work directly. This means that it's a person we reached out to through the Reparations Legacy Project and cultivated to donate, a person who donated as a direct result of the Reparations Legacy Project work, or a current USM donor who donated at a certain high amount, and we are now cultivating them as part of the Reparations Legacy Project. Other campaigns such as the, excuse me, the grants work, Marches for Reparations in October, the Giving Tuesday campaign, they raised more in 2021 than in any other previous year because of the participation and involvement of Reparations Legacy Project donors. Next slide. So the Reparations Legacy Project and the strategy put forth, put, excuse me, put forth by the leadership of the party, once implemented, was extremely successful in winning the moneyed sector of the white population to pay reparations. And I'm going to turn it over to Len who is going to talk more about this project. Good, okay. Uhuru, thank you, Amanda. Um, so Uhuru, um, so I just wanna start by saluting our leadership, Chairman Amalia Yeshatella and Deputy Chair Ona Zanea Yeshatella. Part of USM's material solidarity commitment was to carry out the call made by the Chairman and Deputy Chair to go into the money sector to win reparations from the white community. Next slide. Uh, so at the end of, oh, sorry, next slide after that. Thank you. Uh, at the end of 2020, we began a process of donor outreach and development by researching the media for any white person who stepped up in favor of reparations, reaching out to them via phone and email and, and inviting them to an organizing conference sponsored by the Reparations Legacy Project. This open meeting, which was called for by Deputy Chair, was the root of success of the work that lay ahead. And during this time, we began developing the structure of donor outreach and follow-up by cold calling reparations supporters. We learned about through the media and research and attending other events hosted by organizations like Resource Generation to invite them to a discussion about the Black Power Blueprint and the Reparations Legacy Project. Next slide. So by our second conference in June of 2021, our attendance list grew and we brought in new donors and volunteers, including some of our earliest reparations legacy donors, who are donors who gave at least $5,000 annually. Among those first wave of donors was John, which was Reparations Legacy Project's largest donor to date, who was invited by Maureen Wagner and Bakari Alatunji and met through the food funded presentation conducted by Uhuru Foods and Pies. John was moved by Deputy Chair Ona's workshop at the conference to give over $50,000 to the basketball court program, which was one of the major projects for which USM and Reparations Legacy Project focused on raising reparations for in 2021. 
This photo also includes inspiring comrade Leah, who is a reparations legacy project donor and who has been paying reparations and raising resources through her work and is also a strong leader in the grants work of RLP. And also here is RLP donor Lottie, who runs a website called Reparations for Slavery. Hillary, who we met through a cold call and has become an RLP donor. Gina and Kent, uh, who donated uh, right after the telethon. And comrade Laura, next slide. The strategy of the party was of course winning. And as we tighten the techniques that were needed to build reparations for RLP, we continued doing outreach and attending other conferences, including the resource generation conference called Transforming Philanthropy. And that is where we met several important donors and connections, including Benjamin, Izzy, Helen, Connie, and St. Louis based resource generation member, Julia, who runs Solidarity Economy and introduced us to many other supporters, including Square, who's now, now has a significant relationship with APEDF. And we also held with Julia and Solidarity Economy a reparations legacy weekend in St. Louis that included a Zoom event and a live in-person tour of the Black Power Blueprint, which connected us to new donors like Carol and Hannah. Humble Sea Brewers, who has, a, who has had a relationship with the Hoover Foods and Pies for several years, also spoke at the RLP conference in 2021 and has inspired the strategy for RLP to connect with other brewers in a campaign that we are calling Reparations Brewers. These are just some of the connections that RLP has made over the last year. And the Reparations Legacy Project Conference showed the importance of the depth of relationship building that the party is involved in through the economic institutions of dual and contending African working class power. And it is in the context of the party's work, political leadership, and real programs in the world that gives strength to the work of the Reparations Legacy Project to win white people to contribute materially to the genuine process of repair through funding African self-determination. Next slide. Uh, just really wanna salute Angelica from the Green Party in St. Louis, Uhuru. Um, Angelica has become a really strong force in the solidarity work, paying reparations, volunteering, and connecting us with grant opportunities. We really salute you, comrade Angelica. Next slide. Uh, the chairman and deputy chair's call to reach the moneyed sector has led us to build new relationships to build the culture of reparations. We have been working with Amelia, founder of Juice for Justice, to hold a wine tasting for reparations, uh, which took place on Sunday, February 6th, to raise resources for the Uhuru Jiko Commercial Kitchen. Next slide. And of course, we salute one of the longest standing profound donors to the work of the party, comrade Mark Anderson. Mark Anderson has been modeling the stand of genuine reparations to African people for decades, as you can see in this photo from the 1980s, where Mark was a part of the marches against genocide. Uhuru to Mark Anderson. Next slide. And this is an analysis of how we met our donors in 2021. Um, of our Reparations Legacy Project donors, 44% were already USM members or, refer, or referred by a USM member. 18.5% uh, were met through attending resource generation conferences, 11% came from cold contacts, and 11% were referred to the Reparations Legacy Project by another party institution, including Uhuru Foods and Pies. Next slide. Uh, of that income that was raised, over 77% came from donations from these three categories. Current USM donors, donors referred to RLP by a current USM member, and donors referred to RLP by a party institution. This reinforces the need to build the organizational capacity of our work to recruit into USM as called for by the chairman. The greatest resource of the revolution is the people. Winning the people is key to winning the resources. And through the, I'm um, sorry, next slide. Um, through the Africans 1 billion strong donor development process, we've begun to learn how to cultivate donors through our one-on-one -on -one meetings and learning about their path to wanting to pay reparations. We win donors to a stance of solidarity with reparations and African self-determination beyond just charity and philanthropy. Next slide. And uh, this here is the reparations pledge that you'll see on the Reparations Legacy Project website where white people, families, and businesses who are ready to commit to justice. Justice can take the pledge and donate. Next slide. Uh, Leah Fifield chairs the RLP grants team and has successfully won grants with the leadership from the Mighty Mighty Grants team. Leah is also crowdfunding, uh, has a crowdfunding campaign to raise resources 
for the African Women's Health Program, which garnered hundreds of donors and totaled over $8,000 that were raised. Next slide. Uh, the biggest part of donor retention is recognition and appreciation. So here are just some of the gifts that we've sent, including magnets, customized journals, plaques for our larger donors. And I will now turn it back over to comrade Amanda uh, to discuss USM's other campaigns that contributed to the victory of raising $250,000 and moving forward in 2022. Thank you, Len. So next slide. So in addition to cultivating large donors to the Reparations Legacy Project, USM also built our national convention a virtual conference in 2021, which mobilized our members to participate in our main campaigns for the year, and we commit to paying reparations. Next slide. The Birthdays Reparations campaign, led by Monica Chiodi, pictured here with Ron Hudson and Janet Van Fleet playing key roles on the committee, raised nearly $20,000 to the work of the African People's Education and Defense Fund. Next slide. Continuing the tradition of APSC's marches against genocide that began in the early 80s, the 2021 USM Marches for Reparations were tied to a fundraising campaign for the Black Power Blueprint Basketball Court and raised a total of over $28,000. Next slide. In 2022, USM is going to hold monthly NTU National Volunteer Days of tabling, door-to-door, -door, postering, and drops because central to our strategy to win the war of ideas and build organization is to be out with the people organizing in the white community. And I'm, oh, excuse me. Next slide. We also wrapped up the year in 2021 with the third annual 24 hour reparations telethon for Giving Tuesday. Uh, I think, go back one, I'm sorry. Okay. We wrapped up the third annual 24 hour reparations telethon, which was coordinated by Len and was built through a magnificent collaboration between USM, RLP, Uru Furniture, Oakland and Philly and APDF. And the Giving Tuesday campaign in 2021 completed the fund drive for the basketball courts, raising a total of about $50,000. And this did include a $3,000 mini grant from CAMP, um, which is affiliated with the St. Louis Green Party and which was fought for by a profound supporter of the Uhuru Solidarity Movement in St. Louis, Angelica. Next slide. Okay, so our goal in 2022 is to increase the pledge to $500,000. <laughs> and we did start off strong this year. We had a January 1st conference with the chairman, deputy chair, Chairman Penny and Chair Jesse where we announced our first donation, which is from an anonymous person who we really appreciate and wanna just really thank of $50,000. So we're starting up strong. And in 2022, we're going to work to build our capacity to raise reparations through recruitment and the regional strategy. We'll deepen the implementation of the Reparations Legacy Project and massively expand the donor base through outreach, media, bold actions, and networking. And now I would like to turn it over to Alia Yellow, who is going to talk about the membership work of USM. Uhuru, Uhuru, I'm really honored to be here presenting to this historic plenary. Um, oh, next, next slide. Yeah, that one, that's great right there. Uh, and I just, I want to start off by saluting the relentless leadership of Chairman Omalia Shetela and Deputy Chair Ona Zanea Shetela. And I also want to salute Chairwoman Penny and my direct leadership in the Uhura Solidarity Movement, Chair Jesse. Uh, and I'm going to be talking to you about membership. Uh, membership is the heart and soul of the work that we do in the Uhura Solidarity Movement. And below are some of the faces of members who have taken the stand to join organization under the leadership of the African People Socialist Party. Next slide. Here is a pie chart uh, broken down by region. Um, we have our largest number of members in the Western region. However, in St. Louis, or, or however, St. Louis is the city with the most amount of members. And USM has, the Solidarity Movement has members in over 130 cities in the United States. Uh, next slide. So in 
So for 2022, our recruitment and membership goals are one, to implement NTU throughout all of USM, hold the NTU process and USM recruitment overall strictly accountable to the Hru Solidarity Movement National Steering Committee and really take this on, grow our base. Um, number two is to uh, build organization to study the USM constitutions, branch, uh, branches, and statewide organization and regions. Um, number three is to win membership and recruitment as a political question within USM and within the world, to wage fierce, consistent war of ideas through mass propaganda and direct actions, visually designed to attract media attention and convey unmistakable political messages. Um, four, accountability and fight for membership protocols. Five, develop a plan to reach 5,000 members. And number six is to use the Western region as the hub for the USM membership office, which we have uh, started doing. And in the next slide, I'm excited to introduce you to uh, members of the, of the membership office. So here are some photos of our comrades in the USM membership office, which consists of myself uh, as the chair. We have uh, Erica in Oakland, who's the secretary. We have Anya in Yukon, Canada, who is over the newsletter. Uh, we have Janet in uh, Portland, who is over thank yous and has also played a really significant role in phone banking. And we have uh, Nathan, who is in Oakland, who is over the membership packets, um, as well as has played roles in picking up various um, tasks that, that need to be uh, taken on. Next slide. And while we are still working to consolidate regional coordinators, in the meantime, um, we have consolidated regional membership coordinators to be over the recruitment work specifically. So also in the membership office, we have Paul in Spokane, uh, who is over the West Region membership. We have Johan in St. Pete over the South Region. And we have Evie uh, in Boston, who's over the North Region. And we plan to build the regions and the regional committees through political education studies, holding organizer workshops and trainings, participating in the National Monthly Volunteer Days, um, and through building regional organizing tours. Next slide. So as, been, has, as has been talked about uh, many times throughout this plenary, um, NTU Volunteer Brigade is going to be the key component to bringing masses of volunteers into the Hru Solidarity Movement and winning new members. And we plan to implement it through one, having an appointed person over the NTU Volunteer Brigade in each committee. Uh, two, train comrades to be able to hold orientations on a national, regional, and local level, because uh, currently is only happening on a national level. Three, hold joint orientations with the institutions in each hub. Four, designate a national NTU Volunteer Coordinator, as I've been taking that on as the chair of the membership office. And five, through the regions, plan major days of USM outreach, including scorch earth postering, drops, and tabling with a focus on bringing in new volunteers. And we have two days coming up, um, on in one in February 26th and on March 12th. And here also are some photos of some of our, uh, or of two of our um, volunteers that we had in USM. Next slide. Um, so I said, we've scheduled once a month national volunteer days where we will be calling on people in cities and around the country to participate in tabling, door-to-door -door drops and postering. And tabling is our, right now, is our number one way of bringing new contacts into the movement. So when we're out on tables, we will be out there as the NTU Volunteer Brigade, asking people, you know, on tables, uh, to sign up as volunteers. We will have literature that shows our upcoming volunteer opportunities, the open job positions, how people can sign up for orientations and what it means to volunteer with the NTU Volunteer Brigade. 
Next slide. And we want to utilize the new Solidarity Center in St. Louis as the base for the NTU volunteer program. We want to hold door-to-door -door center renovation workdays, appreciation events, and a volunteer wall, wall similar to the one that Uhuru Furniture Store has that recognizes all of our NTU volunteers. As the now headquarters of APSC and USM, we want to have volunteers in and out every day carrying out the work to build the movement for reparations in the white community of St. Louis. Next slide. Orientations are a key component to winning the political unity of our volunteers and getting them set up to start volunteering. We currently hold orientations twice a week on Thursdays and Sundays, which you can sign up for on our website at ahrusolidarity.org slash volunteer. And along with these orientations nationally, we want to be able to hold them on a local level and in cities where possible hold combined orientations with other institutions. Next slide. So to kick off the new year, we held a member and volunteer rally that featured powerful presentations from the chairman, deputy chair and chairwoman Penny. And we won members and volunteers to sign up to be local organizers to be part of the Reparations Legacy Project and to be part of the War of Ideas team. Next slide. And we will be holding two recruitment drives, one in May and one in July that will focus on winning new members to join the Uhuru Solidarity Movement. May 13th through 20th will be a week long drive of phone banking, tabling, door to door and other forms of outreach, including a recruitment telethon to kick it off. In July, we will be holding the Day of Reparations to African People Tour, which will be focused around membership. And lastly, um, we, will, we also plan to produce new videos and literature that will put forth what it means to be a member of USM and how to build a branch. So now I'm gonna turn it over to Chair Jesse Uhuru. Am I, okay, now am I muted. All right, to wrap up the USM section of this report, uh, if we go to the next slide, um, I just wanna put forward a few more of the concrete actions that USM will be carrying out uh, this upcoming year. Go to the next slide. Starting with bold political actions, um, beginning with a reparations rally at the Arch, as Chairwoman Penny mentioned, this infamous monument to colonial genocide right here in the city of St. Louis uh, will be flooded with reparations uh, protesters on March 18th at 12 p.m. to kick off our national convention. We will span the entire width of the arch with bold, loud banners declaring reparations to African people and no more genocide in our name. And we also will be resurrecting the Make Wall Street Pay Reparations campaign, including planning actions targeting the Federal Reserve Banks in all of the various cities uh, throughout the US where they exist with the revolutionary anti-colonial demand for reparations. Next slide. Unity through reparations. Reparations through organization is the theme of our national convention this year, which will be held March 18th through the 20th, 2022. Everybody here is of course, uh, encouraged and welcome to attend. It will have a keynote presentation from Chairman O'Malley Yashatella, an amazing workshop from Deputy Chair Onazane Yashatella, a keynote presenta presentation from Chairwoman Penny Hess, and so much more. And it's going to be an incredible convention. So that is uh, on March 18th through the 20th. Next slide. And we are so excited to finally, once again, hit the road to build the Uhuru Solidarity Movement throughout the regions. We will be having an organizing tour in the spring launching now. We are working on that right now as we speak to happen in Minneapolis, here in St. Louis, uh, throughout the Western region, in the South, in Florida, in the Northern region, everywhere we can 
to get on the road and hold events to recruit and build organization. And that will be kind of the launch pad for our major speaking tour, where we plan to, in as many places as possible, actually host Chairman Amalia Shatella and Chairwoman Penny Hess at our annual Days of Reparations to African People, which we plan to hold in July this year. Next slide. And we will be building up to a National March for Reparations and Conference in St. Louis um, on October 15th and 16th, an all-day march and rally on the 15th, and an all-day reparations conference on the 16th. This is going to be a really powerful national mobilization that we want to bring white people from throughout the country and beyond to participate right here in the city of the Black Power Blueprint to march for reparations to African people. And last but not least, USM, next slide, will be building for a major USM contingent at the 2022 Black is Back Coalition for Social, Just, for Social Justice, Peace and Reparations March on the White House, which will be held in November. Uh, we want to bring hundreds of white people, if not more, to come stand under the leadership of the Black is Back Coalition led by the African People's Socialist Party and Chairman Amalia Shatella uh, at the White House this upcoming year. So next slide. So just to reiterate the theme of our national convention this year, USM's goal is unity through reparations and reparations through organization. Uhuru. Thank you so much, Chair Jesse, Vice Chair Amanda, Comrade Lynn and Ali from the Dynamic Comrades of Uhuru Solidarity Movement. So that concludes the APSC USM event uh, presentation tonight. I just want to say anybody, any North Americans who are on this that wants to, to contact us, please go to uhurusolidarity.org to find out more about becoming a member of USM or apscohuru.org to find out more about becoming a member of the African People's Solidarity Committee. Unity through reparations! Uhuru! Uhuru, thank you so much to APSC and USM for that thorough report. Now I have the honor to bring back Chairman Amalia Chitella to give a summation of day three. So let's please welcome with applause the leader of the African Revolution, Uhuru Chairman. Uhuru, I made it. Uh, thank you so much, Comrade uh, Soliano. <clears throat> and I'd like to express my appreciation to Comrade Life uh, and uh, all of you who've been responsible for making uh, this day of the plenary the extraordinary success that it's been. I think that uh, when we talk about 50 years of relentless struggle for African redemption, uh, it should be clear by what has happened up to now throughout the entire process and especially today uh, that that's not a small thing when we talk about 50 years. Because the fact is that the colonizer has been so successful in crushing our struggles and crushing our movements. Usually um, it's unusual for an organization for genuine uh, revolutionary transformation, especially inside the United States, uh, to survive more than three or four years. The Black Panther Party had an effective revolutionary life of only about three years. Uh, but what we've seen is that uh, what that means is if, 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 if uh, revolutionary organizations cannot last, then uh, it denies us the ability to develop a, a political maturity, to develop experience, what have you. And it breaks uh, the uh, ideological uh, continuity of the revolutionary movement, especially uh, the way Africans and the African revolution get, get treated. I mean, you have to uh, search in a very serious way to even find stuff written by Marcus Garvey. Uh, and uh, while you can go to libraries and bookstores and, and get, uh, uh, information, uh, written documents uh, that come from Marxists and other forces from around the world. But it's very difficult to get that 
uh, from Africa, from the African Revolution. So the fact is that we've been here for 50 years and it's been a continuum. And it means that there has been ideological and theoretical uh, a philosophical continuation too, but not just continuation, but development. See, that's the thing uh, that, uh, that there are people who may still uh, present and represent something ideologically or, 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 or philosophically perhaps, but there's no development uh, of forces who uh, were really important and critical during the uh, revolution of the 1960s. Uh, many of them were imprisoned Obviously, many of them uh, were killed and what have you. They were denied the ability as movements, as organizations to, to continue struggling uh, on, a, on an historical uh, trajectory that would contribute to their ideological and political development. But the African People's Socialist Party has defied all of that. And we've been here for more than 50 years on a continuum. And we, we bring a history with us uh, in terms of uh, what, uh, came into the development of the party longer than 50 years. We've already mentioned that the Burningsville newspaper may be something like four years older uh, than the African People's Socialist Party itself, uh, but it became a tool that we utilized to organize and win uh, uh, theoretically, uh, win politically, uh, and win organizationally Africans uh, into a place of of uh, 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 making it possible uh, to build the African People's Socialist Party to pull it together in 1972. And that didn't come uh, easily. There were all kinds of contradictions, all kinds of battles that we were uh, engaged in. In fact, uh, uh, it was only 1973 uh, that uh, I finally escaped from the, uh, the prison centers uh, and the threat of prison that uh, had come uh, with my initial arrest in 1966, December 1966, uh, that led uh, to my imprisonment for tearing the mural down. So I was in and out of prison. I spent about two and a half years of prison, but it was only 1973 uh, uh, that, uh, that we, we succeeded in freeing ourselves uh, from the threat of prison, at least from, from that uh, particular incident. And I'm saying this just in terms of, of the struggle it has, has been uh, to build a revolutionary project, to, to build revolutionary organization, to build a revolutionary capacity and to, and to stay fixed uh, on the revolution itself, as opposed to some substitute uh, that has been offered up. So we see here in, in today uh, a glaring example of what it means to have existed for, this, for the duration. We see here today uh, also, and everybody should be understanding this, and I'm hoping that because many of us are really new to political life and may not uh, uh, have the, the experience that's assumed, uh, that may be assumed here, uh, that it becomes clearer that, the, that revolution is more than, than, it's not an event, it's a process. And uh, it, there are certain uh, requirements in order to make it. And I think that's what we've seen here. So we had this incredible day on today. Uh, and uh, we start off uh, with this remarkable uh, political report that comes from this uh, comrade uh, deputy chair, uh, uh, who uh, uh, you know, uh, talks about uh, the, uh, the, the, the development of our economic projects, program strategy, uh, what have you, just remarkable uh, political report, beautifully done, uh, uh, just, uh, done with, uh, with command so that we know that what she's talking about is real. And also the political report, report reflects on things that have already been accomplished that somebody can go and touch and see, uh, and which is really important. So this political report on today sort of helped to set the terms. And what the political report, along with everything else that has done, has come about today, what it has done, uh, is clearly um, uh, make manifest our understanding of the relationship uh, between uh, uh, the political uh, and the economic. And that's really important uh, because the fact is that uh, if you are not talking about economics, then what is the basis? What are you fighting for? Uh, and when I say economics, I'm not talking about the kind of silliness that we used to hear from people like Jesse Jackson 
uh, uh, and others who, uh, who talk about green power or something to that effect. What I'm talking about economics is the fact is that uh, colonialism has meant uh, that the African population, we've, we've, we've suffered uh, from uh, not just uh, the, the, the obvious kind of uh, imprisonment, the obvious kind of, of control by foreigners and aliens, but a control uh, that has arrested the productive forces. And the productive forces is that capacity uh, 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 that to, to produce based on having control and access uh, to land, uh, to, uh, uh, to equipment, to uh, um, uh, minerals and resources and human beings who are capable of using that. When you colonize somebody, you also arrest the productive forces. You take away from them um, an ability to, uh, to produce. And you create a situation of negating their capacity to survive on their own. And the philosophers, and particularly Marxist philosophers, have always have often talked about the whole question of negation of negation. And it's been really mysterious to a lot of people uh, about what is meant by the negation of negation, especially when it's held up uh, as some kind of abstract philosophical question. Uh, but the reality is that the colonizer negated our capacity to be a self-reliant and self-serving nation of people. It negated our capacity for national consolidation. Uh, that's what the attack on us meant. And it did so uh, uh, and, 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 and by establishing uh, this, this, this new thing, this, uh, this phenomenon that we refer to as the colonial mode of production. That's what Comrade Deputy Chair was talking about when she's putting forth uh, her a presentation around uh, uh, from her office for her political report effectively is talking about, about dealing with that. So they have negated our capacity. But to say that we want to negate what they have done is more than just saying no. Negation here does, is not simply saying no. Uh, it's just like people have confused that question, just like they've confused what we've meant when we have said dual power, they've just heard dual power with the assumption uh, that means that we want to have a power side by side or just power within uh, the colonial apparatus or colonial setup that has been imposed on us. But we, when we say dual power, we say dual and contending power. The power we want is the power that contends with the white power, with the colonial power, with the settlers. And that's a part of the process of negation. So negation of a negation is not simply saying no, it is saying no as a part of a process of building something new and better and different. And that's anti-colonialism. And that's what Comrade Deputy Chair, uh, that's what you can find reflected in the political report, the brilliant political report that she put forward. <clears throat> and again, uh, it is concrete. There's no, there's nothing mysterious about any of it. You say, this is what, what we uh, have done. Look at it. This is why we did it. This is this is the political report that came from the uh, from the chair. Uh, this is the political report that came from this Congress, that came from this plenary, and that has that, that is what has informed the practice that we are engaged in now. That's why we went into <clears throat> St. Louis, for example, and we didn't just go in there. There were hundreds of organizations that went into St. Louis after August uh, 9, 2014, after they murdered Mike Brown. Uh, and it was necessary for them to go there, but it was necessary for the rulers to get them in there to confuse questions, uh, issue. Um, big, millions of dollars were spent uh, sending uh, people who were there to organize people into some other kind of situation. That's where you have the emergence as some significance of uh, this thing called uh, 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 Black Lives Matter. But the masses were not saying Black Lives Matter. That is not something that came from the masses. That came from Facebook. That came from, from, from uh, Mark uh, Zuckerberg and, and, and that crew. The people were saying, young African people were saying, which helped us to really understand that we had reached a new place. They were saying, kill the police, which is the most rational explanation, rational claim, rational demand that you can make. There was nothing ambiguous about that, uh, uh, as is with uh, uh, this whole issue of Black Lives Matter that Joe Biden and anybody else can say Black Lives Matter. Everybody can say it. I'm not going to be surprised if one day I hear Trump say it. Uh, uh, and, but the point is <clears throat> that the struggle is, is against colonialism. And that's what we, we went in, we built organization on the ground among the people. And what had happened, of course, in St. Louis Ferguson 
is that the masses on the ground had been uh, had been agitated to a point where uh, people were open and wanted real meaningful transformation despite all of the nonsense that was being talked, despite uh, the Sharpton uh, Act that would come in and, and uh, in a very grotesque and nasty way uh, uh, <clears throat> play on the misery and of the people. Despite those kinds of hustler, people want meaningful change and they're tired of what's been uh, put forward in the past. And so we settled down <clears throat> and we began to work toward uh, uh, actually organizing the people, bringing the people into political life and into political organization. And uh, uh, which was not the, the easiest thing in the world to do. I mean, people were excited, but just because they were excited didn't know, didn't mean that they understood what the hell a revolution was about, revolutionary organization, and there were all kinds of things attacking them at the same time. But we pulled them together and we built revolutionary organization right there in St. Louis. Look at it. This is the difference in terms of just seeing things as events and recognizing that it's revolution as a process. And a part of the process is the negation of the colonizer who has negated us. And that's what the political report that came from uh, direct from Comrade uh, Ona Zene Shetela reflecting the political report that came uh, uh, for the overall plenary, uh, that's, what, that's what she was presenting to us. And that was great. And you look at all of the, all of the presenters, everything that came out of that, just concrete, concrete evidence of, of material uh, development, work, uh, changing things in the real world, not just slogans or something to that effect. So we say right on, that's, that's incredible. That's what you saw. People who experience today experience that. They experience also veterans. They experience people who've been in the movement for 15, 20, 35, 40 years uh, involved in the party, in the Uhuru movement. And, and uh, that, they saw that experience. That's what we talk about when we say the advanced attachment, when we say the party uh, is the vanguard, we say also the party is what? It's the general staff, the general staff. And so what I mean by general staff is that the masses were uh, 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 suffering all kinds of uh, contradictions there in St. Louis. And so we sent people in the St. Louis who could organize people uh, to change their circumstances, who could do the kind of work and lead the kind of work that would allow for the capture of these uh, properties that, that, that were being used against the people uh, that would uh, allow for the development of the marketplace and economic development projects there. This is the general staff. These are people who are functioning. This is the, this is the cadre. This is the advanced attachment that's moving, helping people. Uh, we, they are functioning. We are functioning as the staff of the colonized population. That's what it is that we were looking at uh, when we, uh, and, and that's what it means to have veterans like that. Uh, and you, you were here, you've seen the videos, you've seen people starting uh, uh, out in the movement of, 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 of spry and bushy tail, uh, so to speak. And then you've seen uh, the development of people who've been here for a while, which is extraordinarily important. Not just that people age and are doing stuff that they might call movement work, but they're move, doing movement work in the same organization, under the same philosophy, uh, uh, chasing the same objectives of, of negating the power and capacity of the colonizer over the lives of our people. And, and so that's part of what it is that we looked at today. And uh, it was extraordinarily powerful. And, I, it, and, and, and then we, we, we saw that, and we saw the various aspects of that, of that work. We saw also committees, actually people who were part of committees. Uh, so not just some one person doing something or saying something, we saw the actual committees that expressed themselves and participated in these presentations and saying, my job is this and my job is that. These are the, this is the vision of labor, highly sophisticated, the vision of labor within the revolutionary project of, for African liberation, which you will not find, uh, generally speaking, uh, any place in the world. And so that was that was part of what has happened on today. That was very powerful. Uh, that uh, that I have an extraordinary amount of appreciation for. So we we said that we were that, that we were relentless in building in the building of dual and contending economic power. This is where this report from the office of of the deputy chair owners and a is to tell her. 
uh, building dual uh, and contending power, relentless. And then we had uh, uh, reports uh, from uh, the director of organization, Comrade Chimarangas Lombayo, uh, and who has is in the process of pulling together uh, the committee that that is now uh, developing our capacity uh, to 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 have an efficient, effective uh, recruitment and and uh, uh, and and membership maintenance uh, project and, and capacity. Uh, developing uh, uh, and bringing people into uh, an actual relationship where there's oversight now over the basic work that we're going to be doing all around uh, the world. When we talk about a regional strategy, it's not something that's thrown in the wind. So there's going to be a regional strategy. There's the oversight. There's an office uh, of, of the director of organization. And we saw a components of that office that was, that was there too. And so that, that were there too. And that's really uh, extremely important. And that's that's uh, something that we've been working for, and that this plenary, uh, in fact, uh, set itself the task of of uh, resolving, so that we would have that kind of kind of capacity. And and and, and you know, I I will say that uh, that the comrade direct comrade uh, director of organization, uh, Chimaringa Silambayo, you know, he had a lot of mess to have to clean up uh, because uh, uh, there were there was a, a time when when uh, somebody was supposed to be responsible uh, for this issue of, of membership uh, and, and they lied. And they, 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 they uh, put the membership number, this extraordinary high number of people that didn't exist. They, they lied, uh, they were liars. Uh, uh, but Comrade Chimaringa came in and he's been patiently uh, plodding along, pulling together uh, organization capacity and that's been extremely important for us. And so we're talking about joining uh, the African People's Socialist Party now. We're talking about an actual capacity and organization that's taking that on uh, and developing uh, a really professional approach uh, to deal with it, which is not to say that there are not contradictions. There are contradictions in it. There are contradictions, uh, you know, just about anything we see, but they'll be worked out. We, we're on the right path now. So, uh, and we have the organization and the committee uh, to work with to try uh, to fix that, uh, any of the contradictions that are there. So I think that was extremely important. And then uh, uh, the, the significance of this magnificent um, uh, presentation, this uh, report um, uh, on today uh, from the Department of Agitation and Propaganda. You know, we've, we've come to learn of propaganda as uh, something that's evil because that's how uh, the white man, that's how the colonizer has talked to us for propaganda. You hear propaganda, you all automatically get some kind of a, a, a negative uh, reflection, uh, reflex uh, from somebody. But propaganda comes from the words propagate, propagate. And when we talk about uh, pro agitation and propaganda, uh, agitation, and we do this in organization, it's an organizational principle that we, we should really embrace and hold dear to us. Because when you talk about agitation, you're talking about being able to take advantage of uh, any situation in the world and help to excite the mass of the people around this contradiction so that we can mobilize people, so that we can get them moving uh, in a direction toward uh, being uh, organized. That's what, that's what uh, the murders of, of Mike Brown, that's what all these murders are about. These, they agitate masses of the people, but then after they agitate them, the propagandists that are sent in, parachuted in, are people like, like, like Sharpton and people like Jackson and people like Crump who come in and, and, and take the excitement of the people and then, and then uh, 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 the agitation, they take this situation that's agitated the people and they provide a propaganda, a political line uh, that will take them into the swamps as, as opposed to taking them uh, toward uh, liberation. So agitation and propaganda simply means that we develop a capacity, a professional capacity uh, to, uh, to excite masses of people, to excite our people and excite everybody. Uh, to uh, so that they, it's possible for them to look at and pay attention to uh, in a in a decent way the kinds of contradictions that we're trying to get people uh, to engage in resolving. And the propaganda is simply uh, the explanation that we give uh, when we agitate people. We agitate people. We offer up explanation. This is the propaganda. This is the story. This is the basis for. It. This is why it happened, etc. So that's that's agitation and propaganda. And Comrade Achille. Uh, this very young and extraordinary uh, comrade uh, took on uh, this uh, this task of heading up 
uh, the this Department of Agitation and Propaganda. And you saw the comment that came from uh, Nadvinga Zimbabwe, who uh, was a veteran, who was the person who actually initiated the uh, a radio uh, that we have and did so much of the other work around agitation and propaganda. We used to refer to Binga at the time as the like that 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 black guy who used to be on the old Mission Impossible things who could fix and do anything. That was that was that was Binga. Uh, and and but you saw what he said that there's nobody. He's he's not seen anybody anybody uh, that's taken on the Department of Education propaganda like this sister uh, uh, Akili Anai has done. And she grew up in the movement. And that's something too about longevity. That's something too about 50 years of. Uh, of uh, being in the mix, struggling against them, because then you have people who actually grown up, their parents were associated with the movement in some way or another. They, they grew up in the revolutionary process and, and you have to be there for that to happen and we here. And uh, so uh, it was extraordinary what we saw, we heard uh, from, the, from everything, the radio, uh, comrade uh, uh, DC, uh, uh, DJ, uh, Eddie, uh, you can see what's happened with Black Power 96, the radio station, uh, uh, and, 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 and other things that have to do with political education, uh, the production and distribution of ideas inside the organization in the world. That's something that's happening right there. And plans are being made to get more effective. And you heard those plans, concrete. This is not some, uh, uh, something that we're going to find which God to pray for to make it happen. Uh, what the chicken bones revealed to us, concrete. Science is what this revolutionary project is about. And that's what we had uh, coming from uh, Comrade Akile, uh, and which is extraordinary. And then we heard the regional reports against science, against how the party is going to be building everywhere in the world. <clears throat> Essentially, <clears throat> we just heard today on the regional reports as it relates to the United States. But that's really important too, because they are concrete. Here's the strategy. The strategy for building in these territories is to have a regional committee with the regional representative that's responsible for that particular territory. That's the territory that she has to make uh, a, a party territory, party turf. Uh, she has the responsibility of turning everybody in that region into, into uh, 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 people who are loyal uh, followers, conscious followers of the party, and the best of them into the African People's Socialist Party itself or any of the organizations that we have. That's what that regional force does. That's the strategy of the region. It, it, it delegates responsibilities. It, it helps to facilitate the development of leadership on every level of the organization. So the region within the region, uh, there are provinces and states within the region, there are cities, there are, there are universities, there are prisons, there are all these things, there are communities, there are blocks, uh, neighborhoods, and all these things, the regional uh, uh, leadership, the le regional committee under the leadership of a regional representative has responsibility of making a party happen in all those places within the region. That's the strategy. It's not some abstraction now. It's not just we building sort of everywhere. Now there are specific forces who have the responsibility of building and putting it down, putting the newspaper in all of those places, et cetera. So that's the regional uh, 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 development that's happening. And then, uh, and then this is really important that, that people uh, need to understand. Uh, uh, we, we heard uh, the report that came from uh, the, uh, the, the Solidarity Movement, and specifically African People's Solidarity Committee under the leadership of Chairwoman uh, Penny Hess. <clears throat> and I, don't want, I can't pass by that lightly because uh, the truth of the matter is that our party uh, had decided uh, in 1980 that we were going to make reparations uh, household word. And we took that to our Congress, first Congress that happened in 1981 uh, in, in Oakland, California. And we came out firing on, uh, uh, to make this concrete demand. <clears throat> it's a concrete demand. We, we don't make demands that we don't have any ability to uh, be able to implement, to be able to carry out ourselves. Uh, it's a strategy that we have to have the capacity to implement. Otherwise, it's just emptiness. And otherwise, it puts you in the, in the, in the, actually in the place of begging for stuff and not changing your relationship to the social system itself. For us, reparation is a function of the revolution. And we're not trying to find a way to have a gilded cage in this colonial uh, uh, apparatus, this colonial setup. Our objective is to take reparations 
to repair the damage. And the damage is not just the fact that we were worked uh, like dogs and animals in various places around the world under colonialism. The damage is that our what we have produced has not been for us. It's been for them. It's been for the colonizers, Africa and Africans all around the world. We produce, but we don't produce a damn thing for ourselves. The capacity to produce life for Africans has been something robbed from us. We've taken it back. And that's what reparations means uh, to us. And that's why we don't wait for, for some government or some uh, anybody to give reparations. We go and get it. And so the, the people have asked the question, uh, well, how are you going to get reparations? And of course, the answer is right here in this meeting. You know the answer. And the answer is we are getting reparations. And the question for us is how are we going to get more reparations and more reparations and more reparations in the process of destroying colonialism and the colonial mode of production? We are getting reparations. And that's something that you should own. You should not allow somebody to have some discussion talking about you can't get it. And you know uh, you can show that reparations are happening because you can show the evidence of the repair that's being done under the leadership of the party. That's what the Black Power Blueprint is all about. That's what all of these other projects that we're involved in around the world, we're taking those resources. And guess what? When we say it's ours, it's ours. It belongs to the people. It belongs to the African population under the leadership of, a, of this advanced detachment. So reparations is happening. And, and that's, that's, that's a big thing. Uh, so it's not a begging thing. It's not a hope, the hope it will happen kind of thing. It's recognition that <clears throat> the reparations question is a question of the people. <clears throat> and at some point, right now, we open the door for anybody who wants to participate in the reparations and, and, and providing reparations to the African population. That means white people, individual white people. Yes, they have a responsibility. White people have to work toward redeeming yourselves and rectifying your relationship with the peoples of the earth. And in fact, there's the most profound contradiction white people experiences with black people. Uh, and, and not because we black and you white, but because we have been colonized and because the colonial mode of production is what feeds uh, you, what makes you happy. That is to say settlers and colonizers as opposed to us and it makes us miserable. And so uh, the thing is that this reparations demand uh, is something that is actually uh, being uh, 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 fought for and reparations are being uh, are happening every day. And uh, speaking of which, uh, I see that uh, we raised $166,200 uh, uh, and, uh, and Comrade Deputy Chair says that we need to raise $70,000 before we get out of here. So I'm hoping that everybody, you know, is conscious of that. We need to raise the, the other three thousand some odd dollars. But the point is that uh, this is very serious, and Penny Hess uh, uh, was has been an incredible force for this. And I want to I want to just call that out because uh, she has been bold and and stepped forward. And because there are people here who cannot imagine <laughs> some of the struggles that we had to go through dealing with this question. Uh, in the white world, among the white left, among the white lesbian, among the white women's, among the white all kinds of stuff like that, the slander that's been imposed on 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 Hess and the African People's Solidarity Committee, and uh, and I, I mentioned the white lesbian because this nonsense that we heard uh, when we first initiated this, the slander that came from a part of the feminist movement. Uh, I guess it was feminist movement that. That, that the solidarity movement was just white lesbians under, working on the black men or something to that effect, which was attacked uh, on the whole reparations question uh, because white lesbians and, and, and white LBGT, what, however it goes, oh, reparations too. So even if that were true. And, but the, the real thing was the lesbian thing thrown in because you know that has a certain significance, but the real thing is working on the black people working on the leadership of black people. In fact, one left organization said it can't work. They said, because white people will not, this is a max, this is a major communist organization because white people uh, won't work against their own interests. So somehow working under the leadership of African people is working against the interests of white people. And uh, which is an extraordinary kind of statement coming from somebody who said they're communists. But Penny Hess led uh, this movement. She, she is the one who fought for it. And I will never forget the night when she called and, and said, you know, really concerned because she was about to be evicted from the collective that she was living in with other solidarity forces. 
and uh, 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 because of her stance. And, and I heard from Penny for the first time in all the years we had been doing the work to build the African People's Solidarity Committee, for the first time I heard what it was that I was fighting for spoken back to me from Penny and I knew we had won that one and with Penny. And so we had a meeting and we made that struggle. And then uh, the African People's Solidarity Committee uh, you know, has, has been born out of that process. So it was really important to hear and to see all of these uh, solidarity forces, to see uh, at a time when our movement was under serious assault uh, by the colonizer. And part of what kept us alive, kept us moving, and people ask the question about why, how 50 years it was caused when they attacked the African liberation movement, we opened up a new front. We opened a, a new front. Uh, uh, we didn't go disappear, we opened up a new front. We kept struggling, opened up a new front and that front was in the settler colony uh, itself. That front was among the colonized themselves. So this is what we have meant when we talk about fighting be behind uh, enemy lines. Uh, so this and this has proved to be an extraordinarily important thing because the fact is that even while there were members of the solidarity movement, of white people said this, this, you know, that the white people won't be won. Everybody, all the, all the white people want to go and work in the African community. You know, that's what they prefer to do. So no, no, the problem is in your community is among the settlers, is among the colonizers, and this is what you have to do. You, I don't, you, I don't, I'm not looking for you to wear dreadlocks or anything like that. Go and organize them. And they, they can be organized because regardless of the myth that's been told, the fact is that white people are people. And, 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 and this is the struggle that we've had to make. Uh, white people are people. We're taking science to this question and we say that white people act a certain way because of how white people get their living. And white people get their living, have got their living for the last five, 600 years uh, through sucking the resources that's coming from other people. That's what's informed their consciousness and informed their actions. And so we're saying we believe it's possible to bring uh, uh, some of those forces to get them to in, initiate it in the process of national suicide and get them to come over to the side of the human beings and to redeem themselves uh, through uh, through this work. And that's what's been happening. So we got. We got, you know, solidarity forces, members in 130 some odd cities and 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 30 some odd uh, states and what have you, and they're taking the reparations work out. They're working in these institutions. They've helped to create the many of the institutions and what have you, and they're doing this work. And they're uh, this is this is contributing to fracturing the solidarity of the colonizer nation itself. That's what we're doing. That's the strategic approach that we're taking. That's the science. That we've introduced to this movement, so that's been really uh, important. And and uh, uh, come at Penny and come at uh, Jesse, and uh, you know I I them they're, they're they're people who uh, are really veterans who've been around for a long time. I've worked with for a long time, uh, like Penny, like Maureen, like Ali, uh, 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 like Comrade uh, Sandra, uh, uh, like Raya, uh, who at one time uh, when when. We did it that way in Oakland, California, was my secretary. And, you know, we had a large, uh, uh, for NPDOM, and we had a large uh, 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 NPDOM organization. And there are other people who uh, have done that. Kitty, you know, has been around for a long time. And uh, these, some of these are people who came into uh, the movement off of the Desi Woods work. And with the Desi Woods work was work that we took on while struggling against the, 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 the anti-racist line and struggling against the feminist line that wanted to make this a struggle like they had with Joanne Little that happened just a couple of years prior, a, a struggle of, uh, of a, a woman's right to, uh, for, for defense. No, we said, no, 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 no. This is, this is not something that happened to a woman. This is a tradition. Raping white men, raping African women is a <clears throat> part of a colonial terror, colonial oppression that black people have suffered since we met white people uh, uh, during the colonial process. You know, three decimal wars, smash colonial violence. And that's what we took out. And we won uh, several of them. Ruby, uh, the red, you know, uh, one of those persons who came into uh, the movement uh, 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 off of that struggle around Desi Wood and there are others. And I, I shouldn't have even started because I can't remember the names of other folk. And then, you know, we see uh, 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 the, the, there's a growing uh, uh, movement toward this kind of politics because it makes sense. Because we don't fight against some kind of racism uh, 
that somehow uh, what's in your head is what it, you know is the major thing. I don't care what you think. The fact is that if you can unite against colonialism, if you can unite with African people against colonialism, that's the fundamental thing, and that's the door that we have to open up to make possible. And guess what? When you when you unite against colonialism, you're uniting against the colonial power, the colonial government itself. And guess what? More and more white people from one perspective or another are uniting against the colonial power. They don't call it the colonial power, they call it the government. They call it Biden, they call it stuff like that. They attacked the Capitol on January 6th. And so you've got these simpering people who are working actually to just uh, try and find a way to integrate into the system and calling it freedom or calling it liberation, uh, et cetera, where uh, uh, recognition of the existence of the colonial uh, mode of production um, uh, tells us that what we have to do is overturn the relationship we have. So uh, I just think that uh, this is, we've seen like a practical application of uh, revolutionary work. And we've seen the reason why anybody who's serious uh, in the African world about uh, uh, changing our circumstances and who want to move beyond simply perfecting uh, the system of colonialism uh, has a responsibility to join the African People's Socialist Party and need to be uh, forced to ask the question, to answer the question, why haven't you tried to join the African People's Socialist Party? Because what you can see concretely right here, for the last 50 years at least, the struggle of African people around the world whether it's uh, uh, from the place of uh, Sobukwe, uh, the place of Lumumba, uh, whether it's the place of Garvey, what I'm talking about where these people lived and came from, et cetera, and struggled at, whether it's uh, the place of Nkrumah, uh, et cetera, the African People's Socialist, Par Socialist Party is there. And uh, we are uh, the forces that's, that's maintained that struggle and maintain uh, the movement that Marcus Garvey took off with years ago, more than a hundred years ago. In fact, the first most significant effort to unite after, after Haiti, the first most significant e effort to unite the whole African world uh, in this struggle uh, to free ourselves and not uh, recognizing one African someplace as being different from another African someplace and was able to say Africa for Africans at home and abroad. African fundamentalism of Garvey is African internationalism of the party. And so uh, today has been an extraordinary successful day and I look forward uh, to what's gonna happen on tomorrow where we'll be talking more about the, how we are moving internationally. And uh, uh, obviously uh, this uh, 50 years, we, we already demonstrated 50 years of relentless, relentless struggle toward Africa redemption. And on tomorrow, uh, we are going to punctuate that uh, with the reports that we have coming up. Thank you, comrades. Uhuru. Uhuru, thank you so much, Chairman. Uhuru, um, and speaking of tomorrow, Tomorrow, starting at 8 a.m. Eastern, join us for the final day of our third, seventh Congress plenary. We will continue on with our reports, learning how to move about being security conscious as a revolutionary. We'll also look at the party uh, internationally with reports from the African Socialist International, our work in Africa, the Caribbean, and Europe. We'll take a look at our mass organizations in PEDEM, ANWO, ABDEP, uh, some other regional reports from the African People's Solidarity Committee, Dynamic Culture, and one final Buy Black Power vending opportunity with Burning Spear Media as well. You do not want to miss it. Uh, also want to make a, a, a announcement about African Liberation Day. I have that somewhere. Uh, here we are. As you know, Uhuru means freedom. Uh, the African People's Socialist Party, uh, the African, oh my goodness, let me see. I can't get my screen. Hold on, comrades, just uh, bear with me as I get my screen together. Uh, got it. Uh, as you know, uh, Uhuru means freedom. 
The African People's Socialist Party is proud to announce that we will be organizing African Liberation Day events under the theme Relentless, 50 Years of Leadership Towards African Redemption in several cities in the world. These events will be done recognizing the date of the founding of the African People's Socialist Party on May 25th, 1972. Our, our party, founded by Chairman O'Malley Satella, who is the clear leader of the African nation, believes that African Liberation Day events to be held internationally will be yet another injection of strength into our overall struggle for the total liberation of our Africa and her people. These African Liberation Day events will make the step, the great step that African leader Kwame Nkrumah was unable to make happen way back in 1963 when he attempted to build a one united Africa. The African Liberation Day events will have culture performances, a people's parade, vendors of all kinds. In addition, the African Liberation Day events will have political conferences that will discuss the important issues facing the Black community. These are some of the locations for the African Liberation Day events. South Africa, also called Occupied Azania. London, England, Paris, France, Oakland, California, St. Louis, Missouri, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and the birthplace of African internationalism, St. Petersburg, Florida. We will be building African Liberation Day, organizing committees to make great events in all these regions. We encourage everyone to get involved in building these events in your region by contacting the African People's Socialist Party at 727. 9143617 that's 7279143617 or by emailing timmerangawaller at gmail.com or you can write to us at attention timmeranga selambayo african people socialist party 1245 18th avenue south st petersburg florida 33705 forward to African Liberation Day. And in the meantime, of course, you can visit APSPUHuru.org forward slash to pledge a forward slash pledge to contribute to our fundraising efforts and use the same site to fill out your application to join the African People's Socialist Party today. Comrades, sisters, brothers allies, friends, this is, uh, this brings us to the conclusion of the uh, Thomas Sankara day three of the African People's Socialist Party, third plenary to the seventh Congress. I know you enjoyed it. I certainly did. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow, comrades. Vanguard up and Uhuru. Uhuru.